Okay. So. <laughs> oh, wow. New stream. Ah, <laughs> uh, Modog. Brand new beginning of the stream. stream. Hello, everyone. We just got yeah, here. Right. Yep. It's our first stream yeah. of the day. Yeah. Oh, nothing happened before this. No, sir. Nothing oh. has ever happened before. Oh, sir. Ball. Well, this, is, this is the Big Bang, is it? <laughs> this yes. is the beginning of the universe. Well, this is this isn't the, the Big Bang. Bang. This is, um, this is, well, this is, though, the event that caused the universe. Ah, so Modok proceeds to Big Bang, is what you're Modoc saying. Modok spoke the first words in, of so, existence. So is this 225 now? Did we go backwards in time? Is that what happened? Wait. Oh, is this supposed to be 226? I don't know. I was just asking. Hey, don't confuse me right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't, hold on. <laughs> I'll check. Still trying to get chat to fucking work. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> Uh, there you go. We just wanted us to show off our Modocs. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to fixed. show my Modoc to five. So you need to fix that. Very well. Annoying is the way you have to, ch you cha have to change the dumbass URL every time you stream. That's kind um, of something I miss from Twitch chat. It's just the same from your channel. You don't need to change it every time. Wait, but it should be two two five. No, we did two two five. That was the the one from last week. So it's two two six. What was the one we did last week? It was the uh... dude. Look at the thumbnail. And the thumbnail says two two six. It's two two six. I asked again. What did we do last week? It was the uh, the re-upload the uh, the the catch up uh, on Rings of Power stuff. Oh wow! The visual in that is the Halloween outfit. Is... Modoc's not in a Halloween outfit. What do you mean? Uh, I think everybody should go to Halloween as Modoc. How do I get a? How would that even work? How would you make a uh, costume an inflatable sort of thing? Enormous enough oh, to yeah. be to scale with your little body, like your uh, yeah, with like your, your, your little arms and like legs sticking out. Feet tall. Yeah, I guess you could do it like mm. that. Like have a really big mechanical suit and then have like just little legs. Or like a big there. inflatable, um, yeah, exactly. almost like you're in a blimp and your little arms. I guess and legs the difficulty is you would need to create some sort of like propulsion system to have it levitate, which that might be a bit of a challenge. Or you could just have somebody like flying up in a plane with some strings dangling out, you know, <laughs> like a pilot. You just need to make sure that the plane is coordinated uh, to make sure that you can move around the, the party comfortably and that the, the house that you're going to doesn't have a roof, of course. Of course, obviously. Okay, so Rags, do whatever it is you would, you're up to. <laughs> before before we started our uh, stream, we were talking about whether or not Ant Man Quantum Mania was, or is this called Ant Man and the Wasp? I like how you called Ant Man Quantum Mania. It highlights how like <laughs> little Wasp has like anything. Oh yeah, I was, it has I was everything literally to just, do with the Wasp. I was just asking. Yeah, I paused because I was thinking, oh yeah, the second one was called Ant Man and the Wasp. So, is this one going back to that, or is it going no, back it to Ant-Man? No, it didn't. She is. So, yeah, it's we were considering... Quantumania. Uh, we were talking about whether Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania <laughs> was the most numbing of the MCU movies that we have seen. Yes. Yeah, for some of us, it seems to be. For, for a few of us, it seemed as though this was, like, a particularly... You know how people will say mind numbing, but they're usually being, you know, dramatic. It's like, no, this this was a pretty. My mind felt numb when I, when I left. Yeah, like, you walk like, away and your brain just doesn't seem to feel. You don't really have any thoughts, maybe, or you just don't care about anything, or you're super apathetic. Yeah, um, I had yeah. that more with uh, Wakanda Forever as well. With this one, I just I I, I went on my little bicycle. It's a normal bicycle, actually. It's not a little one. I don't know why I said that. Yeah, a uh, it's, <laughs> uh, it was like, just starting to think about the movies. Like, oh, this is awful. This is bad. This is really stupid. Like, I just started flooding my, my, my brain juices uh, with all the things that are dumb. With kind of was like, I just want to go home and go to bed. <laughs> I was like... Yeah, for me, uh, yeah I think the... for me... It was uh, Wakanda Forever with uh, me as well, and I think it's because I had that really long middle section mm -hmm. that I feel just absolutely just destroyed any sense of pacing or consequence, yes. where I feel as if this one at least seemed to keep me more engaged okay. on just a purely visual um, way, 
But I would say that it probably is a very close second because what, Thor 11 what Thunder I, made me angry, so it wasn't right. numbing. <clears throat> There's a little, um, a little bit of that in this. We'll, we'll explain that. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But for this I, one, I this one was um, mostly just like colors, images, the things. A, a retort I would have is I would I was I was quite bored watching uh uh watching Wakanda Forever, and it was it was quite mind numbing. I don't know. This one felt like hyper sludge. <laughs> It just, this, this one's got a lot of hallmarks that were being like hitting me, and I was like, "Oh, this just every yeah. fucking time." Mm -hmm. Maybe so, it could the... just be down to how, like, how we felt, just us when we watched these oh, movies. Oh, that's exactly, of course. Right, um, like that because... day, I was just feeling kind of meh. So whatever. But I guess the point of the exercise is to highlight a certain sort of frame of mind that one might leave a Marvel movie, like a current modern day produced Marvel movie. And it feels like there are many, many, many factors that explain why from writing to production, like it's, I don't know, it's just like, these are, this sludge, like, it really <laughs> is. It's just a pipe and there's sludge just constantly yeah. coming out. And then what happened was it closed for a little bit, and it's like, ooh, phase five, hoo hoo hoo, ain't that exciting? New sludge coming your way. And it opens, it's the same stuff. It's the same, it's the same viscosity, same color, <laughs> same odor, just yeah. pump it Holy out of shit, that pipe. Oh, Oh, they definitely Nothing were changed. like, the, this phase four to five, which previously right, was not at all right? the changeover. This was just, this was clearly but, a phase four guys, movie too. Things will change now, yes. even though all of the films that are coming out for the next, like, year and a half have already been shot and are already in post-production and were written a while ago, meaning that any changes that manifest in the way that Marvel makes movies won't appear for a while. To be fair, they if... might still be being written, even in the post-production. <laughs> sure, that's true. That is they might very, be very true. Being written. Who knows what kind of reshoots they're going to be doing. Well, so we've got the genius behind this film and Michael Waldron are giving us the Avengers films, right? Yes. So this is the writer of this, the writer of this film did the Vat of Acid episode. And now I'm left to think about what happened because mm. Vat of Acid is, is one of the best episodes of Rick and Morty. And this is, you know, and yeah, Michael Waldron is, is writing uh, Secret Wars. Man, I Dan Harmon must be a good script editor. Maybe. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but I, I, oh, but God, I mean, looking at this, uh, this year, things are slowing down a bit. Uh, mm. Stuff has been delayed. I think it's only confirmed that there will be two shows this year, rather than like four or five like they've done for the last <laughs> Disney, like, while. we can only lose oh, wow. so much money, okay? We well, need to, like, I mean, <laughs> Marvel, Marvel got delayed by like four or five months yesterday. It's meant to come out in July, now it's coming out in November. It's like everything's getting spread out. Oh, to okay. give them seemingly more runway for whatever's coming next, which probably a good idea. Yeah. Though you, I would imagine that Disney and Marvel are not happy about the feeling that they have to scale things back because it's less money. Potentially, maybe it's more <laughs> money. Maybe each of the films make more money, but I can't imagine you know, the shows were making them a lot of money, like because all they have is subscribers. Not well, clearly sales. not. If they lost, and they just shed. They millions. lost subscribers. They yeah. lost like two and a half yeah. million. But yeah, also, that was, was in that was in India, though, wasn't it? Specifically, that they lost uh, them. Oh, was it? They, they lost like a deal with some company, and loads of content was removed in India, and India, and like loads of their subscribers there left. I think oh, is the story. Okay. Well, I mean, but, but we think Indians are real people, Jay. So that's still <laughs> okay. pretty big loss. Pretty pretty big loss. I would. Well. Say. I sorry, I didn't realize there was on an SJW podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> little did you know, <laughs> stumbled oh, right into our trap, uh, our Modoc trap. You saw Modoc the Modoc heads, heads, and you were like, "Oh, oh. this has got to be an anti SJW podcast <laughs> on account of all the Modoc heads." Well, the thing is, though, is that if the Marvel shows were getting them tons of subscribers, why wouldn't they try to keep up the pace? Yeah. It's because would, they're probably not yeah. doing well enough yeah. to, to justify how much they cost. It's it's True. okay. They can admit it now. <laughs> like, it's alright. We all knew anyway that this was all a mm. really bad experiment. And that, um... Uh, yes. To rely, maybe, on the movies more so is some, becoming something of... I, I will be curious about the box office for this and certainly of the Marvels. I think it's already made a hundred million dollars. This one, uh, on opening like a couple of days. That is to be expected. Yes, it is the drop off. Yeah, we're all looking for. 
Yeah, yeah. It's, that is uh, that's going to be the interesting part. How many people come back? Because I don't know, man. Is anybody after watching this going, "Fuck, man, I got to go see it another time"? That was crazy. And better yet, in a couple of years, like let's say even two or three years from now, who's going to go, man? I really want to rewatch Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. <laughs> Gotta yeah. get that on Blu-ray and watch it. Yeah, only people it. who are trying to collect all of them would do that. They're not going to actually rewatch it. Like the MCU movies, like it? Pokemon. Well, so, I was I was going to say as well these these things they really are becoming a matter of like we all get together and watch the new natural disaster happen. As in, like, you pull up some chairs, and it's yeah. like, there's a volcano this time, tsunami this time, it's, it's actually like, it's a crash. huge asteroid. You're like, oh, wow. A chemical spill. Yeah, for example. <laughs> shitty train tracks could lead to all kinds of results. Um, it's it's kind of sad, though. Like, before, there was like, oh, let's watch a new one, see how okay it might be, and maybe get some good character stuff here and there. I was and loving them like, once upon a time. Once yeah. upon a time. And now it's like, let's see how bad this one is going to be. Maybe there's some, is, is a good scene, <laughs> like one. Well, I oh. thought, uh, as per every one of these, it's like, I mean, you know, could surprise me. Could be the, it's, yeah. But like, it really does feel like they're all made in the exact same way. It's really yes. sad. Um, one of the big broad problems I would talk about is like the, the whole volume screen thing. Nobody feels, uh, you knew this from the trailers, nobody feels like they're where they are. It's the, yeah, uh, everything feels fake. Particularly so mm -hmm. here because it's like this of all, you know, if you went to watch Ant Man one, you'd probably be like, oh, there's like a lot of like you're in a lot of real places right now, <laughs> like you're you know, like you're you're actually outside in a backyard or mm -hmm. you know you're actually out on the street somewhere. But because this film is taking place in the quantum realm, it's like ninety percent of the shots are like some crazy CGI background. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily a problem, I mean, because, like, there are plenty of films that make it look like they're actually there, but not this one. No, I don't know. Yes. This is one of the fakest movies I've ever <laughs> seen yeah. in my life. Yeah, the setting, though, is, like, such a bizarre place that's, like, there's no precedent for what it should look like. They had all the possibilities in the world available to them for, you know, aesthetic choices, and this is what they went with. They just with. chose all of them. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, depending on what part of the realm they're in, it's just completely different visuals. Like they just yes. got to an artist and said, "Go nuts," and they're like, "Okay." Yeah. And they make crazy beautiful things, and then they're like, "What are you gonna do with my work?" And it's like, "We're gonna put it in the background somewhere." Yeah, so maybe volume. they fly through it for a second, and then yeah, the uh, you get what you get. Big Shark Boy and Lava Girl vibes in terms of the there scenery. There have been comparisons to such things. Hard not nope, to compare. Never. I, I, I think people may have seen this image. Uh, it's rather amusing. So it's just the state of Marvel, you know? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> never <It's> considered. Like... <laughs> we have Modoc at home. Are the <laughs> Modoc at home? <laughs> but which one is Modoc at home? I was about to say, which even, one is yeah, that? Like... Which one is the at-home version of the other? Is it some fucking Spy Kids movie from 60 years ago? Or is it this multi-gajillion dollar massive DC production? Like, I don't know. Uh, there was uh. no prep to be given for MODOK that would work. Uh, this EW yeah. shows up, you're just like, what the f- I can't it's believe fine. it. Actually, it oh, I should probably tell tell the story about the 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 Randys that sat next to me who talked about She Hulk. I think I, I told you about that mutually. Uh, okay. So I was just in, I was in the cinema. I was like half an hour early because I was I was I was a fast boy. Got a little popcorn, got something to drink, and just kind of sitting down. And then like a couple of sat next to me, just chilling. And then some Randy came up, and then they kind of got their seats arranged because they mixed it up or something. It doesn't matter. And for some reason they started talking about about like She Hulk. I was like, uh oh, <laughs> like I'm just listening. I'm not part of the conversation. And then they started like, oh yeah, it was kind of bad. And I was like, oh interesting, okay. And then the guy of all things he could have said, it's like, yeah, I didn't like the show, but I really liked the ending. And oh. I, I was I was like, what? I mean, I didn't say that, but in my mind, I was like, what? Well, How did it is that about happen? family, and that's what's so powerful <laughs> about it. You, you should have interjected, Metal. <laughs> just like you can't, <laughs> you can't let yourself. people, you can't let strangers have bad opinions. <laughs> you must correct them. Yeah, Excuse no, me, I, I think, think you meant to say like... the whole thing was awful. Like, please, <laughs> I'm actually 
Um, yeah, I think he says like, "Oh yeah, because this was like kind of uh, like the fourth wall and whatnot." And, this, and I was like, the Kevin Feige board was kind of fun. I was like, "Jesus Christ, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shut my mouth." <laughs> oh but yeah, that was kind of a baffling experience. I didn't, yeah, I, don't... I didn't think that was possible to hate the whole show and then no, the ending that, that was fine. I was like, what? the yeah. beginning okay. was all right. Where you, it's just a guy walking down a street and you're like, "Oh wow, it's just a guy walking down a street and <laughs> he's going to buy weird, a coffee." Actually. Yeah, th especially at the end when you think about well, this is where we were. At one point, it was a guy walking <laughs> down a street buying a coffee. And it's just so relatable, mm -hmm. so normal, so approachable. And then, you know, an hour later, you're just in this nightmare world where yeah. nothing matters and yeah. everything is always and everywhere. And you're just like, oh, my God, what, what's even happening? Go back to the real world where you can buy a coffee. Yeah, I really I really felt, you know. That setup could have given could have led into a totally different movie and made way more sense. I just want a movie where maybe the him not he goes to drink his coffee and someone steals it and he spends the whole movie getting coffee back. Yeah. That would be fun. No, we need a new realm to put in our multiverse because we're not confusing enough already. No, but this one's outside of space and time. No, so. <laughs> also very, it's, but you have to shrink down really small to get down <laughs> oh. into it. Or, but unless it's, you have a beyond portal, space then you can do too. the portal as well. That's true, the portal, which I oh, guess yeah, has the to change, change your size. Yeah, this, the portal, I guess, changes your size. I don't oh, know. God. I didn't even try to think about yeah, that. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that. Instantly, that. yeah. Um, it took him like a minute to get down there, and I, it seems to be instant when they go back and forth through the portal. He should have used the portal. The portal yeah. seems to be the way to go. Pretty Something much. I uh, noticed about my audience, and I think this is a, um, a reality of thing we talked about with these movies in terms of the emotional roller coaster not quite being a roller coaster, more like it's shaved off the edges quite a bit so that we never go too hard in any direction. The um the emotional sounds I heard, right? So I think there were three jokes in the whole movie that the audience that I, that I was surrounded by uh, had any kind of reaction to that I was like, oh, I think some of them found it funny. But I um, was similar. Three. What? That's like a good. That's like one half for a half hour. That's yeah. That's really terrible. <laughs> yeah. That's I think it's a two-hour movie though. So. Oh, that's, that's like four <laughs> like, during the yeah, whole movie. Not, during what's no, clearly like, a comedy movie. Yeah, they, they tried real hard to be funny in this movie. Yeah, real fucking hard. They, um, uh, also, the point I was, was going to make. Well, was this less funny than uh, Love and Thunder? No, Ew, I, I don't even so. know. Maybe I, I don't know, but I chuckled once. Uh -huh. I didn't chuckle yeah. once. In Love, <clears throat> Love and Thor. You know the movie. That's true. Yeah, I did <laughs> chuckle during this a couple times. Also, fucking hell, thank you, J Mac. I'm just gonna fill the whole damn chat with <laughs> the gifted things. It's like spam. Um, oh, man. What I was trying to say was the whole audience uh, was 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 making some noises, and they were making me think. So, for example, one of the jokes would happen. Uh, we'll we'll get to which which ones these are, but um, it would happen, and then you'd hear like, <laughs> it's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, what kind of, of them... laughter you'd get during just normal conversations with people every day in <laughs> yeah. your yeah, life. Yeah, kind of. Uh, but yeah. the one that was most curious to me was that one of these came up. One of these moments came up. when it, I don't think it was a joke. It's half and off. It was the reveal of Modoc's face. Oh, yeah. Um, which yeah, I, I yeah. guess is supposed Same. to be funny. But it's weird. The audience was literally like... <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah, it's a bit confused. <laughs> like, like, is that supposed to be funny? I think the guy next to me was like, uh... <laughs> Because when I watched this movie, I went to a, I went to a, uh, I went to a theater in India to see this, and nobody in that theater laughed at like anything. In the movie. So I guess it just doesn't quite, it doesn't quite translate. So I had to catch a flight and hop back over here to the states real quick to that make whole, a podcast like, in time. That whole theory about how like nothing is pushed to any kind of extreme or no experience is properly crafted. It's all just a general experience. Yeah, everything things. just seems they, they just sort of just threw stuff out into the wild, and whatever happens was like, eh, you got an emergent laugh here. That's that's neat. That's interesting. It feels like more like like if you throw out a, a million jokes, you're bound to get a couple of chuckles. Yeah, some will be it's maybe decent. decent. Oh, yeah. Or, but again, yeah. it's it's almost like people don't know how they're supposed to react. It's like Murdoch's face is revealed, and it was almost like my audience was like, "Wait, is that like a joke, or am I laughing because like it looks ridiculous and terrible?" Mm -hmm. Like it's, yes. it's almost confused like you don't even laughter. Know. Yeah, it was very confused laughter. Yeah, are they laughing because only... it's funny, or are they laughing like they're in a straight jacket and they want to leave? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It it felt like the equivalent of having a plate, and it's like here are two chicken nuggets, five fries, a quarter of a burger. 
this here's some salmon. And you're like, yeah, okay. And it's like, <laughs> oh, okay. this is some sauce, a second sauce, a third sauce, and gravy across the sauce. And you're like, what is? <laughs> what? Hey, I have a word on the street is that's a normal meal for an average person. <laughs> so. But it, it's just like a very small amount of everything, I guess. And uh, it really felt like that's what I heard from the audience, where maybe that is why these have some level of success, where it's just like, ah, this is movie film. I come to building to watch movie film. <laughs> Mahler, um, before you continue, could you uh, could you put a new MODOK on screen? Um, I don't I don't have them on hand quite uh, for all oh, okay. these. Okay, but... all right. All right, all right. Uh, I wasn't planning. I was only going to. Oh, you know what? We can put my. Uh, no, wait. This was my one. Now we'll do. We can do Fringy's one. Yeah. It's <laughs> a pretty funny one. So, over the course of the stream, we could get different artistic renditions of Modoc. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of. How many millions of dollars went into the creation Modoc. of Modoc? Uh, probably at least TV. one. Yeah. At least one, probably. Yeah, but they ran out of money during the phase, so they just stretched I mean, it over. Like, <laughs> they forgot does it, to does do it the cost like last. millions of dollars to run a sweatshop? I don't know. Um, well, the, the, these will be <laughs> this will be a sweatshop. I this is the one. Disney CGI dungeon. Um, yeah, the base. Uh, it'll. They're, I suppose they're comparable. And I feel like oh. you know, as soon, as soon as like the workers are being whipped with chains, it, I don't care chains. what I'm calling chains. it. <laughs> whips whips chains. And chains. 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 Classic. Oh, so, I Thanks, suppose man. we should start getting to it. This is going to take a long time. This oh, is yeah. the same shit as Ant Man. No, that's th that this is movie this one. is simultaneously <laughs> dense and empty. It is just like it fits right in with MOM and uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. This one, it, it's I don't. Th well, that's that's a good question. Where does everyone rank this one in top five worst MCU films? I assume it's Jesus. in everyone's top five, oh, but the, does it make this it? This is the to... smallest of the MCU movies. Oh, I get um, it. I, How yeah. would I rate it? I think oh. it is worse than Wakanda Forever. We can we can at least say, say that. So. I yeah, think yeah. so. Yeah, it has to be. Um, I'm trying to think how I like compare the I two. Don't like, where's think, even my starting point? Don't think it's as bad as M O M. Right? No, so, I think M O M still, still the takes floor. the crown. I, I would agree. Still... This one builds on the sort of, sort of builds There's on some things in stuff. here. There are some things. All right, I will say that. <laughs> And there's a genius move of some, there's a, at least one character in this film where it's like they literally did nothing with them, and so there's no damage. <laughs> so it would be, it's, I think it could be number three from the bottom. Maybe and four. Because, film, cause, right? cause what's worse, Multiverse of Madness and what else do you say? Um, oh, well, uh, uh, the, uh, Love and Thunder, I think, possible. is probably worse than this. Is it? It does is, deal is a this... lot of damage to Thor, which is the thing that's Yeah, the characters are annihilated in Thor. Um, does this do a lot of damage to, like, to the one quantum character realm and there's well, one, sure, yeah. like, but, state of the world? But, well, yeah, but all of those films do massive damage yeah. to the world. <laughs> yeah. So, really, it's the characters, uh, and there's one yeah, character in particular in this film worst. who's... Which just says one character in this film who suffers pretty substantially, but uh, otherwise... The... Thor. I think it's after the Thor. What do you mean? After? So three. After three. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Okay, three. so yeah. Multiverse of Madness, Thor, Love and Thor, Thunder, and Quantum Mania. Then this? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Well, yeah. What else uh, do you think has a chance of beating it? We did have Black Widow, but it feels like a movie like Black Widow can't come close to these ones because of the... No. It's almost, the it's added, almost quaint. The added yeah. world-building shit where it just is insane. Eternals does have massive world-building consequences there's still a type but the problem is that like i can't i couldn't i couldn't tell you much about that film at the moment so yeah so it's probably uh, third worst probably uh, yeah because because every other film i'm thinking of like that would have come out is just like it like shang chi isn't even close to like it it's funny right because that that film's still pretty bad but like it's, it's it can't compete at this level yeah <laughs> this is like, the olympics <laughs> this is a different weight class entirely elite. Yeah. Um and then I guess overall overall becomes harder because then you gotta factor in the shows and like Loki oof. Oh god. Yeah, I wasn't including and shows, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Loki oh, is its own monster. Oh. <laughs> -Hulk is just, oh. The po the point that's sort of being made here is that one of the biggest <sighs> problems that Marvel has had over the last couple of years is disregard for world building and the consequences of uh the stories that they're telling in this world. 
Yep, that they yeah. keep adding new keep places, it, yeah. new dimensions to this universe, and they don't put in the work at all to try and juggle them properly and it's develop like they all any had... set of coherent rules for these worlds. It's like all the, they all had like their ideas during Phase 4. It's like, we're just going to vomit them out, and then whoever comes after me can deal with it. We're just going to yeah, do like, all our things. They didn't talk to each other about no, these no. things. Also, yeah, we have another secret society, that's true. At least this one doesn't yeah, oh. control everything. Oh, this right. one's even, like, worse, well, because not if you go... Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a secret society like the 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 Not-Atlanteans and Wakanda Forever or things like that, that's still, like, they're, they're normal-sized, and it's one of them. But if you go down to the Quantum Realm, we can only assume that these civilizations in the Quantum Realm exist all across of the Quantum reality. <laughs> don't right? even... Don't so even. we must, we <laughs> must have legitimately... We we must legitimately have introduced trillions of civilizations on a subatomic level that live yeah, underneath. No, no, the quantum the realm. realm is like the size of the state of New York. Why <laughs> in this movie it is? Yeah, the state of New York. What do you mean? This is well, why so, this will so take when, a while. Yeah, when fucking... Like one really big city, and then mm. there's some other places out oh, there, okay. and smaller places. But like okay. that's about. When you fucking know, like what's her face, old wasp said, like um, "You you will kill trillions of people when you destroy a timeline." I already thought she was underragging it. But... Yeah, trillion. When I heard that, I'm like, "Isn't it more like 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 quintillions?" I think Maybe that's it's a general a crutch, it. and the reason why it, it almost hit me when she said that, I was like, "Fuck!" That's why I've been referring to it casually a lot of the time. But for so many movies yeah. now. Again, the fucking stakes are the highest possible. Uh, trillions of lives. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know what the all stakes the, will be in the, the fucking Avengers movies? They're going to be the same thing. All the multiverses again. Well, all and them. it's funny because they do the marketing stick of like, ah, see, Kang is an Avengers level threat. It's like, simultaneously no, but also yes. And that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> you, need to, you need to stop. Yeah. Please, we just like have a a wild theory? card threat where I guess you could beat him with some ants, but you could also, like, he could end the multiverse. So it's kind of <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know where he is. Well, isn't it crazy Wild though? Card. Avengers, Earth, Age of Ultron, Earth, and then Infinity War and Endgame, the universe, and now it's just like, multiverse, 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 okay, multiverse, yeah. multiverse. Like, they should have oh. gone back. Oh, they should have gone back. They should have left those big peaks for maybe the Avengers if they were going to do it at all. It's yeah. like you no, finally have bad. the big ensemble movie at the end. Now we could say it's the universe. But, okay. But it's, you know, it, that actually, since phase four is over and this is the beginning of phase five, it might be worth, like, the stakes of these stories, Black Widow was, uh, like, taken over the world, and then Shang-Chi was gonna destroy the world, Eternals was gonna destroy the world, blow the whole thing up, uh, Spider-Man was, like, gonna do all this crazy stuff with multiverse shit and incursions, so that's universes, I guess. And then, uh, Multiverse of Madness was the whole multiverse, Thor Love and Thunder was the whole universe, um... Fuck, yep. what was uh what was what was the one after that? Oh, Wakanda Forever, that was the whole world, potentially. At least that's Getting small stakes. The whole world, you know. That relatively <laughs> speaking, that one was Kinda probably quaint. the lowest stakes. <laughs> and then and it's still about the whole world. And then don't even get started on the TV shows. A lot of them anyway. Uh and what's next, Guardians? Yeah, that'll, that'll, Guardians the stakes for that will probably be a normal story, probably won't it? Probably be a lot. Yeah, they probably will. That'll be nice. Actually. As much as the stakes may be big, it, it will likely be a normal story. Like, it, it, yeah, that'll be crazy. I can't wait. Uh... Well, I mean, you know, last one there was a god who wanted to cover all of the planets and the universe in Goo. Oh, well, I not everything <laughs> is about comrades. Yeah, why'd you have to make Liar. it weird? Gosh, uh, we're we're there, man. We're already Liar. there. I'm making a lateral move, if anything. True. Um. Do you guys want to get to the whole, like, I talk about an event in the film and then we talk about how it's really good part of this? Sure. I can't wait to get to that part. Yeah, there's nothing nothing really stopping us from doing so, and it's so exciting. I Just just big warning. There's so much to talk about. It is insane. It is so and I'm yeah, going to have to like move said... subjects around, I think, because there's some stuff that becomes more clear in terms of what the criticism is later than earlier, if you know what I mean. Mm. Like you know how if you if you were going if you went into the middle of the ocean and you just jumped in and looked around you're like wait there's nothing here and then you realize oh wait it's just like trillions of gallons of water I just did, of course that's like what this movie is mm -hmm. <laughs> well and some of it is like fucking do you even remember like Ant Man and the Wasp because there's some stuff that's getting taken up from there and it's like nobody does how could you possibly expect no. the audience to do that 
I didn't remember who like the 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 Modoc character was. Like, I just didn't remember. I was like, I was like, Mahler, who is this? I don't remember. I've seen this movie. I swear to God, I've seen this movie, and I just do not remember who this person was. But luckily, the film also knew that no one would remember. Yeah, <laughs> gave you a literal like, previously on to the middle of the film. It yeah, they got my back. His face doesn't even look like that guy's face, though. That's, yeah, I kind of feel that way. I wouldn't have recognized. Point. Well, I didn't recognize him when I first saw the uh, the, the sort of like leak screenshots. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so our story begins on a dark and stormy night. I wish it's a dark and stormy quantum verse. It's um, if you remember in Ant Man and the Wasp when they pull out the 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 mum, she's like, oh boy, I've been down there for thirty years. And uh, do you remember she has quantum flames? She like she like transfers quantum energy into ghosts. Yeah, I've been reminded of that. <laughs> no, and I was like, that wasn't <laughs> exactly. No. I brought this up. <laughs> oh, I think I don't remember that. I think I said this to Az and Gary, and they were like, "What? You're lying." Exactly. Everyone thinks it's a lie. <laughs> You're not telling what did the she truth? do with it? It was, it was a particularly hilarious plot point. It was a uh, ghost as a bad guy in that movie is a person who like phases randomly out of time or something. It's to do with quantum. I don't know. And the reason she's like attacking is because she needs to fix it. And uh, she's after our heroes for the, the, the whole film. They use the she wants their machine. They use the machine to save Michelle Pfeiffer. And then she's like, oh, I'm still all fleamy. Blah, 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 blah. And then Michelle Pfeiffer's Michelle like, Pfeiffer, don't worry. Don't worry, I can save you. And she just like puts her hands on her and it transfers quantum juice and it and it just saves her. Oh. It's weird okay. you mentioned Michelle Pfeiffer. I saw her, I watched a movie, I watched Lady Hawk oh. with my dad a few nights ago. And that has Michelle Pfeiffer in it. I like that, Michelle Batman Pfeiffer. Returns has Michelle Pfeiffer. She's oh, good. wow. I will, I will give it to it. It also had, yeah. it had she, Rutger Hauer as well. She was she was given the performance. She was she was going for it. She was like, "Yep, I'm in this movie, and I'm I'm an actress. Yep. Here I go." And I, I, I just feel bad job. when I see that. I'm like, "Oh, that Matthew Broderick." But you know, that's, they had to do a job, I suppose. In any case, that's that's Ant Man and the Wasp and stuff. And so we knew that she's been in the quantum for for thirty years, and it's like, "Oh, what does that entail?" And I guess we're getting our answers in this opening scene. We see her. Uh, she's made like a little hut, and she has. A source of water, and I, yeah. I immediately was like, "Fuck me!" Well, you see, None of this makes any sense. Like, <laughs> I don't know how they drink when they're smaller than particles of water, but well, if you, what even you, is it? Is it water? Or is it what is water? Is water? Or is it micro water. water? The quarks, well, it's, right? That's what like atoms are made up of. Quarks. Well, so I think that the the thing that it's this quirky. film would rely on is well, we don't know, so this yeah. is whatever it could be. This That's film what... relies on fuck it. Yes. Believe yeah, me. Because a bit, yeah, if we start because... this conversation, we immediately have to go like, oh, so what, what are they breathing? They're smaller than actual air right now. Like, how does that work? They're quantum air. Uh, but no, well, stop and it. The, <laughs> and the thing is, when they were small but had their suits on, you could at least be like, maybe there's a gas canister in there or a filter of some kind or something. Yeah, no, Still this is still does the nanotech helmets. Everybody's got to have their nanotech helmets. Woo! I hate on, it. I hate it. You, even oh, when it fucking... gets broken, he can <laughs> drop it. And it's like a thing. Even in the middle of Fight scenes and they're taking off their helmets when yeah. they're strapped in the dust first in the first time, man, it was just a visor that he could slide up and down, yeah, and that was now funny. It's, now it's like little like nanotech helmets so that you yeah. can always see the actors' faces. Because why would you let Ant Man wear his really cool looking helmet, his nope, really interesting looking costume that's this cool retro futuristic, still kind of almost approximates an ant? Almost like it was intentionally designed by the comic book artist because it looks cool, but mm. now nah, that would get in the way of making sure that you can see the actors, the famous actors' faces. Yeah. So they got well, to take like, on this more. This, you could see his fucking eyes in that mask. It, like, yeah, you yeah, could. It's true. Yeah, that's not good enough. It's not good enough. It's just, it's just ge this general thing with like air and different worlds. Like we. we we introduce all these multiverses and realms and dimensions, and the writers just assume, yeah, yeah, they all just think they can breathe there. It's fine. And they it's think like, that they can breathe there, but, but it's like multiverse. Happy. There could be there could be a universe that has acid air. It's like no, no, no. No, it all works out. It's I actually kind of safe and all, comfy it's for a lot of air people. Comfy, yeah. 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 It's like man, it's you really so think your audience is really Remember stupid, huh? Remember how in the first film it was you're just shrinking like forever? You're just like in a place where nothing, like there's nothing, nothing makes sense. It's this weird abstract. Ah, that's the void, place. Ringy. They do address ah, that, that's you know. Right. No, not like the yeah, uh -oh. right. That's and don't forget the layer of subatomica, of course. 
Uh, so what that is. Very helpful. Very, yes. very helpful. Yes, indeed. Is that actually is that actually a name that they said in the yes. in the film? Yep. We'll, yeah. <laughs> I get there. I remember we that. Might get I there. Who fucking knows? So uh, yeah, she's yeah. just she's carved out her own little living space, and I legit am like, if she went in there as wasp, and she ended up on like some spit of land. This isn't even civilization time. This is just some rock surrounded by weird swirling, you know, colors and stuff. How did you? Where'd you get water from? How did you make yeah. the hut? What 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 is this? What is happening? And it's just like, shut up. And why okay. are you here? Why are you not chilling somewhere in those big cities or something? Did you just decide to live here instead of checking out all the other? Uh, people that live down here that apparently oh, no, there was a bar to know after there was yeah it looked like a kind of a night like there's it's people like, around that well, yeah, wait, they wait wait but the, the, i need the geography is so important all right where she is at the beginning of the film is not the rest of the film it's a very different I place mean, I, yeah okay yeah, i guess the because <laughs> uh, like they don't do a good job of explaining shit all um but i'm trying i've been trying to make sense of it okay it's real difficult because she makes uh, yeah, reference to how she was alone until she met uh, the person that's about to crash land. And it's like, but I thought there was a whole civil... And it's like, wait, I guess yeah. that was before she got to the civilization. Maybe, blah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah. But then um, she had a whole history with the people in the civilization. But if she didn't meet anyone there before she met Kang... Uh, but the thing yeah. is, she help also has a bunch, of, me. Well, she so has a bunch of weapons in, in that scene already that she didn't have before, so she must have gotten them somewhere, right? To, exactly. So, yeah. so why is she a hermit living in a hut yeah. out in the wilderness? <laughs> I don't know. She can fly. <laughs> they wanna, they don't want to give fly, you, yeah. like... I don't want to give you a clear timeline, because she was there for 30 years. It's like, was Kang there for 30 years? Probably not. When Probably did not. he show up? It's like, I don't know. When did he show up in the timeline there? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess that's the next thing, right? So, Kang crash lands. You may know him from Loki, but this is a different Kang. This is just one of many Kangs. He's a bad Kang, yeah. question mark. Well, question to be honest, mark. we as the audience are like, oh no, Kang! But she's like, oh, hello, person. And he even yeah. saves her Good life, thing. because she gets Good attacked thing. by uh, some spooky quantums. They go, Good Mah. thing that he landed right there, though. God damn, if yep. he landed anywhere else in the quantum realm. <sighs> that is, this whole film doesn't worlds. happen. Yeah, and, so and, and to be here. fair, she's like the only person in the quantum realm that could have helped him. Everyone in that civilization exactly. couldn't have done shit. Well, yeah, because she is aware of a world beyond the quantum realm. Like, she knows that there's a world out there. When she's just got Zero. this is the thing though, like multiversal travel and, and quantum and travel really apparently smart. is just like there's just this big crossover in understanding and technology. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I was, yeah. I mean, I he's I like later. I don't want to go into it now, but yeah, yeah that's yeah. true actually. So it, all we get in this opening is that them they meet. Um, but you know, I guess now is safe enough to say yeah, it's just fucking insane that those two would be able to meet. It's so funny. The story starts and it starts off with an astronomically insane like yeah. coincidence oh, immediately, goodness. like. Plenty well, of those yeah. to come. Of course. One one without which the whole story doesn't happen. And they even have the small Plenty ones. of those to come. <laughs> like, um Yeah. You she's these these creatures want to kill her apparently, and one of them um like decloaks in front of her and then attacks. Why? And it's just like <laughs> that seems like a pretty good thing to not do. <laughs> Maybe like, that's how they work. <laughs> it's like in Halo when you like move really fast or run. Then <laughs> you lose your active camo. But he's like still when he uncloaks. What, oh, what, what well then doing? I don't know what that's about. Yeah. Yeah, he he's invisible or it's invisible. I'm not even gonna fucking go there. It's invisible and then it unvisibles or revisibles and then it splits. <laughs> Whereas I would have just stayed unvisible the whole time and then <laughs> I would have I would have jumped on her and I would have used my my claws and maybe I would have bit her with my teeth. I would have just... Well, too bad, because rawr. Kang shot it. Oh, <laughs> darn. You see, that's why step one is stay invisible. Very important step. Yeah. Do just... not overlook step one. All steps, they are branches of the first step. Like, uh, she's trying to... She, like, kills one, and then the other one somehow is, like, almost defeated her, and then Kang grabs her pistol, shoots it, and is like, where am I? And that's, that's your, uh... Your big old, I guess, cold, cold open, open of uh, yeah. being being invested in this, like, oh gosh, what about, oh, that piece of information is going to change my whole life. But I'm just saying, like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> the, the big question you'll actually, get almost um, immediately is like, I don't remember. It's a needed scene, by the way. You can cut it, nothing would change. Oh yeah, but the whole point of it is to make us go, ooh, that'll come back later, probably, maybe. 
But uh, the yeah, reality but like, is that it only immediately starts the up, up the question of. I don't remember who mentioned in that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but she never actually mentions anything ever. So <laughs> <laughs> basically, it. But uh, she signed an NDA. Thank fuck, they have good reasons for that. Oh, 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 oh man. man. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine if they mm. didn't. Oh, it'd be so. It would be, be so bad. Um, anyway. <laughs> and then we get to the 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 real open in the film. Okay, where Scott Lang is is having himself a jolly walk down the street, just talking about how oh, everything's pretty okay, even though everything makes no sense. Yeah. Um, which I think in a in a movie we like would be kind of fun, but in this one it's it almost seems like a crutch, especially when you hear him say the same thing by the end. Where he's just like, mm -hmm. the world just doesn't make any fucking sense, and you're like, yeah, yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he goes to get a coffee, and he gets it for he free. And then the guy who's giving it is like, thank you, Spider Man. You you like that? No, he has he does it. I, but it was because it was like the accent. He was an old man with a weird accent, and he called him Spider Man. And those things were just like, eh. yeah, I you know? chuckled a little. Like that was just like it was just like that is just, that was a joke. The that pure... the audience, I think, had the reaction that yeah. the writer was hoping for. So that's no. pure surface that level. One of the two funny jokes old man. in the film I liked. <laughs> I think it was. Just, it's one of the jokes from the trailer as well. Yeah. Oh, oh, they double well... dipped on that one then. <laughs> <laughs> they knew. <laughs> Well, yeah. They knew, yeah. They knew it was some of the best content in the film. Oh, yeah, like, this like, one's so gold. The, we got to reuse that. So the test audience laughed at two jokes. Should we put both of them in the trailer or just the one? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Once we get them in the theater, it doesn't matter. We got their money. We got their money. Yeah. We got to get them in that theater. Um, and yeah, and so they're going to update us on what, what's happening with everybody. Scott is um, hey. he's chilling out from having saved the world. He's going to hang out with his daughter. He said he's focusing on being a father, and he's written a book about his uh, his time, and he's doing like a book tour with it, which yeah. I think I remember um, was re like I guess a leak came out like a while ago, and we were talking about um, the leak. I think had a bit of editorializing where it was like he's gone super ego driven, and he's he's obsessed with making money or something. I remember us being like, whoa, 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 whoa. So it's insane, um, but it's not quite that, and we'll no. we'll get to it in a second. I'm just going to summarize the other uh, like he talks about yeah. hope. Good old uh, Evangeline Lily. I don't know if you remember Hope's her, the like wasp, the, the second wasp. She's taken back her dad's company, which I I need to check into to see even the fucking I don't even know the state of uh, Hank's company at this well, point. Well, remember the headquarters got destroyed in the first. Oh, that's what I mean. I don't uh, even I know. I didn't even I who didn't owned that. it as of the second film. What was the state of it? Uh, I it was uh, well, yeah, because I imagine it was the 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 dude, the evil guy, Yellow Jacket, had yeah, taken right. it over, and then it got destroyed. And yeah, so, like I said, I don't know then, what, yeah. what it's doing in the second movie. I don't remember. Um, uh, I don't know. In any no case, they does. say she uses the Pym particle for global change, including reforestation, affordable housing, and food production. Do you, yeah. do you remember How? in the first film when, when, uh, when Hank <laughs> said that for, for as long as he's alive, nobody will ever get his formula? I guess he's changed his mind. He's much more open it's, about Yeah, it's pretty much public now. And I was like, this isn't just revealing it to the world. This is like actually applying using it in like it. factories or whatever, I'm assuming. I guess well, so. Well, using it in ways that other people may well be able to, like, figure out how it works and create their own pin particles. And, like, because this Maybe. stupid universe never cares, but it's just like, so that means, like, going small and going big, that's just commonplace now, every right? Every time, I'm sorry, every time you say pin particles, I can't help but think that this is a prostitution magazine, where a pimp is writing articles about how the <laughs> business is conducted. <laughs> I can't, I can't not think of that. <laughs> it sounds like you're saying pimp articles. <laughs> I would read those articles. That'd be fucking yeah. great. I would. It'd be better than this movie. So um, I didn't actually see either of the previous two Ant movies. Will you remind me what the Pym Particles do? Um, they ruin the, uh, Endgame. See, yes, they do. <laughs> Besides that. They, uh, they're like the core energy that supplies the, the ability to do all of the crazy things for shrinking and growing, basically. Yeah. It's the key to, to all of it as a science. Um, it's why Besides Hank's goose. got like the pattern and the control of it. And in the first movie, he's worried that if it falls into the wrong hands, it'll be the end of everything. I think he got over that. Um, yeah, apparently so. But how does that? Been, I guess. How does that help solve affordable housing? Because you can grow the houses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> remember how like remember how they housing have their... and food. I don't get reforestation. 
like grow the uh, trees. Yeah. What, what, yeah. What, 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 all right, so like just... the pimp particles actually make them like mature instead of just making the seed massive. No, they're just no. <laughs> instead <laughs> of having, if we're gonna have fewer forests, <laughs> if they're big, hey, all right, Strongest now we're trees. sort of balancing out. Well, I mean, no, I guess yeah. if you have they show like, us. I guess that's the thing is like if you're using pimp particles to make small food and make it big food, there is no. <laughs> Man, it's like, I guess the blip, I guess that solves it then, well, right? You can just make as much but food as you want. Wouldn't pim particles that, um, be more expensive increase... than a lot of foods? Yeah, like, wouldn't also, like, yeah, wouldn't that, that, how right? would that increase the food's nutritional value? Uh, I it's don't, still the don't, same don't, amount of food, no, it's just don't. expanded. See, here's well, the thing, Jay. It's, These it's questions, so funny that you say that, actually, none of us will was, have the answer. <laughs> I was thinking about the pizza when it gets expanded. It's like, well, no, now it's just like a massive... Like, instead of the tomato being, you know, however big, now it's, oh, f yeah, like, don't even try to think about, like, the actual properties of these things when they shrink and grow. This is yeah, a simple I... world where everything's nice and simple and easy. Yeah, yeah, I well, do not yeah, understand the, um... how this helps with either food or affordable housing. It's been, oh, I think that's it's been a problem easy. since the first the one, characters keep or lose their weight when they're small, depending on uh... the whims of the, that moment. Mm -hmm. Well, because it's something that happens in this film where they actually like kind of change their mind on something that they said in the first film. Because remember how in the first film they're like, oh, well, the whole shtick is that when you're small, it like localizes all of like the power of uh, of you into like a small point. Yeah, it's like the but density film, goes up and then you can yeah, jump so, like, higher. And have, that's how you get the superhuman powers when you're small and get to yeah, jump that much. high. Which is a decent enough hand wave, you know, like it's a special little thing. It's kind of ambiguous, but it's it's fairly easy to understand. Your power gets condensed with you. It's like, okay, yeah, I'll buy it. Sure. All right. And then they kind of change their mind in this film. They explicitly say that it's like, well, no, you got to emerge big to punch people. Do you remember? In like the fight scene? Oh, yeah, yeah. the thing is, I, I, I checked on the, some stuff. the power thingy. The way they, I mean, this is just from the MCU wiki. I don't know how okay, accurate cool. the, the, it is, but apparently that simulates the superhuman strength because of the momentum or something. So you have to do it over and over again. So you get the power for this one punch. Uh, okay. I, this is what I mean. It's not even, yeah. it's not even worth trying to figure out how any of this works. Yeah, this is how, how th that's the way they wrote it there. So that's, I don't know, that's the best I can do as well. <laughs> so, like the Palpatine Surgical Reconstruction Center. That makes <laughs> sense, though. <laughs> but I mean, I guess that's the thing is we're just sort of left to conclude that that's the state of affairs. It's like, yep, uh, like Hope is running this company and then actually yeah. leveraging like PIM particles in practical, in a practical, like, isn't it crazy to think about how like technologically advanced like the world that they are in actually is? Yet yeah, none they of have some crazy in shit. the average day to day lives of like the regular well, yeah. person in that world. I mean, exactly. this is how many years after Avengers and all the alien technology and the Asgardians are here now. Oh, it's um, been, it's been a while. We'd be pretty. <laughs> we would be pretty onto that, and plus, I mean, whatever Wakanda wants to get. <laughs> but anyway, there's all <laughs> kinds of stuff that we should just sort of like have. You yeah, know, yeah. at least, God damn it, at least an Independence Day, whatever the second one was called, they were like, yeah, we got like space lasers and shit because we study the alien stuff. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I guess that makes sense. What you're saying that Roland Emmerich's Independence Day universe is more well thought out, more than... cohesive than the MCU. <laughs> yeah. Unironically, it probably is. Yeah, there's probably. only two they of them for starters. In, um, in Far From Home, not in Far From Home. In uh, no way, no. In fucking Hulkling, I'm smart. Three for three. Wait, what? What would? What would they, they try, try to, to do? The do? Um, they try to do the. Oh, we studied the alien tech, and now we have new things in uh, no um, fucking homecoming. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, I'd yeah. say that they reasonably succeeded at sort of making you know smaller well, sorts of guns and gadgets and stuff. Yeah, they, they, I mean they um, they succeed in that movie, but then forget about it subsequently. Well, it's because the technology or, like, whatever they introduce in terms of world-building or mechanics only exists in so far as it services the goals of any given film. Mm -hmm. But then afterward, it's often forgotten. Yeah. Well, that's and because so then, the yeah, MCU like, forgot the CU. The, the, the cinematic universe part of their cinematic universe. It's, it's, it, it, we've had this problem for, I mean, gosh, years now, where this universe is just while. not connected. It's called it a like, connected universe, but it just isn't at all.
new. Well, the only connection that seems to be maintained in these films is character showing up. That's it. But like, as for and even then, well, that's all you need. Shaky. Well, yeah, like yeah. actors showing up more so. Yeah. Well, especially in the case of uh, Jonathan Majors, right? Kang. It's like, well, th this is not the same Kang. He's just showing up as different Kangs all the time. Yeah. Which I guess maybe that's fun for him. But it kind of, it's almost like that's that's what's. Well, well, because in this film, it's like, it's something that's worth talking about, I guess, with relation to this opening scene. Scott's acting a little bit different than he normally does. Just a little bit. Um, I'd have to go back, but... I don't remember. It doesn't feel like a Scott Lang move to be like, I'm gonna write a book? Uh, no, it I, doesn't. I, 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 I... I, I could buy... It's, I think it's more so like a matter of where his priorities seem to lie, because it's like... Something that they try to establish as, like, a thread in the earlier portion of the film is, like, Cassie's, like, trying to be proactive in helping people, and Scott isn't. And yeah. that strikes a little bit odd, considering yeah. that Scott might be one of the more proactive heroes in this universe. Like, yeah, sorry, what I mean so is, I'm gonna write a book in, in lieu of everything else. Uh, like, that, 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 that's uh, what comes across to me as the strange part. You we think he's got enough time in the day to to be to just hammer out a couple of pages, you know, for his book. I'm trying to think though. Yeah. His spare time in the first two movies, I don't think he did that. Uh, like, uh, had like interest. I guess. In that I way. guess all I'd say is that I just like that doesn't strike me as odd that he might want to write a book about his adventures. Um, because that's the thing, right? You could say that about everybody could want to write a book. Uh. Don't need much justification. Yeah, exactly. Just uh, never came across to me as something he was interested in, sort of like sharing his story with the world about saving the world. Um, the part where he's like, I want to spend time with my daughter, I completely buy. That would be 100% yeah. with him. But, but I guess um, that's almost highlighting the point, right, is that in having to do all these book tours and going all over the place, it's kind of like putting a wedge between him being able to spend that much time with her. It's almost like you know, having lost several years of his life, you'd be surprised that he'd be doing anything, really, that would be getting... But maybe that's the point that they were trying to go for at some point. I was about to say, yeah, that wasn't even in there. Film. Probably should have yeah. been. Well, I guess that's what I'm saying, is maybe that was, like, something that they were going to go for in the early draft, but then it got lost in the, all the quantum stuff, of, like, the notion that maybe he doesn't want to be going out and doing hero stuff because it would put distance between him and his daughter. Kind of like what's happened every time that he's done the hero stuff in the past. Just... Put that's not way. in the film. You watch like, him in the not... first two Ant-Mans and you see his appearances in the other films, and then this one starts and it's like, I've written a book. It just feels like, oh, okay. I guess that could that could be the beginning of any of these heroes' stories, I guess, yeah. in their new movie. This doesn't feel like that uh, is something that he was going to do, but the, the that part's not really the problem compared to what uh, Fring was just highlighting. With He's getting um, absolutely shat on for this life choice. which uh, Yeah, and I don't, I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, so if I can it, if I can I... clarify, I'm yeah. struggling to find out whether or not I think he would do it. I have no issue with someone choosing to do it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's the no, same it's as uh, it's a reasonable it's thing for a person to do. Yeah. Well, I think for me, it's kind of similar to the whole thing of like Cap choosing to retire. It's like he, you, a lot of people would say, "Well, he's earned the right." Like, look at all the crazy stuff he's done throughout his life and all the sacrifices. It's like, yeah, he probably has earned the right. I don't think he would though. I don't think he yeah. would make that choice. No, he it's would, kind of the same here, right? Like Christopher Lee, that shit. Scott yeah. has saved the universe. He like he he was he was a huge part of the reason why like everything got fixed. Um, but he has always seemed like a very he sort of jumps into to situations to try and help. Like he's a very he just wants to help people. Yeah, he'll um, always be around to do what he can. Yeah, yeah, to the point that he even you know with, like uh, went off to help uh, Cap in Civil War, even though he knew that that was going to have consequences because he felt like that was what he needed to do. And then, of I course, like, you know, all the... uh, oh, and yeah, but it's like a joke, isn't it? Yeah. Like the, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's easy. Well, like, it's, to it's, go it's, fight don't they bring America. it up, like, to, his, to try and, like, um, shit on him a bit? Uh, well, yeah, because they're like, they said he went to fight Captain America, which is like, I feel like you wouldn't make that mistake, right? Like, you yeah. would know that he didn't, he, like, he went to jail, like, when, you, you know the reason why he went to jail, right? Why he was under house arrest in the last movie, or him, we yeah. forgot what um, happened in the last movie. Well, part of that, I'd say as well, is that I think it was supposed to be a funny joke, where he goes, um, I fought with Captain America, and fight Captain America. Good old America. Marvel humor, I'm not awkwardly insane. stumbling, awkwardly stumbling your way through something that is also partially, like, a meta reference. Mm. Yeah, like, I, I think that that was just meant to be, like... <laughs> fight Captain America, wouldn't that be nuts? 
Yeah, it's almost like every like, time there's a joke, they treat yeah. it as independent of character motivations or like what they would want or what they know. It's like the world kind of ceases to exist for a bit to have your little joke. Annoying. They did that a lot. I, I don't actually remember it's any cool. specific examples, but I remember thinking it so many times of like, that's not funny, and also that character wouldn't make that mistake. No. Mm. Yeah, it's like the world ceases to exist oh, so that they can that make was, a joke. That was one. I've got a reference for it when the fucking it. guy is like, do you have ants? Do we have ants here in the little place? And it's like, you, you knew this woman for like a long time, right? And apparently she spoke about this a lot. Yeah. How, how would you just is he just up? fucking with him when he says that? I, Ma uh, I guess maybe. I guess he must have been. That's another weird character, that one, in terms of figuring him out. Yeah. But he's only in it for five seconds, so. Hmm. Um, yeah, I was like, an, oh, hello, oh, goodbye. So, he says, so, uh, in his, because we'll, we'll, we're gonna re go over again what we're kind of alluding to there, but just before he says, um, it's a pretty good world, I'm glad we saved it. Will I be there when the Avengers need me? Absolutely, but right now, the only job I want is being a dad, and I'm sorry I missed so many birthdays, um, or some birthdays, and it's like, what a nice um, guy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. The, yeah. It's, it's just like, you know? like what a, the, the yeah, problem with watching like a movie a thing though you say. is that I listen to the deliverance and I'm like, that's fine, movie. You're not making a point against it, are you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, right. <laughs> like, what, movie, what, are you, what are you doing, movie? Are you you're not gonna me? shit on what you just put. That's your you movie. You want to stuff? Um. So yeah, you know, you just get a bit of a hmm. Um. But that's that's what he's up to, and uh, in the montage they show him hanging out with uh, Hope, and I, I actually think this has plot relevance. They show he turns up with food to her work, and then they both nano suit their um their shit on and go and hang yeah, out and stuff. with the hyper nano suits that are crazy that but manifest I think, in maybe like oh, four or five yeah. frames. I think out the, of 24 the point frames of that, that are in a second. is to be like, see, they'll have them when things go to shit, right? Hmm. Like, oh well. Yeah, why? Good, why? Why? Why do you think it is that like Marvel has become so motivated to have everything be nanotech? Is it because it's less logistically complicated than just having him put on the suit, Probably like he did in the looks, first movie? Oh, so yeah. 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 Less, visually, le it's it's cool. less restrictive for whenever they want to do anything in the story. Yeah. Annoyingly, yeah. it does give the universe more cohesion. I mean, like I guess this technology exists now, and it's really right. widely available, so the characters feel, should have like, it. I guess. What is it, I reject what does it that look claim. Like if you. <laughs> The well, because it more another than, JL. Well, well, yeah, but, well, because <laughs> where's the nanotech being leveraged in other applications like medicine or you know, like in computer technology? It's Space only travel, ever being right? used for these stupid. Yeah, but it's only ever used for the suits. So the yeah. only thing you could say is that there's a level of cohesiveness in that all the suits in nanotech. I guess. <laughs> like, Wouldn't it but... be interesting to no. if he actually? Well, fine, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> Wouldn't it be interesting if he no. always had to wear the suit it's so that if he needed it, he had it, and, like, the helmet and everything, and, like, he constantly has this all the time with him, and it maybe starts to, like, annoy, like, some people he's around or something, because... What, you mean, like, you're, you're what always happened wearing the suit. Anymore. Like, you're always wearing the suit all the with time, Tony. even now. It's like... Oh, yeah. yeah. What happened I did have an Infinity War with War, Tony, Tony. And Ketha, where she was really upset because he had the, the big uh, chest thing for the suit. Oh, yeah. I, do I was actually going to bring up, that's the only time they've acknowledged the fact that the suit's in Ninotech versus not being And also, before. by the yeah. way, something that was neat in that film is that when he put on the suit, the jacket that he was wearing was like a jacket that could be turned into a tighter suit so that it like yep. actually was fit properly under it. Isn't that so funny? The first time around, they're like, yeah, we probably need to account for the fact that he is wearing clothes. Like, if he's wearing clothes, they need to be able to fit inside the suit. Now they just don't care. It's no. just like, no, it's magic. You just put it on and you're... T it's not like you'd be very uncomfortable with, like, your suit underneath this, like, extremely well, tight we, costume. We saw this when Jay referenced Far From Home, or, I mean, uh, No Way Home, or, it's, I, I mean, you Homecoming, <laughs> uh, hey. when uh, he he's the, the he steps out of the suit when he talks to Peter, and you, he's got, like, some clothes on, you're like, oh, yeah, I was like, there, there's a guy in there, like, wearing clothes, opens up and everything, and he can walk out of it. Yeah. Well, the thing that was, um, well, because uh, the only film I can think of with the nanotech stuff that also did it was in, like, No Way Home, where his suit looked like shit afterward. Like, it was all... Oh, yeah, it was all, like, floppy. And looked, 
Yeah, but otherwise, it's this is this is a nitpick. I will admit, I just hate the nanotech stuff. It annoys me. I don't know if it's I don't a nitpick. think it's a nitpick. I don't, yeah. I think that's a yeah. big thing when, especially when they're just discarding it and making it appear again, and when they can always have it no matter yeah. what. And uh, well, considering yeah, that they're... she needs the suit at one point, and he has to like give her the thing. <laughs> every, that I think it's a totally fair criticism to be like, well, they should always have this twenty four seven because it doesn't seem to have any sort of you know. Um, it doesn't seem to impede their daily lives in any way. There's yeah. no I guess it would be really awkward though if like you kept it in your pocket and when you got your wallet out, you accidentally dropped it, you didn't realize it, and you're like, oh, oh right, <laughs> Wasn't that a joke in The Simpsons where like Homer took the dude's uh knife when they were scouts? You remember when they were uh the 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 river the river uh cruise that they went on where it was like Homer, Bart, Ned, and uh Todd, and then he he stole the dude's knife, and he needed to face down a grizzly bear, and he's like, "Don't worry, kids, I'll I'll like take down this bear with my trusty." Uh, uh. And then it comes like Tom is using was... it to fuck with like his teeth or something, is it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but imagine if that happened with Ant Man when he was falling into the quantum realm. He's like, "Don't worry, Cassie, I'll save you with my trusty." Oh um, shit! Like he finds out that he dropped it in a restaurant somewhere. That'd be real awkward. Sorry, I just had to get a Simpsons reference in there. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Sure that we have one for the stream. In any case, um, it ends with him saying, word of advice, look out for the little guy. And you can't help but be like, is that going to be the, the movie? Is that a theme? Thing? Yeah. <laughs> but you will forever wonder exactly how to apply it. You'll be like, um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, he says, take chances, because if there's one thing life taught me, it's that there's always room to grow. Aww. I get it, because it's a small, big. Mm -hmm. Ant-Man. Yeah. Uh, That's right. Hey, well, so... Look, it's not bad, you know? It's not a bad line. No, it's fine. Then when you hear you? I think, I think the movie thinks that his writing kind of sucks, but then this movie's writing kind of sucks, so they don't really have... <laughs> the writing, I don't think the writing actually running. sucks, though. I think, I think it's yeah. totally fine. I think yeah. that these... Uh, no, these I, I agree. I just think the movie things. thinks his writing is kind of lame. accidentally wrote a good thing when they were trying to write <laughs> well, a bad I'm thing. Pretty, I'm the pretty only sure way that, that they can do I'm it. I'm pretty sure that that book is available to purchase, by the way, the book that he wrote. Like, that's a book you can actually buy... Okay. Well, that's fun, I guess. I think that's neat. I think that is neat. Wow, more product really placement in movies. Wow. <laughs> the product placement for Scott Lang's autobiography. Terrible. So, um, you know, he, he's probably incredibly wealthy, right? Like, imagine the royalties he got from that book. He got yeah. a well, trilogy of movies. I, mean, they, I happen they to they know the others. that Avengers don't get paid shit. Be. Well, yeah, it right. doesn't matter. Whole well, company, Scott Lang's right. white, so Hope, yeah. Hope does have a whole company. Yeah, I think they should. They're they're fine. Well, well it's just they surely they're very wealthy, right? They have to be incredibly wealthy. The point is, Falcon needs to write a fucking book. No. Yeah, if he wrote a book, he'd he'd sell millions of copies. That'd be that he'd be sorted. Well, the funny thing is, bought his book inexplicably. A lot of people might be like, well, but, you know, Scott saved the world. What's, what's, what's Falcon going to write about? And it's like, oh, I don't know. Uh, being a, how we I help. don't know, saving the world. Being a vigilante with Cap for several years. like Yeah, that would be super interesting. Be pretty yeah. interesting. But oh well. Um, so Jail calls Mr. Scott, and he has to go to, um, well, to jail. Jail call. It would seem his daughter, who is all grown up, and you're like, whoa, record scratch. How old is she? And you're like, well, she was, was it six in the original film? She was six uh, in yeah. Ant-Man, according to her in this film. And then that would have been 2015. And I think this film was like 2025. So she's 16, which she don't look like, nah. No. She don't look 16. No. She looks like she's in her mid-20s. Yes. Um, and she's, uh, she's a wonderful new character. The fan favorite, I would say. Everyone's. Mm. Everyone well, she's really not a new character, I guess. She's always she's she's one of their uh, older characters, I suppose, in the pantheon. Think about all the new characters that they've introduced in the last like two years. Well, uh, I don't want to think about it. Couldn't she be eleven? No, she wasn't dusted. Yeah, she was. Uh, she was on her own. So she, she was she's just she aged regularly. <laughs> Noob. Um. Yeah, and we find out basically that uh, there was a, a a protest happening to prevent the police from moving the homeless away from an area that they're trying to just set up a camp in because uh, everyone's displaced. And she tried to defend them by, I guess, 
uh, doing Ant Man things, including but not limited to a shrinking cop a cop car. Yeah, she shrinks a cop car. That's a very good idea. <clears throat> to do now, that. If shrinking and growing things is common enough that they've got like a whole industry going for like, oh, reforestation, they do. then oh. why aren't the cops <laughs> like, like, oh, you you shrunk my car, you're you're staying in jail. Yeah, yeah that's destruction of property. It's you've rendered what a cop car you... useless. Well, until I mean, well, shrinking you're... and growing things is such a big industry, surely they'll be like, wow, you shrunk a car, that's inconvenient, we'll have to grow it back again. <laughs> With our <Yeah>. technology. <laughs> What and happens if you throw one of those things at a car and someone's in it? Does it just crush the person? Like, no, like well, they get small the... as well, right? I would imagine. I think so. Like, it like it works with the suits, right? Well, uh, here's a whole other question I have that I don't oh have to really answer for. So, isn't the whole point when you shrink something down, the density stays the same? So it they've actually changed be their mind as, on that as heavy though, they... as the car. What a good that's question, a, Matt. That is, that, is, that is an Ant-Man and the Wasp problem because they did it oh, well. Okay. Like they had a no, it's an Ant-Man problem. They did have a building. Oh, yeah, it is an Ant-Man problem. Oh, did they have it in the They They did, didn't they? Wasn't there oh, a yeah, because, or something? Well, uh, one of the rail hunt parts was that um, if that's the way that it works, then when he like made the Thomas the Tank Engine toy like explode up, yeah. um, then... That it should float away. Like, it would be yeah, potentially. Exactly. Yeah. So because if you had like a tank well, and when you like... shrunk the tank down, it would potentially like r sink really far into the ground because all that weight is being yeah, is in a, a exactly. much smaller area. So it's like a spike in a sense. Imagine if you dropped one of those and then it shrunk the Earth. Does it know not oh, to do no. that? <laughs> Does it know not to do that? <laughs> it's like it's like a like a Star Trek phaser or something when it disintegrates a person. Like, don't hit the ship with it. Oh, don't no, 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 <laughs> don't miss, don't miss. Um, yeah. So, and then there's yeah, of course, as probably you know, no, the, the the world building elements of like this is a thing that people have like access to. Like, oh shit, this changes everything. Like mm -hmm. storage and like your house. Like, if you could just shrink your house whenever you're not using it, or you could just shrink food whenever you're not using it, or anything, whenever you want to store anything ever, or, oh, what's that? We don't know how to dispose of all these, I don't know, turbine blades or whatever. That's fine, we'll just shrink them down into nothing and chuck them in a hole, and it will just literally never yeah, matter. Yeah, all the mm -hmm. landfills in the world, you could just shrink the trash. Shrink the landfills. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Boom. It would definitely uh, change everything forever, much like every single movie in this fucking franchise would change everything forever. And a, yeah, well, I don't, don't know why you wouldn't, especially, especially if pim particles are cheaper than pizzas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone's highlighting yeah. the the tank he has on his keychain in the first movie. Yeah, it's like that would fucking fall yeah. through his pocket. Um, but <laughs> Ant Man jumping on people's shoulders, it would be like having you know the uh, a heavy like a bullet <laughs> pretty much going down. <laughs> well, like, yeah. Just imagine what it would feel like if somebody jumped on your on your shoulders all of a it's sudden. Like a, and then you it's like a spear. It into, yeah, I was gonna say it's even worse yeah, because it's all focused into yeah. one spot. Well, yeah. what imagine I was someone say just was like you rudely interrupted me. Was imagine then having that localized <laughs> yeah, into a tiny portion. Well, no, of your you arm. just repeat what I said. I said a bullet. Yeah, yeah but that wasn't what you said before. You interrupted me. And to Rags add interrupted on you first, you actually, before. if you paid attention. Yeah, Rags. Yeah, that's true, Rags. You, why would you do that? I was adding on to your point. Your point was made better by my interruption. Yep. I added on my to you. Point, your interruption was just <laughs> the point that I was going to be making anyway. So I think it was better. And yet he wow, did it faster. Look at that. <laughs> It's incredible. Look at that. Look three more it's like rags. someone it's like someone used a pim particle on my argument and they made it just as good but smaller. Yep. Even more powerful, like a bullet. That's right. Or a spear, I don't know like a spear you on your shoulder, it yeah. Sometimes it's I don't, I don't Imagine understand. if just like a person jumped on your shoulder. Like Fringy, Fringy's <laughs> icon now just matches him. <laughs> um but yeah, it's it's a it's totally a bubble human thing of like and tee he he is your car back. I just love that they just yeah. like arrest her. Arrest, arrest her, oh, yeah. <laughs> back you to steal, you, you destroyed slash stole police property. You know how much fucking trouble you're in. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> apparently not that much. Appar guys, apparently he... none. She walks out of the building and there's no repercussions whatsoever. Yeah. The police guy isn't the police guy. Also, I, you might have said that and I missed it. It's like, doesn't he say like, I know you have it. Give it back. Like, like he knows know she you has the car in her pocket. And go her through her pocket. belongings. You have reasonable yeah. suspicion that she has stolen police gear <laughs> in her car. backpack. Then car. you just go reach in there and take it. You're the police. You have <laughs> the authority <laughs> to do this. The reason why Cassie got okay, let go she's the main character. Like, well, uh, but in universe, would it be like, ah, see Ant-Man bailing out his troublemaking daughter. 
She doesn't have to follow the rules like everybody else. Like, it would give this idea of, like, oh, there's there's a special class of people, the Avengers and all of their relatives, and she could Mm -hmm. go out and she could do all this stuff. She could use Avengers tech against the police, and then when she gets caught, eh, no worries. One of the Avengers will break, will just pay her, uh, you know, pay her uh, bail with his unlimited monies, Mm -hmm. and then life will just go on and fuck the rest of us. We should have had Avengers parents. Yeah, it would absolutely. This is the kind of thing like, they they drop the Sokovia Accords, and this is kind of in the spirit of that, where you yeah. can't just have Avengers doing whatever they want, because this is a small version well, of that. The reality but this is, is shit that, that matters. It kind of when you see it used in this sort of application, it's like so. Pim particles have to be like hyper regulated, right? Surely, yeah, that's be like You'd an think. incredibly regulated thing. I don't know if it'd be regulated as like a substance or as a potential weapon or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> the way he slid into the frame. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. It's so funny. <laughs> you can only yell at me. <laughs> Modoc. <laughs> Modoc. Modoc. <laughs> well, what were we talking about? It was something. We were talking about that PIM particles should be regulated, but the yes. Sokovia records don't exist, so I guess yeah. you can just do whatever you want with them. Yep. Could you imagine Thanks, being a fan of like Civil War as a writer and being like, oh, I'm writing the next thing, and it's, uh, maybe it's the Captain Falcon thing, and you're like, oh, I'm going to... I'm going to, you know, include that. I'm going to develop the laws a bit, going to do some will building. It's like, no, She-Hulk said it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> Out of all the fucking shows, She Hulk says in like an aside. Yeah, She Hulk, the legal I was like, show. Oh, I lost my rid of them. fucking mind. Yeah. And then you have people like, yeah, but they were stupid anyway. It's like, no, they're not stupid. Stop it. Oh, God. They, they, they're less stupid than not having them. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, uh, oh, the, oh, my favorite the one is, well, they never now. used them anyway, so I'm glad they got rid of them. It's like, no, that's not how you solve your writing problems. Stop well, it. I think I think what we see in this film would be like an interesting example, right? Because I guess to almost like jump super far ahead, they use some crazy technology to communicate with the quantum realm and then get sucked in and then they have to stop a super duper duper like yeah. big bad guy from escaping from the quantum realm and potentially destroying the universe. Just imagine like what a government would think about all of that. It's like, my God, like this shit can just happen like that. Yeah, Jared what, what is the apparatus with which we can try to even manage any of this? And seemingly there is none because no. they don't want to deal with it. It's too Imagine hard. Imagine being the too president hard. and finding yeah. out the multiverse almost died seventeen times this week across yeah. like all the. And you wouldn't even know. You, At like, what point are you really... just like, whatever? Then I mean, whatever. Fuck it. Like, <laughs> like, like so literally, gross. what even? Kind of like everything is out of your control. It's Life just, is as yeah. mind numbing as this movie well, is. It, it, I mean, it would be. Uh, I guess it's kind of like that that episode where the president and like he couldn't accept that Rick was more powerful than the United States, and so they have to develop more and more technology to keep up and try to fight him. Well, speaking of that, remember, there that... is there is no shield. Shield was an apparatus. Could you imagine if like the FBI just like disappeared and like didn't get replaced <laughs> with anything, or like the CIA? Like what? Uh, what well, does that dude, even look imagine like? not only that, but that they got disbanded because it turns out they were Nazis. It'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> turns out, sorry, sorry. It turns out they were Nazis the whole time, so uh, the, whole the organization time. has been disbanded. And we're like, <laughs> wait, really? It's like, but, but I mean, she Bill did was have, right. Like some fu- like functions that it served, right? Have they been adopted or replaced by any other branch of the United States government, or just has it just been left like nothing? Yeah, the EPA is kind of taken over. The EPA is taken over the shield responsibilities. <laughs> but speaking of world building that uh, they clearly think they've acknowledged and addressed, but they haven't at all, the blip, when she's talking about, oh, I was uh, trying to save the homeless from the blip, but it could just be regular homeless people and oh, regular well, homeless camps, that's... and it would make no difference at all. Well, they said that well, um, after the blip, what'd they say about housing? Like, after the blip, uh, there was no place to live? When it was like, it's the opposite well, so, of what would happen? Well, so, so the well, thing is... After is that, everyone's what, what returned, she, right? Yeah, so the, that, I think what she's saying is there were homeless... There's a lot of homelessness because the blip and the snap and all that, it's like, well, yeah, that probably would have had a lot of people displaced. And imagine the economy in that world. Like, what does that even look well, like? You know, what happened with inflation? What happened with, like... The with, implication uh, like policy. Uh, of the of everyone coming back and creating Im- incredible homelessness would be 
that, yeah, all the people who came back would be the homeless ones, unless they want to make a world where you could be... They don't even... Hmm. Well, so I think, I think the how, how even would that come back to life? Yeah, how would they even yeah. fucking deal with that? Well, Jeez. remember, that's what they said in uh, Far From Home, right? That May showed up and there were other people living in her apartment. It's like, yeah, thanks, Avengers. Good job, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's worth pointing out. We see Scott walking around the city and everything seems fine. So yeah. it's not like there's mountains of homeless people. And doesn't he live in San everywhere. Francisco? Yep. Isn't there like the, a lot of homelessness in San the, Francisco? And there yeah, will be a huge like, like, population like, drop for San Francisco, of course. Yeah, and so homelessness is bad enough where they are already that it's kind of meaningless to say that it's because of the blip. She could just be trying to solve regular homelessness oh but, well i think yeah. they thought that was world building that's what happened they were like ah, see, i know we're they thought it was world building, world building. Yeah. <laughs> just like she hulk um, thought the sokovia accords ah they're they're done now they thought that was world building too mm -hmm. when i say population drop i meant initial drop but also drop of population like with the blip return and uh yeah san francisco should if you want to portray that like this almost hellscape of everyone running around not knowing what to do but they never wanted to get anywhere near that it's oh it's, it's kind of funny it's, that yeah. You know, being the opening is so idealized. Like, that's part of the joke, right? He's like, la, 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 and everyone's smiling and is happy. Just like, do you remember what world you're in? Like, <laughs> yeah. This is a world where, on, remember how, like, in one of the films, a giant celestial entity was, like, uh. emerging from Earth and nobody knew that that was something that could happen? How is everybody in this world not living in a state of perpetual Existential dwelling? crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Every yeah, day they say day. their prayers because at any second the multiverse could just collapse yeah. and they'll mm -hmm. be dead before they even know what happened. Yeah. In fact, that would be the merciful end, is yeah. if everything just stopped existing for you. I think I was talking to when Mahler and I were watching it because uh, he came with me. Um, I said, man, <laughs> Jesus, like it would be like living in this universe is like a nightmare world. Yeah. Because yeah. they talk really so casually is. about entire civilizations just being destroyed and blipped out of existence or multiverses yeah. and timelines being destroyed. And like fucking hell. It just like 99.99. Then it's just like, oh, I'm gone. Bye. <laughs> yeah, like ninety nine point nine nine percent of all the lives in the universe have just been like unceremoniously destroyed in the MCU. Like it's actually quite a hellscape. We're just focusing into the one universe slash timeline slash dimension slash world slash realm slash reality where everything just sort of kind of works out. And we're not going to talk about all the other ones that. All the other timelines where things go horribly. The timelines that just get destroyed. Timelines, universes, dimensions, realms. Realities. Realities, exactly. I love that it's about, nice like, and... when he re people always refer to it as the quantum realm, so it's very different than the others. Then you go to his description of the first movie, and he says, well, the quantum realm is a reality where... <laughs> this is like, yeah. fuck! <laughs> Come on! I guess They're it would just... have been awkward to say the quantum realm is a realm. It's like, yeah, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they, could, it's, they could make a joke out of that. Yeah, they could have actually. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a bit of a Marvel joke. What if like one of the million child prodigy scientists they have in this universe uh. was like writing their dissertation? Oh yeah, because Cassie about... is a genius. Um... Okay, there. Um... <laughs> yeah, but so... she's she's writing her dis dissertation about the differences between realms and worlds <laughs> and realities and dimensions and timelines. Mm. The, the reason this all gets brought up with the, the homeless people, though, <laughs> is to basically just have a wedge for her to be able to be like, you suck, Dad. I help people. You don't. Which is like... Oh, I thought it was like... Right? Uh, and then I, she, I thought it was she, like, aren't like, the police oh, shit? The I'm world. actually really like, good. Still no, I, I, I think that was... Uh, it, Oh, yeah, like, you still bringing up that time when you saved trillions of lives yeah. almost single-handedly. Like, it was it, you were years ago. Who cares? Well, like, hey, that's okay, the dinner table. I'm still in the car. Oh, was the, the, the car. Okay. Yeah, the I think... joke. The dog saved your life. Well, what has he done for me lately? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... I, th I think that was a wicked morning joke. You know, what has he done for me lately? Like in reference to God. Because yeah, uh, it, it, when he's criticizing her, she's like, "What did you expect me to do? Look the other way?" And it's like, "Well, wait, are, you, are we doing the thing where Superman is selfish for every second he's not saving someone? Is that is that what? Is that was happening. That's what she's doing for sure. Yeah." Because uh, clearing well, out a homeless camp there. in the middle of the night, I like we have so little context for any of this. Yeah. This is um, I'm assuming this this tragedy is like all over the place right now. In which case, either it is tragedy enough that Scott should be doing something, or it's not enough and that she's being an asshole. But uh, we don't know. I don't even like, know what he can necessarily 
do, you know? Like, there's probably so much legal red well, tape is, around these it, kinds of issues and stuff. You just shrink guy, all the homeless so oh, well, they don't think up as much them. room. Well, then they could all have one pizza and be fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's right. He can just buy one pizza and solve world hunger <laughs> with a pizza. All you have to do is buy one house, shrink all the homeless, and then put them in there and they can live together. Um, I like yes. that you just shrink the homeless and not grow the house. <laughs> well, okay, we can do it your way. Gather all the dollhouses in the world and then just make a massive <laughs> complex. Well, but this is kind of what I'm getting at. With Hope being, like, super rich, he's rich, they've got loads of resources, they're actually doing humanitarian stuff, so, like... I'm, I'm assuming that they are trying. Like she's like, you, yeah. you guys aren't doing anything. It's like, isn't that what they are doing though? The, I mean, the... presumably she can't say that to Hope if she's running a business that's doing well, like, massive amounts of like humanitarian work. Well, I think this was only uh, pointed at Scott, not at at Hope at all. Well, that's my was, point though. Is that, like, wouldn't yeah. Scott be involved in this in some way? Uh, is he not? Up, is like, he just uh, writing this book? In this world, I have no clue. Maybe I mean, he has yeah. absolutely nothing to do with the business. But it's, and it's this this hopefully contextualizes what I was trying to say about the book. It's like they're saying the book is everything. He's not doing anything else. It's like, really? It's like, well, he's being a dad. It's like, well, it, it's, well apparently well, I mean, not because he's, he's missing yeah, out on um, the shit that's happening with his daughter. This is all a surprise to him. But she's in prison. So <laughs> is that... <sighs> So and, she... well, I, and I guess, again, to hit at the fundamental, I don't know, one of Scott's biggest motivators was, like, his daughter. Like, yeah, that's, say, that's, I'd like say one primary. Of core, it might be, yeah, it might be his most fundamental motivation is protecting her, making sure that she's happy, and, like, basically proving to her that he's a good person. Like, that's one of his core motivations, and it's kind of like, just for some reason, it seems like that's been diminished to a, a, a appreciable degree during this early portion of the film in terms of speaking to what he's been doing for the last few years, of, like, busy going out with his book, doing tours, and going yeah, out and this, to, you know, this is where I get cynical and stuff. Because I think that the, what the movie wants to tell us is that he did save the world, he did something great, and he's gotten complacent and doesn't need to do anything else now. He's completed his task sort of thing. The fact that he says, like, hope is saving the world every day... Right. Yeah. She's, I, I have the, like, she's she, perfect. I have the people sus face of like, are you saying he did it once and she does it all the time? And that's why she says later on, do you remember when he's, uh, they're all making fun of him for saving the world and it cuts to hope. And she says, yeah, how was that for you, Scott? Uh, what, like, say that what? The, the I don't get being... why they make these new female characters just such unlikable cunts. It's so really, fast. it really annoyed me because, uh, we, we, jumping it slightly, but like when she says that, I was like, are we actually shitting on him for say he, He's the quintessentially most important component of saving the world. He did the most. He's the one that figured it out, suggested the idea, oh, exactly and then pushed it forward. Without him, because he, when he got out, he was the proponent of trying to use the quantum realm to do time travel shit. And then just to That's have the idea. writer tell me, yeah, well, hope saves the world every day. It's like, fuck you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I just said it's like, it's not a competition. No. Like, what yeah. The fuck? yeah, they're on the same side. And then are you, you really want to convince you could me? Do something really fun with characters who genuinely treated something like that as a competition, and you could do some really interesting character work like that. Yes, you could. But it's not these characters. These characters shouldn't be doing that. Well, it's part of the yeah. the, the films thing. Is like Scott needs to get back on track with saving people. And it's like, what the fuck? Why is he off track? What do you mean? If he's taking yeah. a second to reestablish his time with his daughter and to write a book about his experiences, that doesn't make him a bad person. Yeah, let him. No, yeah, it makes him a good person. Actually, we've got. Well, I mean, we, we've got nothing about kind of like what his daily life is like we just got like a day where he got a coffee and says hi to people and if so, people want to take pictures he does it and then he pays his daughter's bail and she fucks up with his technology think about this right so he the the the, the, the film is saying you know he's doing a bad because he's spending his time writing things rather than helping people um he it's possible writing to help people seven. well it's possible to do, it's possible to spend your time helping people in the real world but um, well, this I is my question. That the people who wrote this spend most of their time writing, like Scott. <laughs> <who never laughs> that. That's funny, dude. That's... What do you mean? They spend five minutes with these scripts. They don't oh, that's like... true, actually. But, um, this, this was the thing: is like, even if he is writing a book, he's got other time. It, it, you know, writing book and dealing with Cassie can't be the only two things he's doing in his life. And since he yeah. loves Hope, that is his his girlfriend slash wife. I don't know if they married at this point. Whatever. Um, yeah, we have no idea what the, his daily life's like. He's probably hanging out with her and probably helping her with all of the pin particle, like reforestation, environmentalism work. Right? Is he not saving uh, the world too? No, I mean, he I, says don't, I, no. I can't imagine that, that hope goes to him. 
It's like, hey, Ant-Man Persona, pretty popular. Can you like do some, I don't know, ad stuff with yeah, this? charity like, raising and stuff. Yeah, charity that's stuff. a great idea. And I don't think Scott would be like, fuck no, get the fuck out of here. I'm gonna uh, write, a, write book. a book, bitch. <laughs> bitch. Sorry, I'm busy with my book. Well, yeah. the thing is, they can't show that because they know that that would, well, I mean, you'd think that they would know that that would be a violation of, of Scott's character to actually show him being like, nah, I'm not going to help people. I'm busy writing my book. But yeah, they so they like that that's what he's been doing off screen. As yeah. if, because like, you know, if we don't see it, then you don't get that knee jerk reaction to it. Scott wouldn't do that, but he's still, he's still telling us the film is still telling us that that's what he's doing. Well, I think also, you're absolutely right. That's why that hope Sorry, they, go ahead. they like half commit. I think, I think you're right about like they go as far as to have people criticize him for that vague assessment, but they'll never show us, like you said, a scene where he like sees someone in pain or danger or something and just goes, Nah, I'm writing a book. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I think it's really lame that everything Hope is doing is just unambiguously good and is working. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it could be much more interesting if she's struggling to bring about change and do the things she wants of, to do. Yeah, because well, all of the stuff that. they're setting up in this opening would be way more interesting if they actually explored it in the fucking world rather it's than not, tiny it's place. It's not part of the film, though. It's not part of that film because they need to go to the quantum realm to do like crazy yep. shenanigans there. Then why do it? <laughs> I I I think I think that they think that they're doing establishing right, establishing material for their story. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I'd say it all pays off. Up. Um, having all this stuff about whether or not he stands up for the little guy, or or, or that he'll make a you'll, you'll take action when he could just avoid it, which doesn't you know like mm. right at the end, right? That that comes up. Kang is like, get out of my way, and then he's like, no, I can't do it. Or like, I think Kang literally says, look the other way. <laughs> Which is oh, really so crazy. look at that! That's some brilliant writing right there. Well, the, him the, him focusing on his relationship with his daughter is not looking the other way to the evil. But of he the didn't. He's just trying to be a good the, person. The nah, problem is, that he it's, it seems like he hasn't even done that, even though that would be like his main pro. Because one of the things that they're doing in the film is like, oh yeah, we've lost time. You and I, me, Kang, you, Ant Man. It's time that you can't recover. Like, wouldn't it be yeah, nice you're right. to recover that time? And it's like, but but yet that doesn't seem to inform how Scott has conducted himself in his regular day to day life before that point. That's yeah. true, he'd be yeah. spending as much time in the world as he could with Cassie, trying to you know catch up on all the time that they lost and trying to sort of guide her uh, to a good future. But it it just doesn't. It seems like he's Man, not to the point that he's that not could really, be really aware interesting. of what he's doing. Well, could be it really seems like that he could what... be kind of like suffocating her almost. Yeah, trying maybe. really hard. Something. Yeah, exactly. Something that would there. make more sense. And then he would be so focused on that to the exclusion of the things that are going on in the world that, like, he's not paying attention to people who need help. But, I but he doesn't like, even what? know what she's working on. No, he doesn't know anything about it. Somehow. I don't yeah. even know how that, she does that that's in kind of what I'm, That's the him. thing. I get the impression that somewhere when they were coming up with the ideas for what were going to happen to these characters in the story, that was the idea with Scott, and then they just didn't do anything with it. Or they think that they succeeded in doing it by having a couple of lines in the film. Like, because otherwise, I'm not sure what you would identify as, like, his uh, his through line in this movie. But, like, there's not enough material to support the interpretation that I think would have made a lot more sense, which is that he, you know, is kind of having an adverse reaction to the time that he's lost. Um, well, to, yeah. to a degree that's harming her and um, is harming the world in, in the sense of inaction. I think someone uh, might try and argue people. part of it is like him learning to to you know get stuck in, get involved just because a problem isn't happening to you doesn't mean it's not a problem, which That's, is like he's always been that way. It doesn't. Yeah, there's a I mean, it's, it's like what do you? He's saved the world several times, technically speaking. Like well, I don't know why we're treating it as though he's given up after Endgame. Yeah. Yeah. Also, but you also run into that Superman is an asshole if he's not saving everyone constantly. Problem. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's like, is... maybe Scott could take a bit of a break, you know, it's like, jeez. Well, no, his daughter is telling him how to be a superhero, which, uh, by the way, in, in the car drive, she's like, uh, stop telling me what to do, and he's like, I'm not telling you what to do, and then Hope is like, you are telling you what to do. And, and like, watching him, I'm just like, he's driving you away from jail. Yeah. <laughs> he got you out of jail. He could have said, father. you know what, no, you're gonna learn a lesson, and plus, I, like, you're, I'm an Avenger, and you're, this is gonna be in the news everywhere. And if she is 16, yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm still your fucking parent. Stop fucking around. <laughs> like, yeah. stop going to jail. Yeah, Hope kind of throws him under the bus there. It's yeah, like, she's oh, an asshole. Come on. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because that's already like 20% of his contribution to the movie. Yeah, that's she's true. Well, you're part of this film. <laughs> Felt like she was, uh, yeah. it probably was cut or just Ant -Man. never put in. 
Um, uh, yeah, and then he just gets, keeps getting worse. He's like, uh, I promised your mom that you'd only use this stuff when one of us was around. It's like, first of all, why is she using this stuff? Why does she all? have access to it? Mm. Period. Yes. And he this says, is insane technology. He brings up very good arguments. This happens a lot in the film where arguments are brought up and then they're not addressed. He says, what if you had lost it? What if the cops got it? And mm -hmm. it's like, first of all, that, that was a great argument for back in the other films. But then I was like, well, aren't, don't, it's official they now. Have it? Yeah, it's like functioning. If you have a whole company running with it in terms of reforestation and food banks in the equivalent of, I'm guessing you literally, I mean, they show it later, but you take like a normal piece of food and then you expand it. That's something they're doing. Like yep. this, you you can't do that for the public, like the public consumption, and on an official level without testing, without like government approval. Probably uh, there there is a government in this world, right? I think. <laughs> like, <laughs> One I think. assumes, yeah. <clears throat> so the idea that they're like, oh, we've got this experimental technology that's literally going to cure fucking hunger worldwide. It's like, wow, we might need to test that. What are the long term effects of eating like enlarged flump food? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it might not be that great. Who knows? Um, so the idea that like nobody has this technology still and they're protecting it is like, just don't even bother. What do you mean? Yeah, I don't you, believe you. You are not Ant Man One. You can't get away with this anymore. You've you've already uh, hope saved the world, and it's like okay, but by establishing that with all that tech, that means the whole world has growing and shrinking technology now. You know that, right? No, shut up. Which is the plot of the first film is preventing it from getting out of uh, Hank's hands, basically. But, oh, it's a different well. times. <laughs> yeah, and then she says, "What? I didn't lose the suit." And he's like, "You have a suit?" And uh, yes, all of us are like, "You have a suit." Y you have a suit. Why? Why? <laughs> why? Um. Yeah, and then uh, so like you got all that, and then she goes, "I know how to take care of myself." Gotten pretty used to it by now. Oh, well, then fuck and off, then. off. What really pissed me off is that he's like, oh, wow. And then she says, oh, I, I didn't mean it like that. And it's like, what did you mean it like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Like, God, pretty used to being on my own. It's like, you weren't on your own, though. You would have been taken care by somebody. You were fucking, what? She would have been like 12, 11 when the blip happened? But somebody would have uh, been looking after her. So, like, the idea that she's just been on her own, taking care of herself, ragtag, misfit in the world. I was like, shut up. In the Dog. wastelands of Earth. <sighs> also, it's not like he went to go get cigarettes and never came back. He know? literally got <laughs> fucking trapped in the quantum realm. Like, oh, well, yeah. close he went to, to it. He went to go get quantum realm juice and never came <laughs> back. <laughs> quantum realm juice. And it really juice, does feel juice. like she kind of holds him against it against him in the film, but it's never really properly addressed or explained. It's just sort of like, yeah, no. you kind of, you know, a lot of lost time, dad. It's like, another thing yeah. that would be interesting to explore, um, if she resented him for that, but like, it, it explored how that's not actually his fault, and like, I guess like, the problem is like not movie, necessarily it, reasonable, but you might feel them anyway. Yeah, the I movie does that, that a lot, where they just start something and then it's just forgotten. Well, so something I like, would say is that I think I think that you're right, Jay. That would be an interesting thing to explore. The problem is that in some sense it almost seems incompatible with her like reprimanding him for not saving the world enough, because yes. like the reason why he got separated from her was because he was doing like science that could potentially you know save the world in the future. Like you got to pick one, right? Is he mm -hmm. a jerk because he wasn't around, or is he a jerk for not helping enough? Like right yeah, now, you could, you you could have a um, you could have a conclusion to this where she's like, "I'm holding, I was holding you to an unreasonable standard. I'm sorry," and then him going, "Yeah, yeah but you know what? You've inspired me to try to do more anyway." It'd be yeah, really nice. that's, that's, yeah, that'd be, that'd normal, be nice. But yeah. instead, he's the only one who has to learn anything. You know, yes, she doesn't. Dude, I don't think anyone learns anything in this film, but no. he, he comes the closest to learning anything in this film, but most people yes. don't change. Nothing really happens. The movie thinks he learned something. The movie doesn't think she needs to learn anything, no. which is cringe. <clears throat> um, so we have like a little family food meet and dinner. Yeah. And they have like this tiny pizza and uh, he has a droplet of something onto it and it turns into a big pizza. Yeah. That, that alone is already enough for me to be like, hmm. And then Janet says, Marvel, your Nobel Prize no, is in the mail, and Hank says, I just saved eight bucks. It's like, and, yeah, and I was like, I, was, I don't believe you. I don't believe you that only cost eight bucks. Oh, so to develop the serum? It's yeah, not, it only cost <laughs> No, 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 like, when I heard him say, I just saved eight bucks, that's one of them, everything goes black and white, and the weird catastrophe is just on screen, and it's like, what, why? <laughs> like, yeah. extrapolate. He's, well, he's saving resources in the form of money by doing that. Eight bucks, to be clear. Like, did you... If have you solved world hunger? Have you actually? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. 
It's such a small... It's a joke. It's like, tee my small pizza's now a big pizza. <laughs> and it's like, bro. <laughs> there are starving people in Africa who could really use some pizzas right now, my dude. I think um, Pizza like, Hut made an enormous, like, five, five hundreds of foot pizza thing, and I was like, if you drop an expander on that, will it become like a planet pizza? <laughs> like, <laughs> pizza planet! Hey! Uh, <laughs> hey! It's just, I uh, like, they really have gone this far with the expanding and shrinking. It's like, do you know why they didn't before? Because... This is catastrophic for world building. It changes everything forever, just like everything else does. But like, you can't do this. You can't just go. Ah, oh, I can just make infinite food. Really, it's like just... another it's thing less. that's catastrophic for world building is apparently growing a pizza is more cost effective than buying a bigger pizza. Like that, that pin particle must just <laughs> yes. be fucking free. Yeah, that, 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 that's yeah, that's that's specifically what I'm so referring to. Before he'd said that, I was like, oh, this could be a fun little science thing, but it's insanely, you know. Uh, inefficient, but when he said I've saved eight oh, bucks, yeah. I was like, oh fuck. Oh, no. oh, well, but but Mola, have you considered that he was memeing? I guess we're gonna have to hope he was fucking memeing. <laughs> but yeah. then again, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that could be a funny joke if they're like exactly, yeah. Um, but like the, the, they'd have to, they'd the implication have to I got was the, joke. the implication I got is that's why he was doing it though. He's a frugal man. Yeah. Okay? Mm. Yeah, it should be that he does this as like a party trick. And then everyone's like, oh, wow, why don't you do this all the time? He's like, it cost me a few thousand dollars to do that just now. <laughs> so yeah. that it just rules out the thing of it like ever being used in any sort of real way. If the line was like, I just saved eight bucks with one $500 pin particle, it would be funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would yeah. be way better. Yeah. This $1,000 pin particle just saved me eight bucks. Yeah. That's a decent joke. Fucking hell. <laughs> but he says it self awarely so well, it's not it's like he's like, an idiot. It's kind of like a flex, isn't it? That, like, you're so smart and cool that you would, you know, he would waste a thousand dollars. But he wouldn't do well, it for I mean, his then family then who you already knows he could that, do that it. That it's an experiment and that it's getting cheaper and that maybe one day this will be an efficient use of the technology, but he knows no, they don't want to yep. deal with that. They don't want to deal with that. But, or, like, only but, the but toppings get really with it. big that's, or something. That's why it's a good change, because it's not dealing with it. It's like, we want to show you the cool visual, we want to have a fun joke, but we also don't want to destroy the world. So we'll throw in a mm -hmm. line to make sure about that. Do you think they even considered the whole world hunger angle? Do you think that no. was ever something? They thought about? But they nope. literally they have. They're talking about <laughs> solving hunger earlier for. Yeah, yeah, yeah but Mahler, these people are stupid. Though. That's really because <laughs> this this be is like, another yeah, reason why yeah, I don't think really he's lying or joking. Because when it says like they're doing reforestation, affordable housing, and food production, it's like food production. Food production uh -huh. means something very specific. It seems, doesn't it? <clears throat> Why Seems would like they talk about them doing food production if it wasn't anyway. if it wasn't related to the pin particle? I'm assuming they wouldn't mention it. It's like all the company is doing it. This is why we're kind of joking about it, but I assume this is how it works. They create giant trees, giant houses from small trees and small houses, and probably the same for food. I guess I don't know. Or is she just pumping pin like money into maybe. everything? Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe that would be That's so just... much better as an explanation. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. maybe they're using uh, the pin particles to make big money, and then they can <laughs> buy more things. Big money. <laughs> just... Look at this giant dollar. Ooh, that's at least. That's at least I'm, I'm, ironically, they might be able to do that with like gold. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It, everything is flumpy uh, in the world, but it's fine because that's the least <laughs> of our issues. Soon enough, someone in chat just wrote. Now that you pin particles on pin particles to make more. <laughs> <laughs> Big up in particles. Oh god, don't even. Like, I know it's a joke, but stop. Um, <laughs> don't, don't give them ideas. Uh, were you gonna say something, Fringy? You said now that... Hello? I guess not. I don't know which one Martin of the models is Fringy. <laughs> He's the blue one. Oh, right. Fringy's blue. <laughs> yeah, that's right, I'm, I'm the blue Modoc. Yeah, it sounded like you were gonna say something, but... If not, no problem. Oh, did it? I, I don't... I wasn't saying anything. We can interrupt you, you if you want. You definitely were. You yeah. forgot you. if you want. <laughs> okay, well, now. I've forgotten then. I don't, yeah, I didn't That fringy is lost to time. That's a rare fringy uh, right he now. He is lost to time. Every fringy is lost to time after every, you know, second or so, I guess. See, um, that one, he's gone. And now that one's gone. We get, on and so forth. Welcome back. I like that one. We get a line that is going to be wow. basically the foundation of uh, why this plot could even happen in the first place. Uh, she says, hey, no pizza in the quantum realm? And then Janet's like, no, no, nothing. And then she says, you know, you can talk wow. about it. And then she's uh, like, I spent 30 years down there. I just want to be a mom. 
Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> mm, okay. Which might be like, me. which be like, you know, okay. Like, well, if there was nothing there, then I guess, you know. Nothing to say, yeah. Bad, yeah. <laughs> nothing to talk about down there. Nothing all right. Yeah. Okay. No, that's cool. Man, I hope that's not going to bite her in the ass that, he, that she said that. See, and that's what makes the intro so interesting now, Jay, because we know that she met Kang down there. So there's something. That's, that's storytelling. That's, uh, that's what, they, what do they call it? Mystery. Uh, Mystery. Mystery. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, and then Hank is like, you make any friends in the slammer this time, honey? Like, oh, it's just a line like that. And, and then... She's like, oh, Grandpa, and then because he said this time, meaning she's been to jail multiple times, and, and obviously she got her suit from guy. Hank. And at this mm -hmm. point, I legit would have been proud of the film. It, this would never happen. But how cool would it be if uh, Scott was like, "You got her the suit," and he's like, "Yeah," and he's like, "And you've been giving her the the particles too." He's like, "Yeah," like been teaching her to fight. I'm guessing because that's like the whole package with Ant Man, and yeah. she's been to jail multiple times, and you haven't told multiple me times like. Hank, do you mind if we have uh, just have a little conversation quick in the other room? Yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he just fucking yells at him, or, or or does a very stern conversation about how like she's my daughter, not yours. Like, what the yeah. fuck is this? Oh, You're going be behind nice. my back. You're giving her like insane technology that could easily kill her. Which, by the way, I'm pretty sure that's why you gave me it in the fucking first movie was because you knew it could kill me and you didn't care too much about it if it went wrong in that way. He didn't, he didn't want hope to use it. Because yeah, this it's a whole that, uh, big payoff that he basically says, like, I don't want you doing it because I don't want to happen to you what happened to uh, Janet. And it's like, oh, but you will for Scott. And it's that, like, oh, well, he doesn't care as much um, about Scott. Wasn't that a problem shrinking into the quantum realm, which they now are able to uh, alleviate? There's no way the... Uh, no, not even I mean, necessarily. Like, because they could... The, the nature of getting someone back out of that is incredibly complex. And, like, it still fucks with you in some way. And there's no way that that's, like, a guarantee... But besides, that's that's like one of the many problems that. Uh, oh, it's just, yeah. Think about what happened to uh, Scott. He got trapped in the quantum realm for just a few hours, yeah. and think about all the things he lost. Imagine if through some like freak accident that happened to Cassie. Mm -hmm. It's just and, I, and the fact that you didn't feel compelled to tell Scott, like, yeah, I'm letting her dabble in very experimental and well. So I think it's. It's out of character for Hank. Uh, Hank, first of all, yeah. he would he knows what it's like to be a fucking dad. So he'd be like, oh, you want to do quantum shit? You want a suit? You want this? You want that? It's like, speak to your father. Yeah. It would be yeah. that simple. Yeah. That's the kind of person Hank is. But nope, he just does it all behind Scott's back. And Scott is such a spineless little shit. He's like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> Cool, cool beans. And it's just, it's so annoying because it's especially with Scott. He he cherishes her more than anything. The idea that he's like, yeah, go fuck around with the cops in an Ant-Man suit. That's great. End up just like your dad. The life that I fucking regret getting put in jail. Yeah. Like, it took me go, away go from nuts. you. But yeah, go ahead. Just do it, honey. Yeah. It's really it's annoying, a, uh, but it sets up the plot, so whatever. Happens. Well, that happened. <laughs> Whoa. The Mal. Yeah, all he has to say is, why didn't you tell me? And then she says, because you'd react like this. It's like, I'd react like this to you going to jail? <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, you know what? You predicted me on that one. You got me. So that annoying. Crap. I'm upset at this. Can you imagine? And then, like, Hank is like, I would have just broken her out of jail. <laughs> uh -huh. Because we know that's, a gr that's healthy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's just how that works. Um, yeah, and the, uh, the one thing that Scott says that actually does kind of work out in this scene is like, why is everyone so fine with this? Like, everyone just seems chill with the fact that she's regularly going to jail. It's like, oh yeah, that used to yeah. be like a bad thing in movies. Yeah, yeah. Stories especially if you're an Avenger, and this is going to be like front page news everywhere. Yep. The daughter of, uh, what's his name, Scott Lang, is in Going the, to jail all the time. Going to jail multiple Scott times. Scott Lang, failure and not as even, a father? <laughs> Not even for like like graffiti or anything like that. No, like uh, fucking around with the cops. Well, Fighting the movie cops. thinks the movie thinks it's no big deal at all because she's doing it all for a good cause. So who cares? Yeah, we get yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the cops are shit. Fuck them. Whatever. She's going to jail for the he's right the thing. Like, oh. Well, um, and he's funnily like, enough, his argument is fighter. he's like, uh, I get that you want to help people, but you're wasting your life. And I'm guessing he's referring to the fact that she'll spend lots of time in jail. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, in, in removing opportunities by doing that. It's like, oh, you're... I guess the thing is, is that it turns out that he was wrong because she was building, like, a, a the quantum, like, Hubble telescope. Which he didn't know anything about why. Exactly, he didn't know. Because yeah, she's able to do that secretly from him. Oh, 
I guess it's just well, one why of would she keep it a Cassie secret? Has be, Cassie has to be a genius. Like, she oh yeah, I guess we can. Yeah, we're, we're almost to that the being introduced. Yeah. There's just there's a bit more to the conversation that drives me nuts. We've kind of covered it, but just to get the actual quotes, it's um, you know, he says that about wasting a life, and then she says, "At least I'm trying to do something with mine," which is like, what? What? Man, that's like, oh, if this was the '60s, you'd get slapped so fucking hard. <laughs> if, he's You're hysterical. His re <laughs> denied. <laughs> sit down. Uh, denied. <laughs> you got a for rage. He says, uh, "I literally saved the world." And then you have Hank being like, "Did you? You never mentioned that before." Hey, this guy saved the world, which is like. Okay. So they just did the yeah. Joke that, they, did okay. in, um, they did the same joke in Age of Ultron. The, the, do you remember when Tony's like, "Anybody remember how like I, you know, flew through a wormhole, like saved Earth, and everybody's like, no, no, never mentioned it.'" They just did the same joke again. That's actually true. Yeah. Well, at least in yeah. that one, it's more of an awkward, like, "Yeah, true, you did do that, so we should probably be a little bit less of dicks to you." While in this mm -hmm. scene, it's "Shut the fuck up, Mister. I saved the world." Yeah. <laughs> it's like what? Jenna even says, what "Oh, have you should write me lately." <laughs> Jenna also says, oh, you should write a book about it. It's like, why would fuck Yeah, off? this is what I mean. I don't get it. Like, the one that really annoyed me was Hope pretty saying... pretty funny with Jenna. It's like, dude, they saved you from the quantum realm. Like, yeah, you better like... shut the fuck up. Especially after this movie, you would better shut up forever. Well, maybe it's... A... Yeah, definitely. But <laughs> maybe it is a competition as to which quote is the worst. Because Hope's, for me, was the one that pissed me off the most. And she says, how was that for you, Scott? Like, as if, like, as if what he did wasn't um, incredibly special. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. Like, if any I mean, one of you saved, if any one of you saved the world and just kept on bragging about it forever, I'd just let you have it. Yeah, like, <laughs> you get to have I'm that life one. because yeah. of you. Yeah. I'm, we're cool. You can brag about yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Just keep bringing it up forever. That's yeah. totally. You want fine. another you beer, by it. the way? You want something to drink? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I'm yeah. very grateful you exist. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, and uh, if you think about the context too, right? He's trying to say, "Don't throw your life away by being in prison." And then she says, yeah, well, at least I'm doing something with it. And he's like, I, this feels weird. I'm, I'm yeah. the guy who did the thing. The, 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 yeah, basically, he did the most important me. thing ever, <laughs> like, with his life. And then everyone says, like, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck Yeah, you shut the fuck It's like, oh, okay. And especially, it is especially awkward when, again, Scott went to prison, and he lost a lot of time with Cassie from that. And it was his big motivator to become a hero was to make sure that like he could actually make her proud. Yep. So if yeah. anybody is in any position to say, you need to be aware of this and like the consequences it can have, like he's really in a position to do that. Well, and so this but, is yeah, everybody's just gonna make fun of him. Uh, this is the quote that sort of brings it home about the whole book thing, right? Because he's like, yeah, you're all welcome for not being dust. And then she she's like, what do you do now? Sign books. Aren't you the guy who broke into Vistacorp? Aren't you the one that went to Germany to fight Captain America? No, that gets clarified, of course, fight with him. But um, the fact is that, mm -hmm. according to this character, then, all he's doing in his life is signing books. That's it. That's all he does all the time. Like, it's like, no, time that doesn't... Family or do anything else? It's just... It's just no way. That this? doesn't make any sense. Why would Scott Blank just it. be signing books? Is That's all he's doing? No, no. I don't. I mean, let's say he did. You know what? Sign Fine. your books. You saved the world a few times. <laughs> Sign Go your nuts. books for a few years. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, have a, have fun. There's Enjoy just, the success that you've especially earned. Especially because you know, if something would happen, and he's like, "Hey, Scott, there's like shit going down. Can you like help out?" He was like, uh, "Fuck yeah, I'm gonna help out." Well, he does. Yeah, he does actually mention that that as soon as he's called, he'll be there. Um, yeah. So it, it'll. It, I think it's all confused in terms of trying to be definitive on what they because they know it would be too out of character to make him an asshole like that doesn't care about people. That would be too insane. Yeah. But he's kind of there if his summary of his life is that he's signing books and that's it. And um, I don't mean to be... I don't mean that he can't do that and be a good person because you definitely can. It's that it's just not the guy from from the MCU. Um, that's not what he would be doing. Uh, he's he's big old Mister Must Save People man. A lot of them are. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Um, but the thing is, like that's that's quite big, right? You've got we got to deal with the fact that she's fucking around with Ant Man technology. She's ending up in jail a lot. All of them judge him for not doing enough, almost quote unquote, with helping people. And so he says, like, oh, yeah, well, you know, what are you what are you three up to? And they're like, uh, or, or he, he says, like, what are you doing? And then she says, we are, are, like, trying to save the world or do make a difference. And he's like, who's we? And it's like, all three of us are making ant science. And he's like, I don't believe you. And then they show him the thing. And that conversation we just had is all gone. Nobody, yeah. nobody has anything to say about any of those things anymore. They're going to jail, no, the, all the technology. Get, we gotta get on to the plot. The plot's happening now. 
It's like so many deep seated issues are there. Everyone's judging him for like his character. The technology is bleeding out into like children almost, and you've got her going to jail regularly. How is this not something that needs to be talked about? It's like, no, we got a cool thing to show you that lights up. We got plot yeah. happen. Yeah, it's time for plot. I hate that shit, and it happens in these movies all the time. And that's kind of this the sludge aspect. I think when you're watching these, you're like, oh. This shit yeah, again, like, and it's like this is a different writer, a different director, but it's the same fucking format every time. You just have that thing there, and you just want to grab it. It's like, explore it, please. And it's like, no, there's a funny joke. Also, look at this new tech. It's like, no. Also, there's a new realm. Stop. Just well, that's stay thing, here uh, for a bit and talk about it, please. Scene opens where Scott is looking at ants. They've made yeah. like an elevator. There's loads of little lights coming up, and he's like, whoa. You know, what are they building? Are you doing this? And he goes, actually, no. They build their own tech. Pretty smart ants. Okay. It's like, um, the breaks. That, that's, that's something we can introduce as a throwaway line and not address more. Before talking about what it means, can I just say, what a shit line of dialogue. <laughs> pretty smart ants. They build yes, their own tech. I agree. Pretty smart those are ants. Pretty, <laughs> those are pretty smart ants. Mm. We are in agreement. Yes. But yes, chat, you heard correctly. He has an ant farm, and they're building their own technology, including elevators. Yeah. Chat, you're not ready. It's, it's the kind of thing where you're just like, I'm sorry. Rewind. When did this <laughs> like, happen? It's rewind time. <laughs> yo, it's rewind time. <laughs> when did ants advance from whatever comes before the first age in civilization all the way to the information <laughs> era. How is this happening? Him, gave, him a little, gave him a little advice, like, here, here's a little fire, go nuts. And they were like, whoa! <laughs> oh, fire in them, that was what they needed to become a civilization. And you'd be like, you could ask all of the questions. Really this whole time, guys. You could ask every single question possible, and the answer will every time will be, pretty smart ants. Raise more ants. <laughs> yeah, those ants are they're pretty pretty quick. Pretty this is clever. what we would call Chekhov's ants, okay? Uh that's exactly what I called it as well. Yeah. <laughs> Chekhov's ants, okay? Keep them in mind. These ant fellows, they're gonna be really Damn. important in the remember, Just never set up you. pretty smart ants in the first act if you don't have them do something smart. <laughs> do something pretty smart. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It would be That's super just... weird if they just showed up at the end and saved the day. That would be really strange. If only Chekhov knew how many jokes he would have facilitated for me, like, <laughs> several hundred... Wait, several hundred? No, over a hundred years later. Right He's not that old. <laughs> <laughs> He's not as old as Freudian, okay? Hey, look, hey, look, all right? Look, leave me alone. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah I feel like we're past that, right? We all accept it. It's fine. That's a factoid. The ants, they're real smart, and sure, they're making their own fine. civilization. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. With complete, right, with, they probably have guns already. Why not? It'd be great. <laughs> they're already having war inside the little ant You think tank. they've invented the pin particle yet? <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Give them a oh, little God. bit of time, they'll get onto it eventually. They just... They're, they're very smart ants. Ants. Guys, if ants get this smart, we're, we're in some trouble, okay? <laughs> we're in trouble. We were already. You think they've made any cinematic universes? Oh god, no, <laughs> they're not that smart. No, they're not that stupid. Yeah, they're yeah, too smart to you'd go with MCU, it. <laughs> what, you've got like an Aunt Kevin Feige wearing a baseball cap? <laughs> So I mean, um, I think I said either to Rags or Fring about this movie, I was like, the one thing that I will give is it's got a writer with slightly more brain power than Michael Waldron in the instead Ooh, of leaving I Wow. Instead of Whoa. leaving holes on the ground to be holes forever, some of the there's some lines and that are like, you know, the right the kind of thing where the writer would suggest it in the boardroom, and then we're all like, <laughs> um, oh shit, you you actually want to put that in there? Okay, uh, that well uh -oh. that doesn't that doesn't solve the problem. That just makes it slightly better. And he'd be like, that's good enough. Now, there's a question that everyone should have, and that is, wait a minute, Cassie was never involved in in ant stuff. What what is going on? Why is why is she not only using all the ant technology and she's super familiar with it, but she's also apparently designing something incredible related to quantum stuff? When did this happen? She was just a normal girl doing normal things. She has nothing to do with ant stuff. So oh, that it was a secret even from us, even from the writers. It was a secret. That's how secretly <laughs> she did it. <laughs> well, secret. she she gives us a line. She says, "When you were all gone those five years, I read Grandpa's old journals and I got really into the quantum realm." Whoa, all right, we well, right. We did it, everyone. Pack it up. It's all done. right, move we, on we to the next scene. We got it. It's might be like she read. Well, how do you know all of this stuff? I someone, learned it. Someone just said, "Pretty smart girl." 
<laughs> <He's super laughs> <curly. Praise laughs> so in um in uh the last crusade indiana jones and the last crusade i can believe that really like archaeologists like indiana jones and elsa and people who are really really archaeologically minded could read um uh, the I journal the diary right and like figure out how to find the holy grail i don't think you could just hand that to any random person and then in a, and then they'd be like oh yeah i found the holy grail because i read the old uh yeah the grail diary from uh, yeah john connery we've already old, skipped yeah, a big problem it, hank was hyper protective of all of his information why could she just get his journals that's just how charismatic she was. She was able to convince him to just... Uh, oh, it's no, like... He's, he's, oh, no, Rag, he of... wasn't there. Well, that's where you're... Wrong. Wrong. Um, because <laughs> it's actually... You're wrong. It's just like the framing device for the Princess Bride. She was sick, and so Grandpa came in, and instead of reading her a storybook, he read her his journals on the Quantum Realm, no. and then she said, Oh, Grandpa, can you come back and read it again to me tomorrow? And he'll say... Uh, as you wish. And then he did that for five years <laughs> straight. <you> wish. <laughs> as you wish. This isn't going to be a kissing journal, is it? <laughs> no, no. Unless you're talking about particles kissing. <laughs> I... You have to imagine she's 11 years old. The blip happens. She's screaming along with all the other children and everyone, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then she's like, oh, no. One of the people who were blipped was my whole like family on Scott's side and all the people I've met through that. That sucks. I I'm going to go to their house, look around. 11 year old again, by the way be like oh look at this journal about quantum physics this is interesting i'm gonna get into this <laughs> it's like what inconceivable and it's like you shouldn't even have access to those but apparently for, that's that's how but they're also, explaining it in that five-year the gap she like, just got super familiar with all of it cool what what are, what do the notes look like do the notes build up a basic understanding of like physics and then build it up from there yeah so that you can begin to be, like like because if, if you handed like i did it's physics in high school bringing. if you handed me a bunch of notes from like a Nobel winning physicist on like quantum mechanics. What am I meant to do with that? Like, okay, it's got all the steps along the way. Yeah, the exactly. Beginning, it's like, got like basic mathematics, you know, addition, yeah, and, yeah, and He's subtraction. Like, you know, just in case somebody who isn't me reads this, just yeah. so that you have the building blocks of physics so that you can build up your knowledge from here, you know? Yeah, it's like it gets a into multiplication, it's like, like a okay, get more complex. Just you all of that. Yeah. Oh, then division. Okay, things are starting well, to get exactly. a little bit difficult, like but we you, got this. We got this division. Like you, All right. If you handed like a ten-year-old like a, a book for arithmetic, it's like well, uh, what? She was what, eleven. Like, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty pretty smart you. girl. <laughs> pretty smart girl. She's she is <laughs> the ants. The ants are behind it all. The ants did this. Pretty the ants are like, we need we need that eleven-year-old to get into the quantum realm, which is where we definitely want to <laughs> go. At, so sometimes they stole I, the journal. They sometimes I wonder in. about like why they even bother. If they're gonna have the right in that shit, why don't she just say like, you remember that that ray gun you made that could zap intelligence into people, Grandpa? And he's like, yeah. And it's like I found it and used it. It's like okay. Oh, and he'd be like, oh Jesus, well, I hope it wasn't well, anything bad. That, so something that I've I find uh, a bit frustrating about the way that like the Marvel Cinematic Universe looks now in terms of its characters is like. Can we just have some like normal people who are like pretty good at some things, <laughs> rather no. than people who are like absolutely brilliant and know yeah. everything? About they're good at pretty much everything, and also they're insane geniuses on what they need to be. Especially when the characters who were brought into the world not on the merit of their abilities, but on their connection to events in some other way. Like she's there because she's Scott's daughter. That doesn't like mean oh, she's really smart. You see it reflected in Scott, right? Scott is a regular guy, in a sense. He was really good at stealing stuff, and that's why he got uh, embroiled in the story. How many people are geniuses? Like, what percentage of the population are, like, above 140 IQ? 94%. Like, uh, well, let's see. Pretty smart I mean, species. obviously, I, all the, the six of us are, but... <laughs> pretty smart um, genuinely curious. Like, what pretty, is smart, the, pretty smart like, apes. <laughs> Oh my goodness! It explains everything. It expl I, I can't it? believe she just. Said, I just read his journals, and now I'm a fucking quantum, insanely it's worse than intelligent, that. genius quantum physicist. She has invented something unprecedented that when you yeah, understand she, it, it's like, how could you invent that? Well, what? So yeah, she, she creates something that Hank describes as essentially a subatomic Hubble telescope, and she built it on her own. And the like goal the of it is to map out the quantum, just just all of it, really. I was about to say quantum realm, but it's like, yeah, I need you to understand. She maps it, out, yeah. she's planning to map out all of it. The, I, how, so, out of curiosity, 
how many people worked on the Hubble telescope? Like it, over the course of uh, over the at least of five. Time? No, pretty small. Yeah, like, well, there was uh, Hubble below how, sixteen how much, years old. Well, well there was Money Hubble. Well, if Hubble had access to his grandfather's <laughs> journal, <laughs> then it's just to put things in perspective. Like the Hubble telescope examined a very, very small portion of the sky, relatively speaking. Like yeah. in terms of the amount of space <clears> that there is to look at, the Hubble telescope. Uh, like was basically used to to examine a very 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 small portion of like the sky, and how much? How many smart people had to work on that? How much money went into the Hubble like telescope as a project over the course of its lifetime? A billions. Well, at least that's and dealing with physics that we actually have familiarity with actually, too. Yeah, exactly. It's like Three billion dollars and one journal. I picture like uh, she zooms into like layer one of the quantum. It's just just goo and weird shit everywhere. It's like all kinds of colors, and she's just like, "All right, yeah, okay, this is progress. <laughs> I, I can, un I'm understanding this. Yeah, I can so map this." Someone in chat said that the Hubble te Space Telescope was 1.5 billion just to for the construction of the telescope and then the launch, not including all, all the research the, all and all the, the research planning and everything and, infrastructure. and all the time and, and money that would have been dedicated to actually gathering and interpreting the information that it gathered. Wow, that's almost that's more money than it costs to make rings of power. Whoa, <laughs> whoa! But well, that means it's way worse, right? Yeah, or way better. Or what's the rule? Hold on. Number of geniuses. <laughs> I I need to know. Like, you should have pretty smart people. So Forbes says that uh that um about one in every two hundred and fifty people have an IQ above one hundred and forty, which is generally where uh -huh. I think geniuses. It's... Yeah. Wow, the chances of all of us getting together on one podcast. That's, I don't, yeah, that's it's insane. Crazy. It's astronomical. How do we do it? <laughs> oh my goodness. I, it's just it's just everybody in the MCU. Like it's every every single person who ends up being like relevant when some of the reasons why they're relevant is through their connections to other people, just end up being like really, really intelligent and and are able to excel in a very specific field that will be relevant to like plot points in the film. You might call it convenient. Or a stretch or a hole, but you'd be wrong because she mentioned the journal. Yeah, it's it's all this was all set up in Ant Man One. Yes, where there was a grandpa who had a journal. Well, I think she mentions it. she can read or something, so that's kind of a setup. That's true. Oh, well, man, we I have wish to, I could read. We have to sort of make a little bit of a leap and accept that she can read. But once you do that, then it really all just falls into place. I think so, it's great. Yeah, um, uh, Janet is like, wait, why didn't you ask me about all this? And then she's like, I tried to, Mom, but you, you, you didn't want to talk about it. And I was like, wait, did you yeah, try to talk to ago? her about? Yeah, but that's that's not the same thing. If this would be the equivalent, like if if oh um, right, why didn't you tell me you were working on this project? If Rags yeah. were on yeah. some movie set with some kind of misfire with a gun, and uh, it was a really awkward oh, no. and horrible experience, and then I'm like. Hey, Rags, let's talk about it. And you're like, no, I'd rather not. And I'm like, let's talk about it. No, I'd rather not. And then I invent a gun in my garage made of several guns at once. It's incredibly dangerous, unruly. And and, and then I uh, one day I show him and he's like, why didn't you tell me about this? And I go, well, you just never wanted to talk about guns. It's like, <laughs> no, that's not the, no. Because when, when you're talking about exploring the quantum realm as a concept with technology, that's very different than tell us what happened to you in the quantum realm. Well, because remember, the, the, if goal, you're making an invention, yeah. the goal with the telescope is to apparently map out the entire quantum realm, which, by the way, good luck. How? Good I don't how? know. I don't know. Universe. Like, I don't know. It's what, like, what is it? It's like the universe the multiplied Times by, by like, trillions. Oh, that is low baller, I would say, by like, it's it's by a number that I don't even know that like a how many zeros would you add well, but doesn't it just keep going? I mean, you can keep that. shrinking and yeah, shrinking yeah. and shrinking. So really, keep shrinking and shrinking forever. But like how do they do they know this at the time? Don't you think it's just some that's what Hank, place? That's what Hank thought. Hank yeah. thought that it was like a. Uh, but I, I guess the thing is, is that I look all right. I don't I don't know quantum physics, all right. <laughs> but I have to imagine that if you tried to map out what like the 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 whole. Po the universe is on a quantum scale. I don't know, man. Seems like impossible to me, but yeah. hey, I could be totally wrong. Well, doesn't Michelle Pfeiffer say that there's nothing down there? Well, they, yeah. I she guess says they there's nothing, her. but that's to. That's because she's a liar. She, <laughs> she said there's nothing and would never <laughs> talk about it, liar, which is insanely <laughs> suspicious. That would yeah. be that's funny suspicious. if she was like, oh, sorry. See, I was trying to build a telescope to map it, but if there's nothing down there, I guess I'll work on something else.
<laughs> yeah, especially if you say there's nothing down there, you were there for 30 years, you survived, came back, and you won't ever talk about it. It sounds like there actually is stuff down there that you well, just don't want to talk about. Because I, you see, I'm, I might be young, but I know what lies are. So I'm going to keep building this thing. Well, I mean, a, a pretty valid question is you were there for 30 years. What did you eat and drink? Like, yeah. We like, saw it in the opening. She had some space micro, micro water. water. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> totally, the same totally, yeah, like imagine Hank being like, wait, there, there's like subatomic water? That's insane. You're telling me that there you are like... You might think there's life at that point, there wouldn't there you? Are, I, mm. Yeah, like... I, mm. Yeah. If you mm. were able to survive there for 30 years, then other things could survive there for 30 years. Potentially even longer. No, but there's nothing. So just there's the fact, nothing. Okay. Just the All fact right. that there are compounds that can actually form in a place that's smaller than quarks. Like, isn't that... It's not like, even that there's... That. It's the, her, like her saying that there's nothing and being awkward about it. It's like, okay, clearly there's trauma here, but like we need the information, yeah. love. So, yeah, think about everything that it could change in terms of our understanding of science, which is something that Hank like says. explicitly <laughs> says later <laughs> yeah. in the film. Yeah. Hey, but at least Wait. there's no some incredible, horrible monster down there they should be aware mm -hmm. of. So that's fine. That's I mean, it's a, bit, it's a bit weird. She, she, she's like traumatic about what. Hey, at least that didn't happen, right? But yeah, I have a question. Go so ahead. she's she was down. So I haven't seen the other movies. Was she down there for thirty years of yes. Earth time? Uh, yes. So time doesn't move any different. Well, she's old. She's older. Yeah, so it, she, I, I'd have to say she's aged exactly the amount she was gone from Earth time. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, so it doesn't move any differently down there. Except when, except when, except when it does. <laughs> except what it does is the answer to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, gotcha. So. Yeah, uh, he explains like it's a thing that's going to be scanning all of the quantum realm, and she's sort of chill. She's like, "Hmm, don't think you should be doing that." When you know for a fact that she should already be panicking with the information yeah. she has. Yeah, she told exactly. them there's nothing down there, and they're mapping it out, so they're about to find out there's well more than nothing. So she should already be but, like, blah, 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 turn it off." Blah, blah, blah. Well, no, it's my secret. Part is that. Um... <laughs> Oh, and also, this is a, a line worth noting. Cassie says, like, if I had built something like this or when you were gone, I could have found you. It's like, well, but I mean, d so wait, d did you get into the quantum stuff because you thought that you could, you, you thought that Scott was dead. Like, you thought he got dusted. The, the you, only you way to make sense of it is that they are fucking with our perception of time right now in terms of they're hoping, they, I think they want us to kind of be like, oh, she got into it because that's how he disappeared. It's like, well, she didn't know that. She didn't know that because, as well, and, and just like in terms of, because remember when he went to the memorial, they had his name on there as like yeah. one of the people who got dusted. Yeah. So I think it was safe to assume that, like, she thought that he got dusted. Which means. So, did she just get into quantum stuff just because she Just for no to? reason at all. And then, this is what I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of slimy writing. I don't like it at all. Like, it's cheating. She's saying like. If we had this when you were gone, I could have found you. And it's just like, oh, that's why she built it. That's cool. And it's like, but she only knew to do that she, yeah. for what months, if that. That's how smart exactly. she is. Pretty smart kid. It's insane. Really. And mm -hmm. it's the only way that they could justify it. It's like, because it, it, think for a second that if she didn't have that reasoning, why did she build this? <laughs> just just for school well, I, I guess that's just because she was interested do. in you it. You know what? Maybe. Because I fucking can, Dad. <laughs> Like well, I think I yeah. think the best based argument you would make is, well, I mean, her dad was involved in quantum stuff, so maybe she wanted to carry on, you know, that, even though Scott wasn't really a scientist. Yeah, Scott he, wasn't like, involved in it really at all. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, like, I guess, I, I just think that that's not as good when it comes to the opportunities you have as a writer. No. But the problem was, you can't change the history, right? Like, what happened happened. Why? <laughs> why? Why, why can't you change <laughs> why can't the history? Why can't I just fuck with all that's of it? That's that's a good point. Just do it, pussy. <laughs> they need more balls. True. It's legitimately true. <sighs> In any case, they're like, so how does it work? And she's like, it sends a signal down, collects data, sends a signal back up. And then Michelle Pfeiffer's like, sends a signal? Oh my <laughs> god. And she, uh, she, she nukes it. If you've seen the trailer, you've seen that part. And it's like, what? what's the matter, Janet? And she's like, it's time I told you a secret. <laughs> oh my secret. goodness! I've got Before a secret. She can. Before she could tell them the secret, and um, oh no, <laughs> this crazy stuff happened with the machine. It's just it's well before. It's just crazy because we haven't gotten to any of the insane, 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 insane stuff. No, we're not and already, yet. it's like really annoying me that it's like none of this makes sense. You guys, you managed to keep it a secret from Scott that you were building this thing for no reason at all. And you managed to keep it a secret from Janet because what? You only ever asked her vague questions like, hey, you know about quantum stuff? She's like, no, 
And they're like, oh, okay. Imagine if you started with, hey, we're working on scanning the quantum realm. We were going to ask you for some favors. Like, if, if that was the question, none of this would have happened. Yeah. None of this film would have happened, exactly. Absolutely nuts. So annoying, but whatever. And yeah, of course, the big one we'll get more context on as we go. Janet. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um, so they get... The thing opens and it sucks them all into the quantum realm. Should we save it for later to talk about the mechanics of that? For the mechanics, uh, yeah, the probably. Once probably we find out who it did it, even though you don't get any additional information, you literally just we could talk about it now. Uh, okay. Now. So something that's worth. So they get shrunk down and sucked into the quantum realm. Uh, but the big thrust of the film is that Kang doesn't have any means of basically growing to get out of it. So you have the means to shrink them down, but you don't have the means to uh, to grow yourselves up. Yeah. And how did you acquire the means to like grow them up? How did you do that? Well, it's with what? You don't have pin particles. We do discover that it's Modok is behind this, and I think that the film wants us to think like, yeah, he's familiar That's with enough. growing and shrinking stuff, isn't he? But I mean, if he's familiar with growing and shrinking stuff, then what's the problem? Yeah, why can't you like, grow? Why, you why like, can't you why? grow? <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> I, um, think about I think that. there's some pills you can take for that. That's true. Oh. It's actually, it, it's really not a big deal. It happens yeah. a lot. One in three men older. deal yeah. with that. It's like going bald. It's like, it's fine. You Nothing know? to it be just, ashamed of. That's fine. Yeah. One in three men are trapped <laughs> yeah. in the quantum realm? Damn. That's true. That's why, um, <laughs> One three yeah, men that's why they get <laughs> crazy. <laughs> they get trapped in the quantum realm. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's just, the, the total information is Modok hired by Kang to get Pym Particles. He's going to get Pym Particles by shrinking down the Ant family and dragging them into the Quantum Realm at random. He does not know where they'll end up. That, that, uh, uh, there's so many parts to that that are like, how did you do any of that? And uh, all we get yeah. is he could detect the signal. Yeah, but which then he apparently like, is scanning um, for at all times. I guess so, yeah. And, and also, I guess it's a good thing that they sent a signal. Good thing it was them instead of anybody else. Imagine yeah. if it was some random scientist at, like, Harvard <laughs> or something doing some crazy quantum stuff and he gets sucked down. Well, and then, and then the that, that same guy fucking lands and then some weird alien eats him and that's it. You know, like... And then that's yeah. the end of him. Yeah. Um, for how, reference. How, how many scientists have unwittingly been sucked into the quantum realm and eaten by <laughs> That we never know about, yeah. Um, somewhere in some dark basement in the world, there's... A all these, all of these machines that had actually been invented yeah. years before, and they just got sucked in, and now they have to live in the quantum realm. They can never come back. They could if only they had really grandfather's journal story. That could yeah, be funny. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would the idea oh, that like the protagonist movie. group is the they're like the thirty thousandth person to do it. <laughs> they're just the ones where it worked out for them. Yeah. So anyway, anyway, so we needed a new background. New Modoc. <laughs> the, the rare Welcome Modoc. to dailymodoc.com. <laughs> <laughs> He's cringing. Look at him. He's oh, cringing. Man. This is a this is a deep fried. Oh, Modoc. I'm cringing. <laughs> oh, here I go. I'm cringing. <laughs> <laughs> so let's compliment the movie. Here I go. Uh, yes, this is worth complimenting. As, as the portal thing opens and they're all getting sucked in, uh, Janet is the first to lose her grip and fall in, and they clearly show Hank spots that and drops himself to go after her. And mm -hmm. then Hope looks at Scott and then looks down at them and suits up and goes after them. And it's like, yeah, good. <sighs> good job, <laughs> Thane. Right they did it. Just a little bit. Job. Just a little bit of character, but it's nice. Not all, yeah, not they only did you do something that in. wasn't total shit, it was actually a character-related thing that you did nicely. So that was really simple. Weird. It was really, really simple as well. It's just, yeah, I want to go like save that person. It's like they stopped and asked themselves, so what were these characters doing in this situation? And then after yeah. everyone else reels from the shock of that question being asked, <laughs> they do, like, actually think about it. <laughs> a character do? What? Can, can context? What, uh, what? What are characters? When are they going to make guess, a joke? Yeah. Is is Iron Man going to show up? <laughs> it's like, no, stop. I'll give him a few movies. He'll be here. Be great. Mm, yeah. Um, Played by Tom Cruise. <laughs> nice. It's Cassie, the multiverse. Cassie falls in and Scott goes after her as well. Woohoo, we did yeah. it. We're all in the quantum realm but, now. But now we've already got a problem that's about to arise in, in this sequence. 
Well, um, it's probably worth mentioning, right? Every time we see anybody traveling through that sort of environment, they all, they're they always suited up. Yeah, but I guess in this case, it's all chill, even though you're, like, shrinking without a suit on, you, you're fine, you're cool. Yeah, you see, good, they are right? all much shrinking like, without suits on. Much like Pandora, the world seems to have become a lot less dangerous than last time we yeah. saw it. That's oh, so much more approachable and except hope. easy to put character there. Something it's, that, uh... Oh, go for it, Metal. Oh, uh, so, because... Uh, uh, not to mention that because the movie actually tricked me. I didn't even make that connection that they were shrinking. I did, didn't even cross my mind. That's right. They so have to be a... shrinking because they're going to the quantum realm. Yep. Yeah, of course they are. It makes, I don't know why. I just didn't make well, that connection. It's because just... it's because the film doesn't really treat the quantum realm in a lot of ways as just a place that is where everybody is, but smaller. It almost treats it like it's in a separate dimension. It's an alien planet. It's an alien planet. Yeah. 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 It's, it's an basically alien an alien planet. planet. Yes. Um, but uh, so, oh, by the way, the ants, the super duper smart ants, got sucked in. Yeah, oh. uh, but they're not going to show yes. up where everybody very else is. Important. They're they're going somewhere. It's it's very exactly. It's super duper important. But they're going somewhere else. Um, we'll see to, them later. To, they're busy checkoving. Um, yeah. <laughs> which and, is and, weird but, uh, that they would. I don't even know why you would say that they'd meet because even if they were like a millimeter off being exactly, sucked in that portal, exactly. they would be thousands yeah. and thousands of miles away from everybody yeah. else. Maybe they wear so, rags. Like, good, good thing that the quantum realm is like the size of the state of Illinois. Like, <laughs> I thought it was New York. Than that. No, he it said was it was like New York. New York. I think oh, I figured true. I'm just gonna I'm gonna mix it up every now I mean, and then. State with comparable, oh, and yeah, comparable size states. I, I guess. think you're an inconsistently written character. That's what I think. Whoa! Hey. Wow! But he's geez. consistently inconsistent. Having them, you uh, would true. be. We, we we've covered the whole like no suits, so they should just be dead thing. But also like the whole traveling down this amazing pool, all these colors and crazy things happening, and they're yeah. going like, yeah. like, yeah. like, yeah. like yeah. shrinking every oh. time. When the, like it's so funny. We're talking about how they've done away with so much context of how that's supposed to work, but then you think about the end of the film. They just walk through a little portal. They walk through yeah. the portal. <laughs> so good, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, by the way, they're just free falling into the quantum verse. Uh, yeah. yeah. Very fast. Yep. Uh, and the yeah, only one who fun. really can break the fall uh, properly without any shenanigans is Wasp. Well, and she wings. grabs them really? both. So. Yeah. Cause, cause what happens is Ant, Ant, he suits up and he catches Cassie and then like I think he grows big basically and like yeah. lands yeah. and it's like oh but you might still be like in serious trouble dude like you oh you what, what what is the nature of the distance that you fall in relative to how big you are yeah <laughs> like yeah. are you not goo but also Cassie has a suit why didn't she put it <laughs> That's on just a fringy and then quote. are you not <laughs> goo. Are you not yeah. well, you, you, but, but again, the, the, the thing that uh, Cassie has a suit. We find out that she has a suit. Why yeah. didn't she put that on and try to save Good herself? Good question. Well, and why doesn't Hank and uh, Janet have suits? Janet have a suit. They are they are yeah, like the, in this, mean, they're what, little what, like they're little like hockey pucks now that you can just put on your chest. Points exactly. If you can just put it in a little hockey puck, then why don't they all have one? And, and then of course the, the age on and Janet are very well versed in in the suits. Like they both were the original Ant Man and Wasp. Yeah, and uh, the, the age long question of um, excuse me, like why doesn't Ant Man have wings? Why doesn't everybody? Why doesn't he have wings? Because yeah. remember the biggest. Because this film discards a lot of like what Ant Man had before. Remember how like in Ant Man they actually did a lot in terms of playing with size. And like the things that Scott could do because he could shrink down and and um and grow back to normal size, and then later on like growing really big, and and more importantly leveraging ants to help him do things. Right. He's separated from Hell, his ants. Civil in War this alone. Film. There, there is. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, he's constantly going big and small and big and small. But like so, here, he's got no ants. He's he's so like what what is he? Because the ants were how he could fly. Remember, he had Antony, and then he had a bunch of other ants. Man. But without them, he's, he is yeah, man. like he is—he is, he is not Ant Man. He is. I'm just only Man Man, regular man. I remember when fucking Don Cheadle calls him regular size man? I thought that was yeah, funny. Yeah, I do remember that. Um, someone just reminded me in chat as well. Yeah, uh, Hank does have a suit in the previous movie. He the... wears one, but obviously that was plot relevant, so no, never mind. Well, not anymore. I look, here, Mahler. You see, here's the thing: the person who mentioned that is the only person on the planet who remembers. <laughs> Remember the, the point we is just them. that not only have they actually okay. they should have suits, but they actually did have a character with that suit at that point. It's just like, why doesn't everyone have them? They're fucking nanotech, hockey puck, amazing. Yeah. Not only are they good for like the whole shrinking, uh, growing thing, but they're incredible for armor. The amount they can block oh, yeah, for no reason at all. Yeah. 
Um, like meant, intense it's, laser it's weaponry only... that's decades ahead of our technology can be blocked by these suits. Yeah. And at the same time, he doesn't put any of his la of their lasers on his Ant Man suit. He just doesn't do yeah, any upgrades blasters, on them. Because that's right, because Hope has not just the wings, she has blasters. Her suit is so much better. I have it on good authority that Hope is the thing with wings. Hey. That is a that is a poetry callback. Hope's suit is way better. That's, that's alright. <laughs> it really is. Speed. Yes, Hope's suit is way better, yeah. It's like a poem. <laughs> or something. Uh, pretty smart girl. I, anyway, Janet gets... <laughs> You know, they're all sucked in, and they get split up. Uh, you got two groups. It's it's good old Scott and uh, his daughter and, and little Hope with little Janet and little Hank hanking their way through through the little haunting Hope. Little Hank. Oh, little Ew, Hope no, is so no, bad. Hope. That's right, it's uh, that game, right? Ew. I mean, uh -huh. I guess it's t theoretically a game, yeah. And, um, fire. It's like there you go. We got you. We've gotten into the movie now. That's this is the the fun part where we get to go to the quantum verse for an adventure. Is everyone excited? And how long did yeah, it take? I am to very excited. Realm? About 15 minutes. I think that's what I guessed before I watched the movie that it would be like 10, 15 minutes before that happened. You can tell they don't want to waste time being in the normal world, the stinky Ugh, normal no, world. Gross. Yeah. Why not would just you do rather... something, Why not just do something experimental? Why not just like start with them there and then explain how they got there through dialogue or something? Not even like expository dialogue, just make it so that the audience can infer how they got there. That could be fun. That would be slightly unconventional though, Jay. And that's take work. Well, it's crazy to think that after seeing a movie like this, that there is nothing unconventional about it. As yeah, crazy we, as it seems uh, to be, yeah. it's yeah. actually the, the most numbers. generic Marvel film, I think. Like, it's one of them, yeah, because like you could, I could picture them being Ooh, like, "What do you mean it? we took risks? Mm. Look at Modok," and you'd be like, "Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> what the fuck There's was a that?" Broccoli <laughs> man. Yeah, making making a character a joke is such a subversive <laughs> risk in an MCU film. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, um, as they travel through the quantum realm, something that I did kind of like was like. Wow, are we in a place where there's like zany, wacky aliens and stuff? Like, you never get to see this much in like Marvel. Everybody's a human, but then it's like, ah, oh, not all the important people are humans, even still in the human. Realm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, 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 for some and, reason, and, like even ones who aren't like who are supposedly from there, they just look human. For yeah, why? So like, even and that would be, I guess, a smaller example. For as much as you have like zany, wacky aliens and these crazy backdrops and stuff like that, and this apparently crazy civilization. Fundamentally, the script is, like, it's so, like, common, I guess you could describe in terms of, like, what its objectives are. All of the set dressing is all that you could look at to try and say that this film is unique. Because, fundamentally, it's a very generic and safe, like, film. Yeah. In terms of what it's trying to be. Yeah, I thought basically everything in the quantum realm was horribly unimaginative overall it has like the it's veneer of alienness everything. yeah exactly it's just everything exactly. there's nothing unifying about any of it it's just well, no, everything that's been the, thrown the, in the, the the rings around uh kang's like um thing that kind of look like shang chi's like rings see, oh that's, i didn't see that that's, movie. that's that's oh that's right Thank god <laughs> that's right that was the one i was asking you questions about <laughs> yeah well, it's, I think that's all yeah. that you get by way of like, ah, see, we're building something up. What? Because one thing kind of looks like another thing. Is that what <laughs> plotting yeah. looks like in, in Marvel at this point? You know the whole, like, Hope puts his suit on before she goes in? Why mm. the hell didn't they make Scott do that? I don't know, uh, he goes confused. Because I think they wanted him flying around super disoriented in the, the quantum realm for a little bit. But he's he's uh, he's not stupid, though. No, he's not. So, but they wanted him floating around oh. in the quantum realm. Yeah, he takes Sorry, a while to actually. He's like, "Oh wait, I have this disc in my pocket. I should probably use it." And plus, the film the film has a, a cap on how much you can have Ant Man fully suited up. Um, it has a it has a big old cap on that. Maybe I was just thinking, by the way, all hope know. all hope does in this movie is save people's lives. I think. That's pretty, yeah, in terms of anything right, advancing yeah. her character. And She's it's like, you'd be, you'd be like, what's the criticism? And it's like, no, I mean, it's just weird. That's all she does. She doesn't say much of anything. She doesn't do much of anything. She just she's saves a, lives. Even though character. she has she's second, kind of there. Yeah. she's a title character and Evangeline Lilly has second billing, but she's probably the fourth or fifth most important character in the film. I think she's I mean, less I important than Modoc. I say, yeah, I think she's less important than Modoc and Kang might, as well. She might, because if you were to actually, it'd probably be Ant Man, then Kang, then probably Cassie or Janet would be like between yeah. those two. And then those uh, two And again. then you'd probably have Modoc. 
and Hank might be more important than than Hope was as I think well. He is. Mm -hmm. Because oh, because of all the ants, yeah. <laughs> so she's what the seventh most of all of the characters who she's get the billing in this film. The only person who's less important than her is Bill Murray, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> oh that's something we'll get to soon as well. Jesus, uh, that's right. Because if the ooze guy wasn't in the movie, then geez, what a fucking mess we'd have. <laughs> oh, we haven't gone to the ooze guy yet. Yeah, right? not yet. Uh, so. Um, yeah, and that's the other thing, by the way, they, uh, we find out later, Janet's suit has been fucking updated to nanotech in the past, so it's like, so why doesn't she just yeah. fucking have it? Why doesn't she have her suit? She had mm, it when she, we met her in fucking Ant-Man of the Wasp, the was police power. confiscated it from her. Imagine if, imagine if she was so paranoid that she could potentially get sucked back down there again, that she always has it with her. To the point that it might even surprise Hank. It's like, wait, what are you? What are you so afraid of? You know, that could be an opportunity. Yeah, to yeah. Oh, well. well, and that's the thing. Yeah. It, it's funny if they were all about to get sucked into the quantum realm, and then you have Hank like shout at everybody, like, "Get your fucking suits on!" Like, because we're about to yeah. die, all of us. It like, almost, we're... it almost seems like a missed opportunity for the big climactic final, well, potentially final Ant Man movie. To have all of the ant people, you know? Yeah. To have Hank and Janet being, and you, can, you know... You can have Michael Wasp Douglas because... doing all kinds of crazy shit because the whole suit's on. So you don't need him doing it. It almost else. seems like it yeah. would be worth... Because, as I understand it, Janet uh, is very important in, like, Marvel comics. Like, Janet is super-duper important, more so than she is in... And so is, and so is Hank as well, because Hank created Ultron. He was one of the founding Avengers. I think Janet was one of the founding Avengers as well. It almost seems like it would be an opportunity to kind of, like, you know almost pay tribute to, like, how important those characters are in the comics, but I guess they just didn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Someone said one of them doesn't get their glove on in time, and now they have a giant hand. <laughs> 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 it's a Simpsons joke, isn't it? <laughs> People like imagine the whole film, it's just Hank walking around with a giant hand. <laughs> Which is interesting. Dragging along. Talking about the payoff of having the ad sort of family, it's like, why was there a payoff of the classic Ant-Man and the new Ant-Man both, like, punching someone Maybe both not. huge yeah, so exactly. cool. exactly. Dude, imagine if he had his suit and it looked like the classic Ant-Man yeah. suit, like the original one with the antennas on top, and then you have, like, mm -hmm. Janna as well. Just seems like a good opportunity to just be like, look at the ant people working together, all five of them. Oh, well. Yeah, oh, well, I know. It seems kind of lame <sighs> to not have, like, Michelle Pfeiffer kind of, well, I guess she gets a little bit of an action scene. Yeah, uh, well, anyway, we have a really awesome joke. Um... They're walking through the quantum verse, good old uh, Ant Man and, and his daughter, and he's like, It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're okay. We're okay. It's gonna be okay. And then she says, You're saying okay too much. And he goes, Okay, all right, okay. Well it's cause we're we're okay. I feel like Paul Rudd is working really hard to inject his natural charisma into uh, <laughs> into this charisma. I swear to God, script. The it's the the dot dot line face I think the whole audience had with that one. It's like Right. Yeah. Well, like yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I'm, it seems it sounds like we all had a similar experience of very few laughs because one of the ones that got laughs was that uh, Spider-Man one, and there's one more that's coming up soon that was the other one that got like a real laugh, and and that's it, more or less. Sometimes you wonder, like, was that? Oh shit, that was a joke. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And it's like Jeff, you wrote Vat of Acid, which is what really happened? funny. <laughs> Why'd you do this to us? Dan Harmon wasn't here. Then you got. I, I mean, it's getting harder. It like because it's the same with Jessica Gow. She wrote. People shit on Pickle Rick, but Pickle Rick is a good episode. It is. And she yeah. wrote. Did she wrote Pickle Rick. Shickle I thought Rick. I said Pickle Rick. I'm back. I swear, you could have, but I swear you said Shickle Rick. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the meme where he turns him over as a pickle and he says, "I turn myself into a domestic abuser." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's not so it's inappropriate. Funny. Anyway, there's another a woman got joke. punched for that joke. So yeah. you better laugh. That's, that's what we call <laughs> edgy humor, and Rick and Morty will probably not have much of it anymore. Well, yeah. actually, it won't. People are saying like it's going to lose its heart and soul, and it's like hasn't Royland not even been. But as it sounds like, he hasn't been involved for years. It yeah. sounds like Dan Harmon was really the creative voice behind that show, and that's also putting to you know like. I mean, to some extent, right, the contributions of those writers, some of whom have gone on to write shit, like, surely they brought something, you know, to those projects. Plus all the animators and artists and everything. It's like, it's a big production. We shall see. 
Uh, well, I mean, I don't care anymore. So I, I'm not interested in that show. Then you got the joke of, uh, it's like we're camping. We love camping. Because we've never been camping. We've always talked about it. Talked about it. That That's okay. another one of those good old Marvel jokes, isn't it? Just yeah. kind of like, okay. It's like shitty. Present it way better. Like, they could just be like, hey, camping. Like, we always talked about, you know? That could be better dialogue. Um, we're finally camping. We're finally doing the thing that we talked about doing. Well, they set it up earlier with, like, a reference yeah. to it or something? Maybe, yeah. Um, um, it really if felt like never, uh, we're walking across never... this thing. We've got to tell a joke, maybe two. Yeah. yeah. If they've never way been better than camping my character before, stuff. I don't believe he would say we love camping. You know, it just yeah. doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Also, that well, his it life doesn't make sense. He'd say that. Yeah, he oh, said God. that. Remember, world at the beginning sense. and the end, he says the world doesn't make sense. So you're right. Oh, ba, 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 ba. Got so me then there. a giant sun jellyfish attacks Ant Man. Yeah. Just. <laughs> yeah. And this is the kind of shit that where I'm getting just at, happened. like. Yeah. Modok is like, I'm a drag you all here to get what I want. And it's like, hopefully you won't get killed by the many, 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 many hazards in the form of the environment yeah. and the, the creatures and the, the world. You know what I mean? Like it Yeah. He nearly just gets fucking outed by by a jellyfish thing. And it's just like I don't know why he didn't die. To be honest with you. I don't know why his suit is able to defend itself against that thing. It looked like it was actually really hot and fiery. Oh well. But he's just kinda Gets grabbed and then just yeah. yeet and it's gone. I yeah. wouldn't want to get touched by it. And then it gets eaten by like a giant manta ray and it starts coming for them and they're like, "Oh god, run, 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 run!" And she's still this whole time doesn't turn her suit on. Why? Yeah, mm. I don't, I don't know. When Ant Man goes huge to defend it, it wasn't, it wasn't in Grandpa's journal. You, you uh, could, oh, yeah. you could, you consider it a life threatening situation, and she, in a life threatening situation later, goes huge. Like, why isn't she doing that now? Why isn't she doing uh, we're, it? We're saving that for later. Saving it. Okay. Good. Well, the giant uh, the creature nearly kills them, but then it gets lasered and blown up by quantum people. So the head, head man, the guy. It's kind of lucky they're yeah. there, I guess. Because you think this place is pretty big? No, it's that's not very big. It's even bigger than... It's, it's basically like space on steroids. <laughs> Almost yeah. like you get that idea. I just you, when she says like, "Oh my God, there are quantum people," I just like sigh and I'm like, "What does that of mean?" Of course there are. What does that mean? Need for there to be people in the quantum realm. And why are they all the different? Basically, no, the basically yeah, nothing about it is really all that different from the regular Earth people, and space yeah. normal. Well, yeah, realm. because. They're all humanoid, more or less. There's more gravity works right the there. same, yeah. oxygen works, works the same. Oh, they are yeah, proud of exactly. I like the goo ones that they like made an effort to actually make them look like things that are small, and then just some of them are human, though. It's like... Yeah, yeah it's so just it's everything was like thrown in. People. Well, it's yeah, just, they kind of, know, they were man, vaguely like, like cell-like, or they look like, like, um... Like little, little be like viruses yeah. and bacteria mm -hmm. and parameciums. It's just really lame. I I don't know. It is a pet peeve of mine in like science fiction stories. It's like I like aliens and I like to see aliens be like major characters in the story. It's one of the fun things about Mass Effect is that you have like a team of aliens who are part of your squad. And who, when playing Mass Effect, is like, yeah, man, like Garrus is, pr you know, Garrus is all right, but what was it, Caden? Like, oh yeah, he's the he's the real Caden the Linko, yeah, or Ashley. Like, nobody, no. no Don't you remember likes Jacob? Aliens. Yeah, exactly. It's like everybody the, likes Tali The black guy whose father would rather stay stranded on a planet than go to his son? Don't, don't you remember? The broad point is that <laughs> one of the things that was cool about Mass Effect was that the aliens were, like, prominent characters who were important. And that the alien civilizations had their own stories going on that had nothing to do with humans. Like that, humans in in that world are important, but they're not like the center of everything that everything yes. revolves around. God forbid, other things happen that don't have to do with humanity. It's everybody likes Chewbacca, and it's like, yeah, he's like an alien who's hanging out, going on adventures with, with everybody. It's like I just like having some fucking aliens just be like major characters in a story. We had broccoli but head, in, like 
Yeah, but he's just yeah. there. They did for two seconds, like, yeah. Of, of all of the quantum no, people no, that they also, need, all like of the important ones are people. Because you got hope. Bill Murray, you got the lady, and then you got the mind reading guy. But like the all of the other crazy aliens are just there for little throwaway jokes. They don't get to be important. You don't get to have an alien be like an important character. It's lame. No. True. So lame. Yeah, I really um yeah, I definitely enjoy that. Certainly in oh, sorry, uh door, carry on. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it, it is one of those like, do I even bother trying to figure this out? Hank even says like, oh my god, this changes everything we know about like life and evolution. <laughs> it's like, yes, it does, Hank. It does, but who cares, and, right? And what will it but then, in but the then again, when you get back, but then again, does it? If it's its own secret realm or whatever the fuck it's supposed to be, does it even I mean, change it anything? To, right? It has to. Yeah, totally. we have we have rules and understandings about like how all the systems we currently use well, biologically came to be. How the fuck are they down here? Oh, okay. Yeah. And imagine thinking about that, because there's got to be quantum realms in, in each people. Imagine that it's like, oh, I've got like a whole sentience of civilization living on like my pinky finger, you know? Like that's got to change everything, yeah, but surely. The but thing is, I'm what, confused now what, they actually, what the quantum realm actually is. Do you just go to the same quantum so, realm when you go somewhere else, but just in a different place? In the quantum realm? Just not... the way it's presented. If yeah, I... like that it's just. A couple of cities and a few like fields. Yeah, which is me, really nice. Rags, and Fringy all shrink oh, yeah. hardcore where we are right now. We'll all end up in the quantum realm, and we can all visit each other in like fucking Bill Murray's restaurant, I guess. When it should so actually stupid. be the opposite of yeah, it doesn't make sense. We should be further yeah. apart than ever before. Yeah, yeah, because you're smaller than ever before. But no, this like, movie should be an unfathomable fucking distance as yeah. well. Yeah. But this movie yeah. thinks that the quantum realm is just outside of space and time, not a very small well, like, part of it. That's what Janet says. Yeah. Beyond time and space, even though it has space and time in it. Well, yes, I, I it... hate that she combos that up with underneath our universe, beyond time it's and space. Like, well, yeah. if it's beyond time and space, it's got nothing to do with our universe. <laughs> like, and at that point, I, well, because she says it's beneath, it's like, well, no, it's in it, right? Like, it's in the universe. Yeah. Well, they, 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 like, they use that line from like the previous films. Well, that's what like that's how Hank describes it. I think is it's like beyond time and space. Um, it's like well, yeah, that line is in the previous the film. We've got to carry it over, but they don't actually do anything with it. Like the, well, the quantum I, realm is very much just a tangible realm that you can touch and works pretty normally. I think yeah, that's, time and space that, seem to work pretty well, consistently in it. What we see in the first Ant Man is that when he is in the quantum realm, it's just this weird place with a bunch of these like weird shapes floating around. Like it does seem right. to actually be a place that is um, confusing and odd. Whereas here, it's like, oh, there's like just people living their lives and like yeah. the passage of time and everything, like day and night, seemingly. You know, it's just a planet from Guardians of the Galaxy. Like that's the whole. That's yeah, all it pretty is. much. That's what it feels yeah. like. It's got more floating shit. Yeah, but that doesn't make any sense because gravity works the same for everything else except for random rocks. Sometimes. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Get ready. Um, it, so yeah, catching up with the other team. It, like uh, they dodge a thing. I don't really care to talk about it. I just want to move on to when she's like, um, they're like, hey, well, what the hell's going on? You said there was nothing here. There's clearly loads of stuff here. And then she says, we don't have time to talk. And it's like, yeah, yeah you do. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I swear to God, if I was one of the characters there, I would not accept no as an answer. I'd be like, you better fucking tell me what's going on. I don't care yeah. if you literally have to melt to tell me what's going on. I don't know what mm -hmm. your, like, your hang-ups are, or your trauma is. Just tell me what the fuck is going on. What the fuck is going on here yeah. in this world? And it, oh takes my like, God. it takes like another half an hour in the movie until she actually tells them what the yep. heck is going on. Yeah. It's insane. Almost you not don't have time, else. just sum it up. And the, I'm trying to protect. Give me the cliff notes. There's a couple yeah. of um, Darth Vader Kenobi level lines in this in this movie. You know the "You've come to destroy me" thing that are just so funny. Um, and she says, "Why didn't you listen? I told you to stay away from here." And it's like, no, you told us there was <laughs> nothing didn't... here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, is, why are you shouting at us like that? You you didn't say fuck all. Yeah, you avoided the whole cover. Fuck you! Like, what do you mean shout at us for this? We, you, you, you've just been neglectful and now it's caused loads of problems. Oh, it, it, and you could be like, hey, she's angry and stressed. And it's like, yeah, I know, I know. But it's just fucking lame. Lame, lame dialogue. Um, well, wouldn't it be great if we could see, like, see the way that anger would affect her character and... and... No. Shut <laughs> up. She's angry <laughs> no. and it makes sense for her. We don't do character with it. Look, we have the scene where they got sucked into the quantum realm. That's your character. It's done. We finished it. <laughs> and then, of course, this is what I mean about this. There's so many lines like this. Like, 
well, shouldn't Hank know about all of this, even vaguely? And so he says, I studied the quantum realm for basically my whole fucking life. I haven't oh, seen any of this. And then she's like, you couldn't see through the void or the subatomica. And well, he's I, like, oh, okay. The what? The things, the things <laughs> the I just what? discovered and was able to see through in five years, just reading your journal. Yeah, his daughter it? cracked it. Um, remember, she wasn't working on it for five years. She uh, she started working on it when Scott was back, I guess, because that's, that's the way that they oh, yeah, uh, justify right. it. So, Cool. She cracked it real quick there, old man. Smart girl. And uh, smart yeah, girl. there's a world here Pretty beyond time girl. and space, beneath ours. Cool. I was like, Jesus Christ. Of course it is. <laughs> but yeah, Even her saying thing. the void and the subatomica, I think these are... The void is where Ant-Man ended up in the first film, when he went super small. And okay. subatomica, I'm assuming, is where she was when she met Kang. I had... Okay. I... Sure. Why and then, and then there's mean? the quantum realm below that, that, or whatever. I agree, Mahler. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I like, feel yeah, this okay. way too. I am like, what the fuck is the? When she said you couldn't see through the subatomic, I was like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Shut your mouth. What even is that? Um. So yeah. Uh. Editing fun. Uh. Ant Man and his daughter. For some reason, they, they see the quantum people. There's three of them. One of them shot a laser. And it's like, oh, jeez. Mm -hmm. People of quantum. And they grab him up and take <laughs> him away. And you're like, oh. All right. Didn't... He's Ant-Man. Yeah, mm -hmm. do something. He's in his suit. He can go small and big. He can do yeah. whatever he wants to him. But, he can oh, jump tap. Yeah, oh, well, I guess he's caught. It's like, right. And it cuts to him being dragged around and being like, where's Cassie? Yeah, where like, is Cassie? Why, yeah, why, why, what? Why are you where arriving go? at different times? You were captured at the same time. What what happens? Oh, it's so dumb. And then he sees her in the distance and she says, Dad, drink the ooze. Yeah, don't say what the ooze does. Just say drink the ooze. It's like, no, I did Did anyone else um, assume Whenever straight I go away to a it was going to be a translation ooze? No, I, had, I have no idea what the Oh, yeah, Why I would did. I assume I did. that? So that's, that's, <laughs> I did, Mahler. I, I, I legitimately did. I, I was about to say, I did. I thought it was going to be translation news, but only because it's a movie. Yes. yes. Purely meta. Like, it's, it's, there's no reason for it to be... Uh, but, but yeah, it's super annoying, because I was immediately like, yeah, she should be saying, Dad, the ooze translates all this to English. I yeah. can't believe they found the dumb version of the little babble fish from uh, Hitchhiker's, Hitchhiker's Guide, Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, the babble fish is like, this is clearly supposed to be dumb. But on some level, it makes like a sense in a way. It's a fish in your ear, and it <laughs> and it poops out words you understand essentially. <laughs> and this is just drinking ooze, and I'm like, whatever. You didn't even try. No, they didn't. Douglas try. Adams Drink tried. Ooze, God damn it. Well, here's another question: Why do they have this for, for what? So that they Why can all understand each other. And is it specifically just him? Well, so no, should we... no, no, but hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The thing is, when they all chant a thing, when we're still in, in the position we can't understand them, they all chant the same thing. That's a good point. So Meaning what? they, yeah, they true. clearly speak the same language, and now they have some random web... Red oh, you... guy. that's actually a really good point in terms of attention to detail. What Scott should hear is like, blah, 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 and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Everybody's different languages, yeah. yeah. They all Not chant one the unified. same thing. So That's they right. speak the same language, so they why are they a quantum. translation ooze? Good. Well, so you, what you're highlighting is a mistake, uh, Mel. Sometimes. <laughs> no, no, it's just a mistake that they thought... Uh, it does seem to be a mistake, yeah. Like, Because I think they would agree, like, oh yeah, they should be all doing that differently. But it sounds cooler when it goes from to drink the ooze. I would have they thought it would be way cooler if it would be complete madness and then it just... Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, but they didn't more think about and more that. clear. Yeah, if it was just chaotic, horrible monster noises, and then it all clears up into Drink the Ooze, you'd be like, oh, okay. We'll I guess it's also a really good thing that their lips start matching the words, too. Yeah, I, well, that's, that's another, that's a, that's a, that's a yeah. psychedelic, uh, psychedelic See, effect if, of the ooze. That's actually a thing, you... that's the thing with translation stuff in general. <laughs> like, it should always be like a delay if you wanted to like, compl do completely Yeah, like a spaghetti accurate. western, yeah. Yeah, this is like, oh, that would be a lot funnier. Over. I don't know why they didn't do that. That would be funnier if the whole movie was like <laughs> it would that. would probably be a nightmare to watch, though, I feel like. It would be really weird. I don't know. I feel like Aren't it'd be that funny many if there was characters who are from the quantum realm who that get that many lines. Yeah. It would be like a thing for be five funny. minutes, and it'd be kind yeah, of but funny. In, no, but in this movie, like, where they all have, like, their weird different languages, and they all just go nuts. 
You know, they lost the um they lost the ability, or at least they didn't take opportunity to have scenes that weren't really from the point of view of the characters, but were sort of like establishing shots or like when they were when they meet with Bill Murray later, spoilers. Um when they're when you're kind of on the camera sort of at the table, as if it's from the perspective of all the characters there, they can understand everyone. But it like pulls out to maybe a shot of the whole bar, and then it's just the no it's just weird noises that we hear. And then when it goes back to the character's perspective, then we can understand the words again. Mm. That'd be a thing. Yeah. That yeah. would have been a thing. So I was thinking about why he gets separated from Cassie, and it, I feel like the only reason is that she can be like, drink the ooze, Dad. Like she's And he can go, him. what? Yeah. Like, I've already done this. You just got to trust me. Trust me. You know, that sort of thing. He gave it to me real quick. Yeah, well, yeah it's and, dumb. And... There's several instances of characters having a chance to say a thing and they don't say the optimal thing. They say the mysterious yeah. thing. I think Great it just kind of it fits in yeah. to me with the idea that she doesn't really have anything to learn. It's he has the like it, he has the arc to go on. She's already cool. Yeah. How yeah, nifty, how cool. nifty would it be if they they obviously know these outsiders don't speak the language, so they like use their they they, just, they gesticulate a bit where. They give him the ooze, like a, a a goblet of it or whatever, and they point to like the ears or the mouth or something and try to be like, no, no, no drink it so you can like sort of. One hear of it. the human characters drinks it in front of them and then hands it to them, like, ooh, here, this is for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's not like the, it's not like the weird the liquid way... from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom that turns you evil. Just drink it; it's fine. The way yeah. that they do it is so incredibly inefficient and nonsense, but it's funny. It's like a, it's or like a ceremony. Spooky. It's like this huge thing they put in the in the yeah. Everyone's like excited. Mouth. It's just like why? Like, yeah, woo! And they, they yeah, use it's a so religious much ooze. Ritual. You see later when they when the other three in the bar, there's like a little shot of the ooze. Yeah, and it's fine. It's a nothing they deal. Just, they just pour like a, a liter of ooze in in Scott's face. It just goes everywhere. It's just wasted. Well, this is something that I was mentioning when uh, we did it with rags. Uh, when, when I did it with rags, uh, oh. We, like oh my. He's, they force his mouth open, oh, they got this big jug of, you know, literal nanoverse goo that could be anything, and they pour it in, and it's like, he still has to swallow. Yeah. He can just, you, you can do a thing, when your mouth is filling up with stuff, you can just not swallow. Mm -hmm. Madness. Madness. I don't even By think the way, they close his nose. Scott always swallows. Whenever something <laughs> goes in my mouth, I swallow. <laughs> it horror. Um, if it's good enough to go in the mouth, it's good enough to go all the way. But like it's it's super interesting to think about that he's just like well may as well swallow. <laughs> it's yeah. like, really, really, dude. By the okay. way, I, th I think that's the reason why they split Cassie and him up. I don't think they wanted to show us uh, a teenage girl getting <laughs> held down by multiple people. Yeah, probably. Who's poured in, in her face? Splooched in the face by the ooze man. Mmm, <laughs> yeah. it's good. Mm. I see <laughs> Dad, what you, you gotta try now. it. Dad, I swallowed the ooze. It's like you did what? <laughs> That, I mean, that's so, been in line. the new country for 10 minutes, whore. So, for <laughs> starters, I think it is already kind of lazy that they just have an ooze that means everybody speaks English now. But even beyond that, I don't think there's any meaningful difference paid to try and distinguish between how people communicate down here or different cultures. You know, everyone basically com communicates like a human. You know, that's kind of the no... most annoying thing. Is um, they were clearly inspired by something like the Cantina in Star Wars, as everybody is, but nobody ever seems to remember what that is. The collection of different cultures all coming together in a watering hole for transport, exchange, smuggling, all kinds of things. Right? It's like a hot spot of the universe, or at least mm -hmm. one of many. But this is like that. But there's no places everyone's from. Everyone's from here. Yeah. yeah. Why is everybody completely different? I don't know. It's a very diverse group. You know, you think there might be one sort of civilization or different civilizations. You know, it's a well, very take diverse. For instance, right? Yeah. Because uh, we haven't even explained the mechanics of this. Like, what is this goo everyone's drinking? You'd be like, well, maybe it's a goo they invented that can, you know, translate or whatever. But it's like, no, it, it's, it comes from one of the alien guys that there only seems yeah. to be one of. And he keeps referring to it as like, did you drink my ooze? It's his ooze. Yeah comes yeah. from him. And so it's like, wait, so if he didn't evolve to just be here, the one of him, does nobody get to speak to each other? <laughs> yeah, apparently not. And then, uh, and then of course, the like most a... important question I have to ask, did Mo Modok drink his ooze? Uh, maybe. Yes. Did, did Kang? Well, it, it's, Where's it's, that scene? <laughs> well, it's, I guess so. 
see in my head canon they have like a like a like a facility where they enslave a lot of these goo people and just get take their ooze they for their usage it's the price of civilization free the goo pool <laughs> free the, the goo pool i don't get it um <laughs> i don't get any of it it doesn't make any sense it's super stupid hyper lazy it's the memory store just with a different thing um and the more you think about it the worse it gets i think that this goo is generated yeah. by that one alien i call him an alien he's He's actually not an alien. He's from Earth. It's true. He's an Earthling. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, a, a... He's called Bab. Bab, yeah. Um, Bab. So, fuck it. That's done now. Woohoo. Yeah. Uh, this is the other joke I laughed at in this scene. Yeah, I mean, I was actually yeah, going to say, too. it goes back and forth between the when... A plot and B plot, but we'll go back to Hope and others later, no, I guess. We'll stick with these guys for a while. You laughed when he said, did you drink my goo? No, no we, I we... laughed. I laughed not when he was like, "Do you have any holes?" But when the <laughs> other guy's like, "Um, he has seven holes." And then there's a pause, and you're wondering what Scott <laughs> is going to say next. And he's like, "That's right." And suddenly, yeah. you realize that he was counting the holes in his yeah. head. Yeah, that that's the, that was kind of funny. I, I, that's that, the movie's joke. That's, that's the best joke, joke in the whole movie. movie. Yeah, it's the joke. Yeah, best it's joke genuinely the, the the part. Of, that's the part of the movie I enjoyed. <laughs> that got yeah, a laugh in my cinema. Uh, it's, it's it did get a nice laugh, and it's kind of a clever joke. Because it's, it's like you're you're almost catching up with him. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because well, I think to off. most people, seven sounds like a lot, and then you're like, oh, it, oh yeah, no, it is. Okay, mm -hmm. it's actually. How more many does a vagina technical. count as? Just in general, one or two? Three. I guess two. Because yeah. I'm. I mean, I I could say going <laughs> either way. Maybe That's just so. a matter of, you know, subjectivity. I don't know. You can't be Holes objective. Subjective. I don't know. Yeah. Discuss it in the comments. Uh, <laughs> commons, but yeah, that's the uh, and the reason why that joke did seem to come across as working because uh, a lot of people will do the same thing. And as soon as as Jay put it, you realize what's happening. It's like, ha ha! Oh, good job! And you get that good spark little... in your heart of like, man, entertainment. You know? Oh, I like entertainment. It's pretty cool. Miss it. Pretty good. Um, if the whole movie had jokes of that quality. I would probably have enjoyed it. I hate to do this, uh, yeah, but I don't think the joke answer. works too well, though. Ultimately. No, I don't think it does either. <laughs> uh, most, if not 99% of the creatures in this world have seven holes. That's a good point. Oh, yeah! Because all the humans! Mm -hmm. yeah. There shouldn't be humans everywhere. And so why is Veb so fascinated when he's got the most Whoa! boring amount of holes? Whoa! Well, the guy even put, uh, quasi you pointed out. Me. Well, to be fair, the guy didn't quite point it out. He says uh, a lot of us have holes. He didn't say all of us have seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. maybe the humans say, like, don't have buttholes or something. Maybe. Because <laughs> worms, yeah, they're like two holes. There's just one on each end. So who knows what kinds of creatures and holes there are here. He's just a hole appreciator. He seemed amazed that he had um, holes at all. Which is strange, considering yeah, how many strange. people here do. When I had seen this, if there were all then, fucking um... goo people here, it would solve so many problems. If there were all goo people like that guy, it would, it would be yeah. such an improvement. Uh, the, the, I yeah. think that this got a little uh, uh, cringe as well because it it felt like, do I say stale Rick and Morty humor, where it's like. Holes? Uh, yeah, like, ooh, you have such interesting holes, guy in the background. Let's torture them. No, we're not going to torture them. Why are you here? Are you a spy? Let's torture them. Stop saying to torture yeah. them. And it's just yeah, like, I, I get it. Like, lots of people are saying things, and it's like... Mm -hmm. uh, and they're lots of goofy, zany, wacky things. It's yeah. like, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like with it. It. It's like a Rick and Morty joke if it wasn't, you know, revised and, and edited and, and tweaked. That's how it comes across to me, yeah. It's like the first draft of I mean, a Rick and Morty joke. Like the, I find them annoying as, as comments as well, because are you a spy? We should torch them. It's like, both of you are redundant. You have a mind reader right there. Yes. yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> as soon as they established the mind reader, I was just like, well, this scene is going to have awkward and dramatic things for no reason at all now. And, and he's, he's like, who is San Francisco? I think that was supposed to be funny. Nobody yeah. is just yeah. dead in my audience. Just like yeah, I was just like, uh, yeah. okay, because that's almost like not that shouldn't even be a joke, really. Well, I mean, it makes you wonder but what he's like reading from his head because if he's yeah, reading, like, <clears throat> like I maybe we've got to get back to San Francisco. And then he's like, well, "Who is even... that?" And, but it's like, why would you assume it's a who? Why would you think that way anyway? You would probably think, "I want to go home, not I want to go back to San Francisco, yeah, well... the city I live." <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? 
Well, yeah, but that's not even his main part. He wants to fight. He wants to reunite with the others first as well. Right. <sighs> um, but yeah, then Tryhard Lady arrives, and she's like, you come from above like him, so he is hunting you, and he will burn the world to find you. I and like they're like, the Tryhard Lady. <laughs> Like, who? Yeah, and like, she goes, okay. the Conqueror. <laughs> it's so, it's so edgy. It's so, I hate okay. her. She sucks. Oh, yeah. Nice to meet you, by the way. I, I'm assuming <laughs> I'm not alone here in saying that the favorite is Vab. Like, he's oh, just... Yeah, the man? Yeah, yeah he's, he's such like a little a goofball guy. who's trying he's, to have some yeah. fun. And he makes he's jokes about goofball. Goofball. already. Yeah, and I, I like his design, too. And I like that in the action pack scenes, he's doing his wibbly-wobbly run. Like, trying to get places. Yeah, it looks fun. Um, and he's probably the closest thing to what we were talking about earlier, right? Like an alien having an actual right. effect or relevance, because everyone has to be humanoid. But he's, and arguably he's humanoid. Um, but you know, I think he's he's pretty alien. He's more alien than most other things in this yeah. supposedly alien place. Um, in, this, in this realm that redefines how we understand life. <laughs> Yeah, it's <laughs> worth mentioning, we cut back and forth like fucking five times, and this is the scene, it's like scene two in this area, where she says, he is hunting you, and he will burn the world to find you, this lady. That's when she says it. It's about 20 yeah. minutes later that she says this again, and uh, <laughs> demands that they leave because of it. It's so fucking annoying. She's lame, but we'll get there. Um, I'm trying to think of if we, if we go back and forth or not, or we just, we just stick with the, the Ant-Man stuff. Um, because uh, well, yeah, I guess we can sum it up pretty quickly because it's kind of dumb. Uh, she's like, we need a transport to get to my old friend, and um, a bunch of like randoms arrive. And Rags, I think you were just like, this is gonna they're gonna do the thing where he's super intimidating or whatever, and then they're like, ah, we're totally friends. Yeah, and um, yeah, and you 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 may have thought for a moment you were wrong, but then you were right. <laughs> like, oh, they're killing each other. No, no, yeah. they're doing the thing. Again, yeah, it's uh, such a cliche. It's, it's also as again fuck. very, very convenient that they just stumble across people she knows. Apparently, she knows everybody there. They, they make a yeah. joke about that. Great. It's kind of weird. What are the coincidences in the quantum realm mm -hmm. that you just landed next to these people? That quantum you realm know? is very small. Uh, clearly, you're right. Maybe. It is very small. It's like one street, really. <laughs> uh, that yeah. One so street has a lot of biomes. She bumps into them all, and it, you you might think at first like, oh, so what's what, like? It, it, we'll have to go from it from her POV. She knows that these guys will be her friend as long as she can prove she can still fight them in one on one, I guess. And so mm -hmm. Hope is like getting ready to fight. Hank is worried, and what does she say to them? Like, stay back or something? Let me handle it or something like that. And it's just Again, like, what the fuck no are you doing? At all. Yeah, tell them what you need to tell them. Be like, yeah. I gotta fight this dude, and if you try and fight them, they'll kill you. So let me just 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 don't. But the thing is, like, when she starts fighting him, they have, like, a reaction shot of Hope being like, <gasps> and it's like, no, Hope would put her mask up, go wasp size, and fuck up the guy. That's what Hope would yeah. do. But, um, you can't show that, because that would fuck everything up, so never mind. In any case, she wins and gets them a little manta ray thing, and, uh, uh, they're traveling at incredible speeds through the... Yeah. The, the, the verse, whatever it is, and like diving down and stuff, and they're all just sort of hanging on. It's kind of like, I think, I think all <laughs> well, of you I mean, would probably be dead from this. Technically, they're, hang they're traveling phenomenally slowly. <laughs> Not relative to them. Shut up. Uh -huh. Relative to you, maybe. Relative to these nuts. <sighs> yeah, they arrive at place... And Hank is like, there are intelligent beings down here. This changes everything about life, evolution, and our place in the galaxy. Holy shit, that guy's a broccoli. That guy's made of broccoli. Extremely funny. Yeah, it's just kind of like, you yeah, sit there, sort right. of, you're yeah, kind of just I, sad, staring at the screen like, mm. that's, uh, Is broccoli does... the funniest thing you could think of for a character to look so. like and distract mm. Hank? Holy yeah. shit, that guy's made of cum. It couldn't even... <laughs> <laughs> It couldn't, just hearing him say come would have been funny. But yeah. They couldn't have picked something like, oh, he's a Volkswagen logo, or, oh, he's a, I don't even know. Oh, he's just got a little product really placement in there. looked like Jeff Goldblum, which is way funnier. It's an alien. Oh, yeah, they, it's, they, you're, it's an alien that looks like Jeff Goldblum, and it's just Jeff Goldblum saying, hi, and then that's the scene. That would be I don't funny. know, it's something. I would have laughed. Um... That's a that's the whirly dearly episode, isn't it, Jay? It is. 
memory. Um, so yeah, she she just says drink those with the the shots of the the ooze, and you're like, does does Veb supply this restaurant with ooze? Yeah, that's what no. it meant. <laughs> I I think it's just Veb's people. I mm. guess we only see one of him though. Well, Veb's people well that's have been that doesn't life. mean I'm sure there's there are more. more. We only see one it. spotlight head man, but. There's probably yeah. More I assume there's one of his, that's my whole issue is that there seems to be just one of everything. And, You're so it, bad faith, Mahler. Don't you know that the we Fed already established apply all their juice to the bars of Quantumaniaville? We already so established we've seen the other? street of Quantumania. That's all this is. There's nothing else. The street of Quantumania. Um, Jesus. but in any case, yeah. Like I don't know about you, but if I got moved to this place and then she was like, "Drink these," I'd be like, "Um, mind tell me what this is." Yeah. Please. Right away, she. Oh, sorry, I thought you were done. No, that's it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, first, she knows the language apparently to get one of these uh, ooze thingies because she talks. Well, to them. I guess she lived there for thirty years. years. Right? Yeah. So the yeah, ooze yeah, yeah. is in her. And also, she apparently needs Don't to drink that. one. As, she needs to drink one as well. Uh, oh. I, I guess that uh, that that. That doesn't hold on forever. The ooze wears off. Wears off. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> yeah. So that what? It's Veb, right? He has to just be persistently Cha supplying everything. Yeah, he's yeah, loaded, dude. I mean, well, yeah, he gives he's it probably away rich. For free, though, no wonder he wants hold. Unless he's a slave. He puts a like he he away for free. Slave. Yeah, exactly. That's why he wants to the revolution so that his people can be free and they can go back to the old days where no one fucking understood each other. <laughs> Bad of times. Um, so they start asking her about what the fuck's going on, and um, Janet says, "Well, uh, like I was a freedom fighter." Or he says, "Like you were a freedom fighter," and then she says, "Or a terrorist, depending on who you ask." I thought that was such a weird line, considering yes. it's, it's everyone in the quantum realm versus Kang, Modok, and a bunch of robots. So why would yeah. you say, like, according to them, <laughs> I'm a terrorist? You're like, really? Uh, okay. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Are yeah. there Kang sympathizers here in this world? Somewhere? I guess there probably would be one or two guess, or three or four. Or is five. that what Bill Murray is? Well, yeah. Well, he's, he's part of the Kang, Kang, Kang. We have no idea why Bill Murray's doing what he does, and he only implies that there's a very good reason for it. He's, he's just said Kang's persuasive. That's it. But like that he's could mean so game. many things. But we've decided he's evil. What like what if they have his daughter? Yeah. Mm. Nah. I guess you guys couldn't relate <laughs> with the whole, you know, doing things because they got your family. No, I just mean like that's exactly what Ant Man does in this movie. He works for him for to save his daughter. So you True. know what I mean? Like, but we're like, nah, Bill Murray's evil. Fuck him. Get him thrown around by an alien or whatever. I don't even know what happens to him. The, the like the tentacle like moves him over the to thing. the right, and then he just isn't part of the movie anymore. <laughs> Well, it's poetic justice, because earlier he ate one of those things, but now a big version of the thing eats him. It doesn't eat him, though. It clearly doesn't eat him. It clearly doesn't eat him. Maybe it be ate him off-screen. Because that's what all of us thought exactly would, you know, yeah, what would happen. Yeah, you think that would happen. But they just didn't do that. I just and he instead, died. he just sort of goes off to the right. And I, I don't know. I, yeah, maybe I he guess. didn't. I just maybe he's he did, because he's gone. And he <laughs> I assume they didn't want to show him. Why are you dragging him? around the moat <laughs> 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 it's I'm so gonna have nightmares. I'm gonna have nightmares. I'm gonna leave Every like time this. I click back to this tab, I see a oh big Modoc face staring at me. I and then the to... six little Modoclets down below. We're, he's about to be in the story, by the way. We're almost there. <laughs> oh my god, Dude, he is. I have a I have the stream window on on my big television. There's a huge Modoc face staring at me at all times now. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, okay, so yeah. Uh, you have another weird... So he arrives, and he's pretty chill. He's super civil, and apparently he's the one that's going to help us be able to save Scott, right? And so he says, Oh, you must be Hope. She talked about you every day. And then she says, Strange. She didn't talk about you at all. Why would you say yeah, that? Like, why would you say that? Why are you being a prick? <laughs> it's one of Hope's three lines in the movie, and I just wonder why they had her say it. I don't understand. Why? She gets so few lines, we have to make her more of a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I think when we're watching this, it's like, but why? What did you achieve by doing that? What, are we supposed to? And like then, the, the writers think that's a clever thing to say. Well, they didn't mention you. Well, she seems so like meh about it. But the thing is, uh, Bill Murray like recovers it. He's like, well, you know what? I wouldn't have talked about what we got up to anyway. Well, some you know, like in a normal civil conversation where someone's an asshole to you and you try to recover the fucking atmosphere, you're like, hope mm -hmm. you're tanking it, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's, it, it, I just don't know what the point of that line was exactly. Um, maybe it's to imply, like, Mum, you should have told us more about what was happening here, asshole. But it's like, that's probably something you should bring up to her, not to imply to him that he wasn't worth talking about by someone who Yeah, it was much more it. directed at him. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason. Um, I guess back to, back to Ant-Man. Um, Reading Thoughts Man says they don't know anything about anything. And I thought that was fascinating. I was like, you don't care to find out anything about the world above? No, all? apparently not. You just not give a shit about any of it? Even though, wouldn't they have been affected by the, the blip? That's the question. That's no, this is outside question. of space and time. And, uh, oh, so fuck it. off. <laughs> outside of space and time. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's not <laughs> fair. Why? What Those doesn't make sense about they... being outside of space and time and just like having a normal movie? There, just though. generally all of it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, none of them seem to give a shit. They're all like really excited when they arrive, and then as soon as they find out they don't know anything about Kang, oh, send like, them okay, away. Bye then. And it's like, no, these are your first visitors from like Upper Earth. But okay. Yeah, the, the place that Kang is from. Yeah. Which is, by the way, a reason for them to be panicked. That's what they make clear. Dang they're like, we should be terrified of the fact that they're from there because he'll be here soon. Yeah, they clearly understand the significance of the place they're from. And then you have, um, whoa, is that building alive? And then Veb's like, yours are dead? And uh, it's like, well, well they were never, were never alive in the first place, so they're I not get, dead. I either. get the joke. So, it doesn't yeah, make sense. But... They, we've already seen loads of normal buildings in this world. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a true. Point. Yeah. It's like again, Kang it just built flat. a whole bunch of dead buildings. <laughs> I mean, we see them get killed in the movie too, so you you must be able to have dead buildings. Well, I, I guess I guess they feel weird about living in those ones or something. Maybe. Well, Jay, do you feel bad about living outside of a skeleton? I don't live outside a skeleton. <laughs> yes, you do. No, my brain is where I live, and that's inside the skeleton. That's actually even worse. Is it? Yeah, that's even creepier. I think both of those things are morally neutral. You live and you live every each and every one think, of you. I think you live inside of a neutral. skeleton. I think that it's morally neutral. So you live in your head rent free, is what you mean to say? No, I pay rent. I gotta feed this bitch. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. <laughs> I this thing's gotta eat and shit, man. Oh, and I got like mental breakdowns. Oh man. So someone annoying. needs to talk to the landlord. I've always liked the whole flash mac thing, that the skeleton's the only part that's... Flash mac? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you die, your flesh just opens up, your skeleton pops out, like from a little mech or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. It it's cold out here. Um, so there we get another example of just this hideous dialogue that I absolutely hate. Scott says, Look, we're just trying to find our family. Do you, do you have a map? All we want to do is go home. And then Tryhard turns around and goes, at least you have a home. Like, it was okay. so cringe. Jesus, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, just it's, it's, here. I swear to God, if I was there, I'd be like, what does that have to do with what he said? Yeah, like, what is thing. with you? I, okay. I, I'm sorry, but I think I'm sorry. I don't know. Maybe yeah. you deserve that. I don't fucking know. Maybe I you're no evil. Clue. I, don't, I don't know you. Exactly. <laughs> you could be a psycho, terrible person. Maybe the Conqueror is like a really stand-up guy. Yeah. Oh, that's an well. No, yeah, one she's, a, like, no one with a nickname like the Conqueror would ever actually be a good person. But that's his enemies calling him that. Of, yeah. No, actually, rags. All people have perfect perception of reality. And oh, that's true. Well, that's everything. true. I thought, I knew it. Wasn't he called Mister Rogers the Conqueror or whatever? He was a pretty cool dude. Mister Rogers the Conqueror. Marriage. Um, Bob Ross the Conqueror. I think that's what his name. <laughs> These are all chill guys. So yeah, I, I disagree dramatically with this. Yeah. Um, yeah, she goes on to say, he burned our homes. He will, he will paint the rivers red with blood. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna paint some red little rivers here. I'm gonna make some happy little, <laughs> some rivers little red blood rivers. Here. Yeah. Little happy little red rivers. Don't uh, ask what they're full of. It's not important. What's fish. important is you having fun and enjoying Don't yourself. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, she says, he burned our homes, our stories. He burned Isn't your really, stories. Really weird to say that. Yeah, that that burned really your weird. stories like like your libraries <laughs> specifically. He really burned. He really hated. Yeah. Why? Are, why though? Why? Especially what we learn about read. Kong or Kang later. Why would he do that? Oh, it's, it's, it. it is a moment, right? Where you, you, it's like, oh, you mean he burned? Like, like 
the hi your histories as it, like not the actual books but the the knowledge of what ha like who you are as people is that what you mean mm -hmm. it could be a, it could be a cool line to recontextualize if you had something like world building and you had a a character who um you know you find out that the culture perceives like the the city they built as like being representative of their histories and their stories and like, like then you go back and watch it it's like oh i make i understand that line now you rewatch it and it's like no, though, actually, it's just a strange line. <laughs> no, though. No, it's a strange line. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, then she says, he built his citadel on the bones of our people. And I was like, he just asked like, where he is. That's <laughs> all. Please. Jesus Christ, woman. Like, that doesn't seem like a very secure foundation. No. Have you ever seen Poltergeist? <laughs> I don't know if that's, like, gonna work. Love yeah, to see, bones, I'd love to like, see a really comedy. Solid? A comedy about this a comedy with this character where she then goes on to the next person who's like uh yo uh, i need to go to the bathroom where is it and she's like let <laughs> me tell you about Kang. Have <laughs> at least you room. have remember a fucking, bathroom remember fucking <laughs> hey she's like and i'll have you know that you know gears may not seem important to you but entire wars have been fought over nah gears. she'd say something along the lines of ah you seek a relief that my heart will never know <laughs> <laughs> at least you have seven holes yeah. at least your bladder is full Unlike my thirst for vengeance. Oh, beautiful lines. <laughs> At least this your is bladder dialogue. is full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she I don't says think we. Uh, ever said that. She says we gather who we can to fight, but it's never enough. And um, before you can even comprehend any of that insane nonsense and repeat the question because she didn't answer it, fucking Cassie is like, we should help them. We can help. And it, it's like, shut the fuck it's, up. It's such a, like, you know, what the fuck are you talking about, about woman? Anything. <laughs> and, the, and then, this is why it's so painful. Ant-Man, Scott, Lang, he's like, we don't know how time works here. We don't know if we're passing time, like, further now than we are up there. And you know, all the problems that happen with that with Earth. We don't know whether these people are, like, the fucking, we don't know these people. You actually yeah. don't even know if they're the good guys or bad guys in this conflict. We all don't you know, know you what the fuck. You just hear Bone Citadel, and you open your mouth, and you need to chill. This, yeah. We don't know what this place is. We don't even know if we're hallucinating. We don't know uh, if we're dying. We don't know Something if we're safe. Something could have been in that weird pizza, all right? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we don't know where Hank and Hope and Janet are. We need to find them. And then the last part that's really important. He says, like, you may never see your mom again. Like, she's yeah. still on Earth. We don't know if we're traveling like a thousand million years per second or some shit here. It's like, he's... He's appealing to the idea. It's like you remember this happened to me, and it stole the most important years of my life from you, like you from me. Like I'm trying to get you back to your mum, as well as all these other things. And then she just says, "Don't use that as an excuse. You just don't care." Yeah, it's like fuck off. Fuck oh, I wanna, you. I want to slap her, but the film was like, "Yep, she's right." Yeah. Especially the the whole thing with they don't even know if they don't go to bad guys. Immediately I had to think about God of War, uh, 2018, and Ragnarok. Where they have this long ass setup where Trey's yeah. like, we need to help them. And Kurt's like, N well, we don't know who good or bad people are here or if they even are any. And then you get the payoff all the way back at Ragnarok uh, when, when it's like, wait, I thought we helped the good people. Why is there still war? And it's like, well, it's not that easy. What do you mean? Like, like you the don't... opposite of Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. <it's laughs> we helped the good people and now it's over. <laughs> and I think that would be a really cool thing to. Explore here as well, where she just kind of learns, like, hey, you probably need to wonder, like, hey, maybe you're not actually on the good side here right now. Uh, but no, we, we the, everyone just accepts, like, no, no, it's a conqueror. We, we all know he's bad. Don't, don't worry about meta knowledge. We're, we're fine. Well, like, okay. He says, uh, when she says you don't care, he says, I do care, but it's not our fight. And it's like, that's not even that, mind. like, it, it's not that, the other points you made were a way better. The other argument is you don't understand, I don't understand anything about this place, we need to leave. It's all the stuff he yeah. already said, that was all perfect. And then, yeah, and then he like, changes it to, it's not our fight. It's like, Scott, no, that's not. It's because they, theme. Exactly, the theme yeah, the theme barging in and fucking up the dialogue. dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then asshole says, she's disappointed in you by reading minds. And I, I think when I was watching, I was like, so. Inappropriate. They're talking to each other at the moment. Stupid, yeah. because it's stupid to be fucking disappointed for saying what it said. And then, unethical. Get the fuck out of our heads, yeah. you yeah, asshole. Yeah, get the fuck I... away, you piece of mm -hmm. shit. But he just, he just, like, I can't believe it would be seen as fun and cool to just turn up and tell people what's going on in people's brains. It's like, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> like, yeah, you'd know, be the most people, unpopular think, person here. People, people rightly uh, value the freedom that they have in their own mind. <clears> and the <throat> privacy of their own mind and yeah this guy's just like 
Whatever. Yeah, Heimdall was the bad Max, guy. So I will. <laughs> like, I don't know if they remember. Oh yeah. uh, well, the, well, they didn't play God of War right. That's what they needed. They needed. They to needed play to Ragnarok. play Ragnarok. No, oh play Ragnarok. wait, we need to rewrite this guy. <laughs> oh, whoopsie. <laughs> so, and just just keep all of that in mind, right? That everything we've said, and then in the middle of the conversation, they mentioned Janet, and then Tryhard says Van Dyne. She shouldn't be uh, here. And they're just like, oh, yeah. oh god, what's about to happen now? And then um, she basically says, like, if you're looking for Janet, then that means he's looking for you. Yeah, we, you said that basically <laughs> already. <laughs> they said that at the beginning. They said, mm -hmm. if you're Why from the surface, they... he's looking for you. Yeah, and then it's like, well, if they're looking for, if you're looking for Janet, well, he's definitely looking for you. It's like, what, more so than before? More now? He's looking <laughs> at us more? <laughs> like... uh... Fucking hell. Anyway, back over to uh, B plot. They're like, <laughs> what is the editing? We're yeah, it's, back and forth. it's it's really choppy as fuck. This portion because you're just like, why aren't yeah. we staying with? Okay, fine. And um, uh, Bill Murray is like, I totally forgot you call yourselves humans up there. And then Hag is like, oh, are you not human? And he goes, not technically, but yes, in the ways that matter. What does that mean? <laughs> All right, that is a very complex discussion that this film is not ready to get no. into right now. <laughs> I thought the idea was that they would try to make the joke of him saying yes, no, because they can't answer that question. They just don't know how. Uh, so uh, that, that's the weird, not technically, but yes. <laughs> yeah, Why whatever. even bother with that? Like, what does that accomplish? It just makes everything more confusing. Oh, I, I know. I I understand the, the joke that he's talking about that he has a he can fuck with 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 with, with the whammons. I'm talking about like the actual realities of are they human? Yeah, it's a stupid joke. No, <laughs> I don't like it. So yeah. um, it just makes you wonder. But yeah, uh, then then he gets a little serious on us, and uh, he says to Janet, "You left all of us with him. You didn't tell them about him, did you? Anything?" about what you did, how many people died because of you, does your family even know who you are? And then, um, it's so funny, he says all of that, and it's like, super interesting. And then just cuts to Hope and she goes, you're a liar. Okay. <laughs> okay. Alright then, <laughs> thank you for that input, randomly. <laughs> Can you please stop making everything worse all the time? <laughs> it's just like, oh, uh, <laughs> what, what did you achieve with that Hope? <laughs> you're Good a really job, little liar, dude. Nice. Um, yeah, and and so uh, we're getting more and more of the story. I'm going to leave it for a little bit still, the Janet history, until she gets to her okay. exposition dump. We can talk about it then. Sure. Uh, um, in any case, he's like, Kang knows the where the other people are, and he sent his hunter. And um, Hope goes, what, what kind of hunter? What hunter? And I, I'm just sort of like... You have no clue about anything right now. <laughs> you this, I, I know. When we were watching this movie and we're getting just, you're in this weird place with weird people. You don't know what the hell's going on or what's happening. Nothing is familiar. Of all the questions that you're getting inquisitive about, it's the nature of the hunter that is being sent after you. I mean, I feel that is a pretty good question to have. I don't know. I, I guess the, the problem I have with it is that she has just no bearings on anything. The, the fact that she would pick out of everything that's been said, what kind of hunter? The reason she's saying it is because it can set him up to say Modok, basically. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know, it's still it's still like it feels clunky as fuck to me. Pressing things to be concerned about. Well, she is a hunter, so that's already pretty bad. But like not knowing, this... it's probably worth asking who the fuck Kang is. Why is anybody doing anything right now? What is my mum's history? There's well, all yeah. these different things, but she's just like, what kind of hunter? More questions should be being asked, but I don't have, like, it feels like a pretty good first question, what kind of thing is coming after us. Well, he says, it's, uh, hmm, it's a, it's a mechanized organism designed only for killing. Like, oh, ha, 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 Cyan, get ready. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm so ready. Yeah, and then she says, <laughs> what happened to you? We fought against him. And I thought it was funny that she said that right after he said, you left all of us with him. Like, there's clearly a, like, he's implying that things went really bad when she left. Yeah. And then he says, he can be very persuasive, and that's the most you get. And I couldn't help but think, like, I wonder, I wonder if something horrible happened to him. Yeah. People he loves, you know? But it doesn't matter, because he's a goofball. No clue. No Goof clue. We'll never know. We, we <laughs> will never know. Uh, nope. 
Um, oh yeah, they get into a big old fight. Everyone's shooting blasters everywhere, but our main team are fine, of course. Yep. Oh, well, yeah, the bad like guys missed their even very though, clear shots. Even though the Hope pads like her super duper suit and she can fly around and go small and big, she just stands still and shoots people. Yeah. It's really it's weird. So awkward. Like they yeah, ran out of budget. Like, yeah, yeah, they ran out of money to have her actually, you know, flying around and doing stuff. So like, just stand there, just shoot, it'll be fine. Yeah. By the way, during all this uh, conversation, there's like this thing that they had the the sexy times, and it's like a whole thing. They well, I, I say a whole thing. It's like a sideline that's supposed to be funny. But I feel like it's definitely not acknowledged when they're in the ship later in a bit by Janet. Well, they, they acknowledge it, but they're like they don't give it the uh, attention it deserves. Exactly. Well, yeah, because one could interpret that as she cheated on him. Yeah, pretty easily. Uh, but the she and she just says uh, I had needs, and then it gets yeah. really weird because that that's something. And then he says, "Well, I got needs too. I had dinner with someone a few times. Didn't work out." Yeah. And then she's like, "What went wrong?" And it just awkwardly cuts, and he's like, she wasn't you, baby. Yeah, both of these people just realized that they weren't faithful to each other during that yeah. time. Well, and no. That's just... He or... thought she was dead. Right. Oh, it turns out, not only was she was alive, she was also cheating. That's so kind of what I'm getting at. It's like, she knew he was alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so he's... Yeah, I guess he's in the clear, and she's not. Yeah, well, and he, the question but, should be like, he, he, she could, she should have been like, yeah, I never thought I was going to see you again. I thought I was stuck here. Um, yeah, that, that, that would work. But she said, said I have needs. That. I have needs. Yeah, she should have said some long lines of like, I was, you know, I was down here for years. I thought there was no way to well, possibly ever get back. Because they kind of wanted back. to turn it into, they wanted to make it a joke rather yeah. than sort of yeah. deal with the trauma of these. Because it's like, the, these two are supposed to love each other. They value each other a lot. And Janet got stranded here on her own. It's like... Well, yeah, it might be interesting to think about the psychology that she would have, but it's just like, oh, well, I have needs. It's like, ah, uh -huh, isn't that funny? It's like, I feel like you could have, like, actually done a bit more character building. Yeah, because he also doesn't acknowledge it all that she says, uh, that he says, like, oh, it wasn't you, baby. It's like, he couldn't do it still. Like, he couldn't be unfaithful, even though he thought he uh, she was dead. <laughs> Meanwhile, she was fine. Um, but yeah. I, I, I don't... The, because the scene ends after that, when he says, it wasn't you, baby, and then it's never talked about again. And I, I find it really annoying. Yeah, the issue's resolved. What else is there to possibly talk about? Yeah. It makes me think, though, it's just like, if you did all that for the joke, because you could have just written it so that she didn't do that, and it's like, and what's the big payoff? It's like, she wasn't you, baby. Like, that's, that's all you got? That's it? Yeah, that's all yeah. you got. What, she didn't fuck you hard enough? So, why don't he, what does that even mean? No, he, he didn't even get that far, he just said he had dinner with her. I feel like, she wasn't I feel you like... eating dinner with her? She didn't eat dinner like you, is... baby. No, it's just his heart is reserved for Janet. Yeah, that's, that's all. Pretty straightforward, yeah, honestly. It it's just like he didn't her, click you know. with anybody else. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and, and they escape. And yeah, it is, uh, it's just really funny to watch Hope just awkwardly stand there uh, until and they can shoot. leave. Yeah. And yeah, uh, Hank enlargens this creature thing and it just grabs Bill Murray and throws him. And like we said, I, I don't, I guess he, he could come were, back. I, I'm pretty sure won't. She, wasn't, she wasn't even wearing a helmet in that, nope. that shootout, I think. Why would you? They're shooting you! Why are you not wearing your helmet? Yeah, but these are trained soldiers with weapons they're familiar with. Why so they would never hit her when she's standing helmet? in front of them. Yeah, no, they, they, they they yes, but. Rags, well, who wins? Several mechanized, trained personnel equipped with sci fi weapons or one science boy? One old science, science boy. boy. It's always science boy. I think I think the question Rags. <laughs> Just put it on. No, <laughs> it protects you from dangers. Shut need up to do it with my acting. Well, it's uh, <laughs> you can so, see their faces though when they're wearing the helmets anyway. Yeah, no. So what's no. the problem? Or CGI. Uh, so anyway, do you helmets think they helmets, had, though. Do you think they even had helmets built for this film? I don't know. They well, well when, they it, the when the Ant Man's yeah. helmet gets fucked up, he oh, drops when it gets it. destroyed, yes, but uh. But I wonder... they actually have the helmets, like, built? They must have built them so that they could, like, have them, right, for no, scan are, reference there are or something? Few, there are a few scenes where you, it's extremely obvious that just the costumes are CGI. Yeah, it's it's, like, you, you could have fucking yeah. built that really easily. Why did you not? They only spent, like, 200 I, million. The best, the best <laughs> oh, guess that I have it. is that they haven't fully figured... Because a huge amount of what would probably inform the decisions they make in terms of costumes and stuff is merchandising. And they may well be, like, focus group testing all of this stuff, like, while the film is being made. 
and like always making little tweaks every now and then. And so at some point they probably just decided, well, it'll be easier if we just do it all in post. That's it's gotta be lame, it. Dude. It's incredibly lame. Um, this is not. You can't make movies like this. It feels like it bears <laughs> repeating. Avatar 2 was in post-production for, like, four years. And I'm pretty sure that it took them, like, two years to do, like, back-to-back -back shooting for both of those films. I don't know, man. Those films look real good. I don't think the writing was very good. But, nope. like, there's no denying that those films look... That, like, Avatar 2 looks incredible. Meanwhile, what are the results we get here in this film? Isn't it kind of hilarious? It has, like, a huge budget. That he apparently said, like, I want the nine hour cut to be fully complete for CG yeah. so I can toy with it. <laughs> hey, look, and he probably he, has to say that now. That was gonna be what I was gonna say. He probably has that kind of clout now that he can Avatar just demand two that. Two point... Avatar 2 is now the third highest grossing film of all time. Man. Awesome. Past my expectation, I didn't think it was gonna make that Did much he... money. Has he made a deal with Satan, do you think? Because something, something, <laughs> something's going on. Well, just, I will exchange all of your movie. writing talent for money. <laughs> all right. I don't know. I don't know. Satan yeah. doesn't sound like that. He probably sounds really uh, charismatic <laughs> um, and appealing. Again, again, to repeat myself, <laughs> I do find it immensely annoying for reasons that are kind of hard to substantiate, I think. I, the, the designs that were created for these characters, like in the comic books, like they're very intentionally designed to give each of these characters a certain look. And you can see that like with Ant-Man. He's got an interesting sort of retro-futuristic kind of... um. Aesthetic, yeah, like especially does, the, yeah. with the helmet, and uh, I'm pretty sure Ryan yeah, said it before. But I mean, the helmet, it kind of, it kind of almost in Vaguely some way, it kind of looks like an ad. Like. Yeah, a it's little got a little bit, antenna yeah. there, a little thing it's, for the mouth. Yeah, it was all intentionally designed that way, um, because of course, when you're making a comic book, you don't have to deal with the whole thing of like, yeah, but we need to see the actor's face, like for marketing and stuff, <laughs> and because that's what people need to see, because it's just like the character that exists in that world. But here, it's it's like at its worst in terms of just like constantly taking off the helmet, constantly taking it off, putting it back on, taking it off, putting it back on. Yeah. And like, it's so weird because in the first <clears throat> movie, they had it where he could take like the face part off, like you press a button, but he was still wearing the helmet. Now they've yep. abandoned that. And it's like, that's a healthy compromise yeah. if you want to show his face. But the, like, they don't even want to do that anymore. Too. No, all well, Iron Man, but yeah, all they just had their little, yeah, super duper nanotech helmet. I hate it. It annoys me. Yeah. Um. So we got a, another Vader line. It's really, really funny. When she says the whole, when she's now made it clear like three fucking times that the, the bad guys are going to be coming for you. But again, uh, obviously, Scott and Cassie have no clue what's even happening. And they've been held captive here. A decent amount of time, and now they're just like, "Can you give us a map?" That's all they've asked for. And then she gave them their life story about the fucking war. And then there's like a silence, and then we hear there's people arriving, enemy people. And this fucking the triad lady goes, "You led them straight to us." <laughs> <laughs> you said that so many times. <laughs> you kept us here. I don't know nothing. what to say. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, what do you mean we led them here? You had like you a dance party us. and gave us the goo. Like, what did yeah. you? Did, if you <laughs> yeah, like you... led them. You captured them. I'd, I'd actually love to see Rick and Morty as the main characters dealing with these situations. It would. <laughs> To explain how much this is just, like, this is all madness. What, what, you, you captured us. What did? What, how can you possibly blame? It it's it was it was actually distracting for me just to hear her say that. <laughs> Let us into you a come swamp. here to kill me. <laughs> Writers, what are you doing? Why do you do this to us? Why can't you just imagine yourself in the character's shoes that you're writing, just briefly? Why can't you do this? Well, the character is stupid. Oh. oh, they can't even write good, stupid characters. I feel. In a yeah. rare moment, by the way, I can't believe I'm doing this, but I have to. You, you guys will know why. We need to go to watch together. What? Oh, oh, oh okay. can you believe okay. it? I know. Oh, it's just like, wow. what? What do you mean, watch together? Uh, Wait, I cannot uh, believe this it. This is not a twenty-four-seven Modoc stream. I mean, yeah. that's <laughs> Bullshit! I hate okay. it. Okay. I don't agree with that. Oh, we're gonna be looking oh, yeah. at because we're we're at the point in the movie where a clip is. There's a couple of clips we could show, but this one I have to show because it's, oh, it's HD. Show the... <laughs> yeah. We're missing oh. missing one person. Oh. Hold on, let me jump in there. <laughs> when are we gonna do a review on the on Spring Caminandes Part One, Two, and Three and Big Buck Bunny? Um, just <laughs> gotta schedule question. it, man. Just gotta schedule. All right, it. Let's, uh... I gotcha. So, 
We're gonna we're gonna have to go crazy EFAP style naturally with this. Can't play it for longer than like three or four seconds, but context is of course they're attacked. Oh no, and everyone's it's all And they, look at how faceless they are. They're faceless. Yeah. That means we don't have to consider why they're doing any of this or who they, they are. They do. Or we do later find out any... that they have minds, because mind reading man is able to read That's one right. of the robo minds. So it doesn't they're count. Conscious, but don't think beings. about it. They're just it, 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 I like how it's all just in an attempt to make them almost seem like they're not alive at all, like that they're robots. But they're yeah. not. Yeah, alive. I really thought they were robots, and then there was Especially that. Especially how they die. Oh, they're not robots. Yeah. Okay, they're just guys. Um, and up to this point, by the way, Cassie has not used her uh, his suit. Oh, it's a, no. a big meme to reveal Cassie. it, of course. Oh uh, yeah, and, gotta, and by the way, gotta... this uh, they were running away, and then they randomly spot several of the people they've met along the way getting captured. And the way they do this kind of annoys me. Scott's looking around, and he's like, you know what, we should probably help. And, and then he's like, Cassie, you wait here. Oh, she's she's already gone and she's she's doing hero things. <laughs> she's quicker on the ball than me on that one. Just like, this this is the thing he's going to come to learn by the end of the film, you know, is to, to actually care about people more than he does. Because that's what yeah. he needed to learn. Yeah, that's the lesson he. That's how he needed to grow during this movie. That's what his character needed. Oh, you no. gotta, you got you, you time the pause so that we can see the. I have. It's, I've done it beautifully. All right, there we go. So uh, you may have heard of this, chat. You may have. Getting around these films, they get crunched and thrown and sped up into all kinds of horrors in terms of production, and some people just don't get the time they need to be able to animate slash really polish those shots. Yeah, Again, Avatar Two had. Years and years and years for them to get all of the little details right, but this film probably had a year, insane. maybe a year of post production, maybe less than that. And less, of course, for sure, you'll be sitting here thinking, like, well, what, what then? Like all the fake backgrounds, some bad CG, you know, explosions. You're like, well, this one made the rounds, and I can't believe they chose to release this because it's like, well, should we just show it? I guess we'll just show it yeah. first. Yeah, let's show it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so like a it looks like a placeholder from a like a demo for something you'd make it. Oh no. It's so floopy. Why is she if she's trying to cover distances, why is she small? Why would she go small? Because she's yeah. an idiot. But, but also, she has to run like floopy. thirty times the distance. <laughs> now. Look at how floopy the running is. It's so floopy. Her arms, she has the arms. But like, there, did um, it have to be? Could could they have just had her running and then trick her down? Well, I, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Exactly. Just get her in the suit, have her run, and then just yeah. madness. Make no, look good. we don't. Oh. Do so. <laughs> like, and even if you didn't want to do that, couldn't you just get like a real person in a mocap suit to like run instead of no. doing it like this? What we is that? <laughs> if I saw somebody running at me like that, I think it was like a ghost or some sort of a specter. <laughs> Oh no, it's it an otherworldly creature. It, I'm hallucinating. It's just, it it looks really bad. Yes. How <laughs> dare you? Which I guess, in a way, because every scene in this film I feel is like CGI to hell and back. Yeah. It's kind of crazy that this only happened kind of once. Uh, I mean, I said there, there are plenty really of bad. Yeah, there's a, a, a lot of wonky shots. So the, the shots where you're just are... looking at the character wearing a helmet, and it's like that helmet is obviously it's CGI. Not it's like, it yeah, yeah. didn't need but... to look like that, guys. Because the helmet, it's <laughs> difficult to track it exactly one to one, like totally. Well, even that, like the texturing it. on it and the lighting on it didn't quite look real. It's not even mm, that it was yeah. like, poorly tracked. And also, you know, look at how muddy this is. Like, what? Why would you compose your shot like this? It's so I can I can barely see. Like, you know what's really what? depressing is that the cinematographer on this movie is the same guy who did The Matrix. I, 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 it's just got to be that, like, they get the cinematographer, but, like, in terms of them being able to inject their own visual flair into it, it's like... Limited, yeah, how just non-existent. They... Right? Well, right. especially... Well, it's, yeah, it's like, how, how much time did they get to do prep for this? How much of it was already done in pre-visualization before they'd hired anybody to yeah. work on How much films? input at all did they have in the VFX part, which is most of the movie? And how many times did they change their mind on the shots that they were doing to the point that it's like, oh shit, we've only got like a few weeks to finish this up. Yeah. Also, uh, what, crap, alright. What, what? Okay, so, we, we just saw it. Why did she fling her anyway? Like the rebellion lady, did you just kind of go like, huh? So she can... I thought that she didn't, she didn't know enemy. what was happening and she just jumped off her hand. Well, it looks like her hand just goes up immediately. 
kind of. Yeah. yeah, she kind of. No, she flings her up. She like lifts her up. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess like, she she understood the cringy. situation faster than most people. <laughs> that's my girl. Well, and what's you, funny as well is creature. those rules, and I do think that Ant Man breaks this as much as the second and third. But just you're supposed to have the weight that you still. So when she lands on your hand, that'll hurt like fuck. This breaks well, I mean, her the arm. Thing is that they're already extremely small, so shouldn't they have like so much fucking weight that they like? Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. This, oh yeah, they, they should they basically know. basically formed a black hole. There she is. Why helmet. would you take it what? off? Why? What do you? Did you even press a button to do that, or does it just? No, it they, mind mind think they it. read your mind. They read does her hair? Okay. Does her hair get cut whenever the helmet comes no, up? No, no. See, look. If you do it fast enough, you don't have to think about just the physical. Like, oh, aspect. okay. And see, she hit him as small, see, like which in the first yeah. one will knock you the fuck out, but in this it doesn't. Yeah. God, it's, it's they been a changed the rules, even seen. though the rules were already fucking hard enough to pay attention that's to a, as it was. That's a long way to fall. I just it's rediscovered okay. how awful this actually looks. Oh, it's been a couple well, of look days at this. since I've been to like... cinema. Like, this looks so oh, shit. Oh, and they do a lot of the whole, like, hit when small pushes you into big. They, yeah. Yeah. Even though it's for it reasons. Doesn't. Oh, oh looks so bad. <laughs> so rough. Oh, Ew. I want to see that again. <laughs> uh, God I damn. don't want to see that again. Oh no, I have to see it again. Uh, like, come on! Bad. Looks, what happened? Ant Why can't you just have him good. come in? Just have the actor come and tackle another actor. No. Yeah. Man, no, but like, Ant, Ant Man, the first one looks pretty good. It does. Like, that, film, that film looks pretty good. It's something's gone wrong. It's very wrong. And Why off again. stop taking your helmets? Look, it's it's the worst in this movie. Look at that. <laughs> Looks like he's wearing headphones or something. Yeah, it does, yeah. yeah it's, it's, they're doing a fucking crossfade with it, basically. It also, what is this, like it, what yeah. is this dumbass dialogue? Ah, I have a suit. Yeah, oh, the dialogue I see fucking that. sucks. I know like, well, the whole film, but especially this scene. Also, oh, it's, yeah. they kind of presented like he didn't know she has a suit, even though we did that already. That she has a but suit. Her, the question is, why the fuck yeah. haven't you been using it up to this point, woman? Yeah, what is going that. on? Yeah, of course. Yeah, catch you from <laughs> of course. That. You okay? Yes. You have to be careful here, but we'll try and get through yeah. the whole thing eventually. But yeah, it's super hey, awkward. To if you keep an eye on the background, there are people doing executions, there's screams, there's explosions, yeah, there's fires, and they're all just <laughs> fucking arguing over like whether or not she did the jump yeah. tap properly. It's you very need fun. the jump tap thingy and yeah, they don't and get shot not, not even, like It's not even a serious like emotional argument that they're actually invested in. It's like jokey. It's funny. a meme. Yeah. It's a meme Marvel humor argument. <clears throat> right, one move. Jump tap. I know how to do it, Dad. Oh, do you? Yes. And like... Uh, Especially with the characters that they set up already, she should be like, Dad, we need to focus on like the, doing the stuff and helping the people. Yeah, there's uh, people dying everywhere. Yeah. She's so really? arrogant. Look like it from I, my end. I messed up on the timing. <laughs> Kill me. That rags okay. emote is perfect right now. Hmm. Which one? I have so many, but chat. I think I know which one you're talking about. All right, look at that! Yeah. The floop helmet's coming oh, back! it's coming in! Ew! <laughs> look at his floop face. <laughs> Nah. Oh, God. oh, look at that. Look at, oh, look at that. Nice. It, when you slow it down, it's so rushed. Yeah. I almost yeah, want to show... Get the helmet off again! Get it off! Yeah, yeah. like they can't the talk to face. each other if they have their helmets on. But Don't they have bullshit. microphones? Why do people and, like Master Chief? They no, they it's airtight in there. They can't even breathe when the helmet's on. <laughs> What's well, the damage? You know? <laughs> Because when Samus is fighting Ridley, everything should, like, every time it's just like, get that helmet off, like, so that you can just sort of, I guess, gawk at him with the yeah. helmet off you see what and I put did? it back you see what on. No. Also, this actress, by the way, uh, there was a different actress in Endgame, right? Yes, they and... changed their mind because oh, okay. she's got more of a profile. Who is this girl again? Uh, Catherine Newton. You know where she's from, or? Uh, I think she was in Detective Pikachu. Oh, oh nice. great. <laughs> well, um, I think I read it in a tweet, so I can't say I know it's 100% true, but as far as I'm aware, the actress who played her in Endgame found out she wouldn't be out. reprising the role in the form of a social media announcement about the cast, that she just wasn't oh, that's in. Always yeah, cool. that's, that's always cool. That's always nice. A nice. Release. Well, yeah, because I'm actually sad like, I got cast in a Marvel movie as a character who is like a superhero in the comics. That means I've potentially got like a few movies under my belt. Oh, no, no, you don't. Well, I mean, imagine, like, you know, talking to friends and family, like, I'm cast as Ant-Man's daughter, and they've aged her up now so that she's going to be, like, an important role, and 
you know, quite possibly the Ant Man when uh, when Paul Rudd's done with the role. It's like, wow, that sounds amazing. And then, like on TV, it's just like, and here she is. And you're like, oh, yeah. Um, no, I'm not. What's oh, that? oh. <laughs> damn. Okay. You like this small? I jumped into half. Everything's so fake. Oh, and man. I hate I hate that response because what he's trying to teach her, I mean, assuming a concept. Yeah, it's a pretty simple, basic move. Like you can use this move over and over. Yeah. It's really useful. You should try it. And she's like, I can't see what you're doing. You're too small. Oh, it's like he literally said, you go small, you jump, you go big, and then you punch him. It's not that complicated. So when you're jumping, yeah. go big. Yeah, and if the momentum the... of getting big, I guess, helps with the punch. I guess that's the idea. So many people in the comments for mm. this video as well talking about it, just like that rud though. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> run is the... It's uh, it seems like the main thing that betrays visual effects a lot of the time is the animation rather than like the actual like yeah. you know <clears throat> models or the textures. It's... Like it seems like we're pretty good at high fidelity, but like making something move in a way that looks real is a lot harder. Even it's, it's both one of the of reasons things why... are extremely weak in this film. Like, uh, yes, it's... yeah. The suits it's look of, like they're from like a PlayStation 4 game. Like it's one of those things you see in the cinema and you have to stop yourself from going like Ugh, like out loud. Why? <laughs> like, why? Ugh. Why bother? A lot of it is the uh a lot of it is the compositing. <laughs> the compositing and like the rotoscoping or whatever it is for like green screen, it's it's like off. You you just look very blurry, like you don't because it was something I was impressed by when I watched Avatar 2. It's like the humans kind of they they really look like they're in this place. Um, whereas in this film, everybody's a lot, is really blurry around the edges, like where the green screen would have been, where some poor guy had to, that or whatever it is <laughs> with the volume and like how well they actually leveraged it. I don't know, it seems like Mando was the one that actually used the technology well. Everybody else has been fucking it up. Oh, and the Batman. Yeah, it's, it's just a matter, it's the same as it always was. You just, you have to implement it properly. You can't just use you it. You have to understand the technology and use it, uh, effectively. Yeah. Um. And you yeah, have by to the take way, pride in your work. It feels. Mm. Oh my god, what does that mean? Uh, it, it feels pretty inconsistent to me that she's like hyper intelligent, cracked, in, enormous, amazing, uh, quantum technology, but she can't seem to grasp that when you're small and you jump and then you hit something, the momentum carries through. Mm. That that seems like the science angle I mean, of the thing. Move if you jump small, shouldn't the movement be way slower anyway? No, because you go super fast. You win. You go fast. Jump really fast, and then it's. Don't oh, Jay, try I thought you knew it. how quantum mechanics worked. Yeah, Jay, it's like you've never even been uh, to the quantum listen, realm. That Modoc oh, well, face loser. is real. Journals. That Modoc face is real. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Oh my God, it's full of stars. <laughs> oh shit! Next note oh, I've Modoc, got. Come next up. next note right. I've got is the arrival of Modoc. Oh my God! Hey, um, hey guys, we fans of Modoc in the comics. Are you guys happy? Are you pleased? Are you satisfied? Don't with say. What don't done? say anything. We know it's yes. We know. We know this is the greatest mm. Modoc that could ever have Modoc'd. Yeah, it's um, he's a fucking genius idea, genius character. I love seeing him on the silver screen. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I think he's gonna be having his own TV show and movie probably because he has his own TV show. <laughs> more, more. I think he them. does have a TV show. More yeah, sorry, them. Patton Oswalt. Every one of them, he's gonna get. He's going to be guest starring. He's probably going to be in Avenger, in Avengers, all of the Avengers. Uh, I hope he doesn't die. <sighs> so, where do we even begin with this? As you can see, we've been donning the um, the incredible, illustrious visage of Modok throughout this stream. Uh, he's been a meme. We've been sharing pictures of it. I couldn't fucking believe they went this direction. I want to highlight that when this was first released. There was people who had very bad brains, okay? They they had temporary brain farts <laughs> that said, Wow, I love it when they do comic accurate stuff. No. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> cool. His head is big, therefore comic accurate. No. That's like Spider Man suit is red, therefore accurate. It's like therefore no 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 accurate. no. Because no, no. you gotta you gotta show him a picture of Murdoch from the comics. Oh well, yeah, I guess I could do that. But I assume most people knew, because I knew, and I'm not even that familiar with the, uh, mm. you know, the the comics. But Modok is is hyper stylized, and to be honest with you, I think seen in in limited contexts for the comic, kind of creepy. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. And you kind of makes you wonder, like, oh, is his thing like, is he is he like a horrifying experiment gone wrong, and that he's he's, you know, it's fucked him up as a person as well. Um, 
This is the thing, I don't know Modok's story, but I assume it's not Darren. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, just, that's my assumption, <laughs> what I'm going with. Hola. This is what it was all leading up to. Um, grab, probably do. He uh, pictured him more as a movie Bob type character. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Super villain. So, got some, got some images here. This is this guy. Does that look like the guy who's our avatar right now? Me. I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, new. You see no, the. Not really. It's like a fucked up face. Super. Yeah. Just, just like distorted and, uh. Monstrous, basically, yeah. Yeah, and and the idea that you just put a guy's fucking face here. Uh, yeah. Did they do He's it because like, they wanted like, the actor's face? Uh, I guess. I guess. Is it even the uh, actor's face? Maybe they wanted face? it just to be funny. Maybe they just wanted it to be funny. Um, I think it probably is the actor's face, but fucked with. You know? It's been yeah, fucked with so much fucked. it doesn't even look like him anymore. <laughs> I could totally believe yeah. they got a different actor to play him. No, it's just, well, yeah, but it is the same guy. And so it's like, what, what happened? <laughs> the guy, <laughs> who, that Fuck actor has a pretty man. long face, and so when you smush it up, right, <laughs> it just wide, looks yeah. so funny. <laughs> oh, uh, why? And like, I just <laughs> never thought this would happen. Why would you do this? Uh, Here we are. And now I, everything's possible. I know that when the first images were shared, I think I was on Real BBC, and uh, everyone in chat said it's a troll. It's not actually real. Like you guys, you're making a mistake. <laughs> this, is, this is obviously made by someone to be funny. Like it's not actually real. Obviously, and... no one would ever do this. And then <laughs> someone said it's from the trailer, and I checked, and I was like, "Holy fuck! It is from the trailer. It's a split second of the trailer. You can see him." Really? Yeah, he's in the corner. Yeah. Um, oh shit! Oh. I didn't see that. And yeah, when, when they're with Kang walking off to like the edge. Oh, no. So yeah, this it, yes. they Thanks gave us there. they gave us <laughs> this and uh, <laughs> it feels wrong. Oh. It feels wrong in so many ways. <laughs> I don't even know what you would do if I was. I think what I would probably do is I would have the helmet always be like, like mate, like do you know the uh, Fringy? Do you know in Halo Reach the haunted helmet? Which is the pilot uh, helmet, but it has like the skull inside of it. Yeah, sort of. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I they know probably one. should have had like where the front is like a visor, and inside of the visor there's like a face, and it doesn't have to be real sized. It's like a, a digital representation of a face, and that could be big, because that seems like it, and it could be stylized too. Like it could be like clearly like a digital face, or or it could be like a, a single like mono colored, like it's lit, and it would be way better than this. This the is the worst surprised. thing you could do. Is that they had a lot of options that could have been really cool and creative, and they for they they just they decided not to use any of those opportunities. Does it look like a desktop? Does it look like a desktop background that 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 you got? It's like oh, a cool desktop background, and it's like ah, oh, damn, wrong resolution. I guess gonna use it anyway. And it's just stretched out. If it was really well written and like. He was clearly supposed to look goofy, um, and that's just the decision they made. I would be very happy with it. I'd be like, "That's fine. She'll make him goofy." Uh, well, I, I guess know. that's Peyton but I don't any... like that was the point. He is goofy. Look at us. Well, yeah, everything it's, about it's, him is undercut funny, again and again. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Even if he was super was well written and everything, the, if he looked like this, there would be an element that's like, ah. Oh. Man. Well, I mean, the thing is that if it, if he is actually goofy in universe, there's almost like a tragic element to it. Um, mm -hmm. That like the other characters, that like, he knows that he doesn't look intimidating. Um, you can do stuff with that. Misfits did stuff with that all the time. Um, well, where a character guess... would be like unglamorous, but they'd still have like, they'd have to deal with that fact that they had a character who fucking went mad because no one took him seriously because his superpowers involved milk. Um, and yeah. that episode's kind of bad, but it's, it's still good. I guess uh, something that seems bizarre that they didn't really, like, Scott really should hate this guy. Because um, the reason why all of this happened in the first place that he turned into Modoc was because Scott killed him, or tried to kill him, because he was trying to kill Cassie. But, like, it's almost like that element of the history is, like, ignored of, like, oh, yeah, Darren, like, went insane and tried to kill your daughter. Like, yeah. Wow. Feels like there's something worth doing there, but it's like they forgot that element of his history completely. Oh, and then, of course, him, where it's like, dude, like, do you know how fucking painful that was? 
like getting squished and you know grown and everything and then getting shrunk down to the quantum realm like these guys should probably have like they should really hate each other um but they they don't it's it's all a joke it's all a meme yeah so yeah uh the they really went the direction of wanting to they wanted to make you know from the beginning that we're laughing at this guy throughout okay yeah like he arrives he's killed a whole bunch of people he is the weapon for kang that gets shit done he arrives and then he's like i am modok and he starts explaining his backstory and or introducing himself and then like Ant-Man goes darren and like the music like cuts out or yeah. whatever does a sort of just like <laughs> darren what's the last darren. joke that we oh yeah and by the way we have another joke at the expense of the name of the character because we can leverage them for marketing and to make money but we'll still make fun of the work of other people whose work we've taken and fucked up. I'm so tired of that joke now. Yeah, because yeah, they did the, the, to jump ahead because it's like mechanized organism designed only for killing, and and then and then Scott's like, oh well, that'd be like Modofk. It's like uh -huh. shut up, like shut up. <laughs> you didn't so, make this. You took it. Yeah. Someone else made it. You and took then this you and ruined it. You want to make money from the merchandise? I don't even know what you it was originally, but I know you ruined it. <laughs> well, they, they have, That's um, a pretty they have safe fucking, bet. They're fucking like they did this joke so many times. I, I, yeah, I saw a compilation of it. I can't. The one I remember is uh, fucking uh, Otto Octavius yeah. in yeah. No Way Home. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like guys. Yes, comic book characters have a lot of silly names. Can we do uh -huh, goofy please? names while we make money off of them. That's yeah. what annoys me. It's like in She Hulk. Oh yeah, your costume is like red and yellow. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. It's like. You're making money off of it. You're selling toys with it. And you didn't make it. That's someone else's work. I just, I don't know. I don't bugs even me. understand. Bugs me. What's wrong with yellow and red? <laughs> oh, well, I, yeah, I find it really annoying considering that I think that it's like, I certainly prefer the full red suit. But like, it's kind of a, it's a cool, it's kind of a cool combo. And maybe I like it a lot because of like the earlier stories associated with the like Daredevil yellow. So, question: Why did Kang have to turn him into this to save him? Why uh, big head? He didn't How turn him into it. He, he was yeah. this. Yeah. He, 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 what? He, what is the? Wait, wait, what is the nature of his out. like anatomy? Like he's so got, he got a massive brain. <laughs> I said the same thing about I said. Imagine the skeleton inside of him <laughs> and a little so dinky heart. So he was shrunk down awkwardly, and that's why he's big head. Well, so yeah. in Ant Man, when uh, when he, he like fights Yellow Jacket. He was meant to be dead. They changed their mind. It, his suit, like, grows and shrinks in different places all at once, and it's, like, crushing him and expanding him. And this is apparently the outcome. It's basically <laughs> his entire yeah. body got shrunk, but his head was big. Maybe because his... Was his head in the helmet at the time? Or was his yes. helmet broken, so it didn't quite... Well, so like, where his helmet the whole was suit was broken. He, I don't... I don't know but why the fuck he, I'm even trying to rationalize this. Don't, don't me. try. Just forget it's, it. it's, yeah. Forget it's I said dumb. anything. Look at the funny head man. Yeah, pretty much. I, like like I said gone. earlier, the, those Modoc fans are eating good tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't Modoc originally in a Captain America uh, character? I think that's what I read. So he worked oh, with, I, I, I thought he worked with AIM. Not Aaron, I, yes, AIM is, uh, which is not an organization that they have here because okay. AIM is not the Inhumans, right? Oh, I, I thought he was up? like an X-Man. <laughs> no. An <laughs> X-Man, no. Uh, but he's, he's also not man, Darren. But... He's not Darren Cross, that's for sure. No, no. he's like a different character. Yeah, <clears throat> totally different person. Again, everyone's so, so um, happy about it, I'm sure. Six out of ten, I guess we're thinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere <laughs> oh, yeah, apparently um, AIM was in Iron Man 3. What happened? Oh, Why haven't they done anything with AIM then? Wait, AIM was, was in Iron AIM... Man 3. Or, or was AIM... Oh, no, AIM was uh, the, the, the flute people with the extremists. That was that was. They them, were right? AIM? Damn. What a waste! <laughs> what a waste! Because I remember uh, you had Hammer Industries, right, with um, yeah, Iron that's Man right. 2. Fucking hell. It's, it's so, I, didn't I? Oh, we talked so, about this. So that means that he's, uh, he's actually more of an Iron Man villain then. Oh, well, damn. Whoops. It's too late mm -hmm. for that, I guess. Well, put him in Iron Heart. That'd be great. Um, yeah, well, uh, it's kind of crazy how much they've blasted through so much of the potential of like comic book characters. Is insane. Uh, well, yeah, uh, yeah, I know, right? All those stories. But, I mean, we got their sword now, right? Which is meant to be, but they've always existed. We just never heard about them or anything. Yeah, and then <laughs> they like villainize them. I love it when that happens. Instantly. I love it when that happens. Yeah. Yeah.
That's great. Um, yeah, and and so you think to yourself like, oh, guy from M M One, wow, and then he's here, and and then he's like, called him Darren, and he goes, Darren is dead. He there is the only Modok. Modok. He does his 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 scream that he did in the first movie. Well, and he where's the where's the angry face? There it is. This is when he's like Modok. That's. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta filter through all those faces. A lot of Modoc here. And I swear to God, it's hard to explain, but when you're just watching him, you just watch, you just, you're just like, I'm here. This is it. This is life. <laughs> they made this. Just, they spent money made... on this. Lots of money. I'm here, sitting here on the big screen, in front of the big screen, I mean. And it's like, oh, big man. head on the big screen. Um, uh, it, has, it has a big head on the big screen. And uh, yeah. It's I'm... hard sometimes to know fiction <laughs> from reality. Oh. And you're just like, I wish I could just go back on my bicycle and just ride Is back this home. real life? No. <laughs> Is hopefully this not. just fantasy? What is reality? Oh, what is glass reality? onion reference. No, Yo, reality. is that a glass onion reference? It that movie's is. so clever. So good. Is this movie better or worse than Glass Onion? Well, much like Glass Onion, this movie ends with him saying, nothing makes sense, so shut up. Uh, All right, <laughs> then. I guess they're exactly the same. <laughs> Brian Johnson ghost wrote this movie, maybe. Um, so anyway, I'd hate it more if he did. He captures them. The ant people, he just captures them. They're captured now. Yeah. You might wonder why. I have no answers. They because can go small, they can go big. With alarms. But, yeah. They're no just tired. They just, need a, they just need a nap. Because later on in the film, when Modok battles an ant person, they just beat him in a fight. Yeah, they kick his ass. Oh. Yeah. Maybe there's like, when these rebellion people are kind of dicks, let's go with them for a while, maybe they're better. It's just so um, annoying, this film has a lot of people escape capture and get captured for just no reason at all. It just, it just yeah. That's what has to happen for the story now, so shut up. Okay. So they're captured. Sad face. What are you gonna do? Yeah, that's real, uh, it's a real shame. I hope our, I hope our heroes make it out okay. Cut Hope over that to things the, uh, are all right. Good yeah. old B Hope plot. Very okay. And it's like, oh, oh boy, uh, you know, lot. mother, <laughs> you're, you're, uh, you know, what, what's going on? We still got to save the, the people. And then she's like, you know, just explain it a minute. We, we will. And then they have this like shot of Hope where she goes, you're still hiding things from us. Like she's figuring it out as opposed to the <laughs> fact that she told you this several times. <laughs> that she's going to explain stuff to you later, not now. Yeah. It's so cringy. Like it's really hard not to find hope to just be a really annoying character because she's got so few lines and all of them are stupid. Like, yep. I think you're you're doing you're doing naughty things. It's like yeah, <laughs> they have been the whole time. I don't know. I just don't know yeah. if you've been listening at all. Oh, Janet, really. stop it. Um, but then uh, I think we go back to yeah, just another conversation with Modok and them, and and he arrives in his suit and he's got the big mask on. And then it just flips up, and he's like, blah, blah, and you're like, oh, why? What are you doing? Why are you showing us that? He has this cool mask. Just let it down. Um, and he says down. his story is like, you know, he got he got crushed by uh, by the thing, and, and then Kang saved him. And I think it only makes sense for Kang to save him if he knew he specialized in uh, quantum shit. Yeah, why would why he else care would. about some weird, floompy creature that just dropped onto the floor? Why would you like? Good oh, question, I got to save this guy. Yes. Good question. He took him to his surgical reconstruction center and everything. <laughs> I know what you're referencing. They named after Palpatine. I can turn Palpatine. you into a Modok. Yep, they did. Um, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> and then, uh, as he's explaining more, and he does the Modok joke, then Ant Man goes, "I just noticed you have baby legs," and he's like, "No, I don't." Those are baby legs. Like, oh man. <laughs> Supposed to be the bag. Yeah, you got captured by the way and didn't fight back, so you better shut the fuck up. <laughs> he beat you with those baby likes, you fool. <laughs> he just kicked him a bunch. I can imagine whenever he needs to take off running, he's like the uh, the the Flintstones in one of their cars, <laughs> <laughs> and then they take off. So uh, he says, "I found your signal, Cassie. Couldn't have done it without you." And again, how it just you, makes me think like, like wait, 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 wait. How did so you that, know it was hers? That means That's a good point. that in the seconds that that signal was being broadcast, yeah, it meant that Modok had a device that was ready to capture that signal from essentially a different universe. Yep. And 
use it so that he could turn it into like a black hole yep. that would suck everything in. And he knew that yep. the people yep. who would make that signal would be people that he would need to bring mm -hmm. down. Yep. But he yep. brought them in at like a random spot. Yeah. He yeah, didn't sure. bring them down that's anywhere right. like useful. Mm -hmm. He'd have to go and hunt them down someplace. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And he was just ready to have all this happen. Yeah, of course. Yeah, sure. What's the oh. problem? Yeah. Well, yeah, all right. I guess no, no problem. I just want to make okay. sure that we're yeah, on no, the no. same page. That makes total sense to <laughs> well, me that this is I just think it's just neat. You have such a strong understanding of it because they so well explained it in the film. Like you, you Yeah, yeah none of this was none of this was me trying to connect dots or anything like that. I was just uh I was I was just I was just doing my best. Yeah. Good job. I'm proud just of you. Trying really hard to understand what the fuck was going on. Nothing about this movie made sense. There's maybe was there one line of dialogue where we were like yeah, well, the part <laughs> there was where, that bit where, where they're, they're all falling in and they do make the character. Decisions. That's not a line that of dialogue, weird. Jay. No, well, it they, does they make say, sense. They say they say twice. It doesn't make any sense. So, oh, that made true. sense. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Not so bad. It's not the worst. Wait, apparent. <sighs> apparently, there was. Apparently, there was a Trump Modoc. <laughs> <laughs> I would look very funny. That would look funny. I would. Oh, it yeah, had his God. voice and everything. That would be amazing. <laughs> I would unironically watch the the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, it's yes. just Modoc. When you grow, and then <laughs> he's you never read a I've red hat that says Modoc on it. People are really, you know, taken off with the um with, with all the memes with like Biden and Trump and everything, all the AI stuff, and Dagoth mm. Ur is popping up for whatever reason. So they they need to do that. They need to just make a Trump. Well, Jordan Modoc. Peterson, Red Skull, right? Got to get that in there as well. <laughs> Oh, man. Mm. I would love to see Jordan Peterson Red Skull. Do it, cowards. Do it. Do it. You... Oh, God, I'm back to that image. I'm posting this in the Discord, and I'm thinking, like, the bottom left one? Like, that's... Like, I'd believe that. Look at these the creatures. They're so much more, like... God, the... You... So intimidating. <laughs> It's like it's almost like a, a hideous experiment that's gone completely wrong. A, a mechanized oh biological thing instead of just guy's head stretched out from left to right. We... Also, an actual bald bald head. <laughs> that's that's uh, God, I don't know, man. They could it's have had like a like a see through. What what is it where you have like you could see the brain up top and it has like a cage oh, like or translucent? A, a glass dome around the top and his, and his brain like emanates <laughs> waves or something. You can't just change from the cool ones back to normal. <laughs> but I'm looking at it. Uh, oh yeah, we're yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So um yeah, we get we get the backstory. The big old backstory. And things are about to get real fucking bad. Uh I know. I know. Uh -oh. Change, a crazy change. Oh. So it turns out Kang and Janet. They're both randomly sent into the into the nanoverse, Fleema, and they both bumped into each other. Just fucking wonderful. We knew kind of that already. So going from there, we find out Kang was banished to the quantum realm um, okay. because it's the only place that can hold him because it is beyond time and space. Okay. And I can't yeah. help but think that my immediate question would be, why didn't they just shoot him with a gun? <laughs> so... I have no ability to infer anything here other than I guess they didn't want to kill him. They wanted to I banish guess? him but not kill him. It's like, okay. Even knowing what kind of power he was capable of doing and everything, they're just like, nah, we, we, we're not going <laughs> to yeah. kill you. We're going to banish you to a, a whole realm. You have a whole realm to play in. Isn't that yeah. fun? Well, you well, see, Rags, I, I, that I, doesn't I, matter. I, most, people, most people go their entire lives in only one single realm, so we're just going to... We're going to do that to you. We're going to put you in a whole realm... Yeah, but, take that, idiot. And not only will we him. send you there, we're, just gonna we're not going to send you in there with nothing. Really, really small. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to send you into this other realm with your special fancy space chair that can control time yeah. and space. But we'll take the batteries out. Oh, yeah, okay, that's break good. It. We don't take right. it out, we just break it. So you have the opportunity to maybe fix it. Yeah, we wouldn't even just like push you through a portal or put you in a little box and mail you there. Man. No, we we. <laughs> also, by the way, <laughs> considering what he built, I feel like he could have fixed it at some point by himself. That's it's like banishing point, Hitler to another planet, but also letting him have like Germany too. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hey. 
weird. If you were the Kangs and you're like, this guy's getting out of control, he's killing timelines, we gotta do something about it. But then some other yeah. Kang's like, yep, but we can't kill him. It's like, okay, so first of all, take his suit off him. Done. Now what what power does he have? He's just a guy. Oh. Oh, oh we need to we need to make more stuff out of that suit. Yes, Kang, but Kang, simultaneously, can we just put Kang, him in like a cage? Like, yeah. Yeah, we could. No. No, he'll break free of the cage. We must put him in a place there is no time and space to store why him. Why don't we just why don't we yeah. just kill him? It's like no, there no, is time no, and space. Can't do that. Though, can't do that. That would be inhumane. And so therefore it's okay to send him to the quantum realm where he very likely would have been fucking eaten by the creatures that he encountered when he landed there, if yep. not for the fact that he happened to grab uh Michelle Pfeiffer's gun. So what the <laughs> hell? And then yeah, like it's funny, you get all of that out of the way, and you're like, how did they repair his stupid-ass engine? What resources are they using? Well, see, they, they have, like, this little stick device, and then they suck some energy out of the the, the, the glowy stuff. I and mean, that didn't work. What? And then they did some sign stuff. What? And then, they, and then they poured it on the thing, and that didn't work. And then they talk, and then it took a long time, and then it worked. Can't believe they banished him with the potential to destroy everything. <laughs> they banished him all. of all the chairs in the universe to not send with him. They chose the chair that could have him travel through time and space. And Why did you pick that suit. chair? You should have chosen a different chair. Yeah, that chair's really good. They should have gone for like a normal yeah. chair. Maybe they were just trying to send him with a chair and they forgot, like, they just, that was the chair they picked by mistake. They're like, oh, that's one of the time like travel chairs. No, 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 no. Oh, well, we already also, decided we drew straws. We picked randomly. It's also the one with the suit that you can only use. Uh, put on when the core is in, but you can still use it when it's not in anymore. Oh, dang, it's I just, guess our it's in the suit glove disappears box. at it's that point? It's in the multiversal glove box. That's, that's my suit. Man, we should've just got like one of those wooden benches from outside Jerry's house. He's got that nice rustic cabin up in the <laughs> mountain. Ah, oh, man. Well, really I dumb. I hope nothing bad comes of this. Yeah, and yeah, so it's like, okay, well anyway, well help me fix my Flema. And it's like, alright, we'll do it. Let's go. Um... And they, as, as Mel just said, they fail a couple times, and then they have a little chat about how time is a cage, and it does everything it can to break you, but it's not until you break from it that you see how small it always was. Yeah. I don't really know what that's supposed to assist overall, I guess, just his character. I, I, I realized I could do time stuff, and now my own time is I just mean small. that there's nothing for us to draw about anything yeah, no, from other nothing. characters <laughs> with that, right? It's just him. He sees time as a bitch. It's... It's... Uh, it's... I don't get it. I just don't understand what he's mean. What he means. What do you mean, Kang? What do you mean that time does like a thing and it makes you think things? Like, what do you mean? I don't know what that means. He wants to control time again. Once you okay. go time, you don't go back. Okay. Can't you go? <laughs> can't you go back to time through time before they exiled you and just been like, no. That's don't probably do what that. he's gonna do. He's gonna fuck it. Well, you know what? We'll get. You there. could have just so, waited here you know, and fuck. gone back in time and then like said hello to your old self. That's being pushed here, and then you have like a buddy that understands you, and you could like. Well, it gets weird because. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. Now it gets weird. I'm talking oh, relatively, oh. right? So whatever we just had, that was the normal <laughs> relatively. stuff. Relatively, that was pretty pretty easy to digest. That was just um, normal, stupid. Janet says it was fine. It was nice to finally have someone to talk to. And it was like, wait, you just told us that she was keeping secret that she spoke to like a, a whole civilization. What? And then I I had the thought. I was like, wait. Is she in the subatomica or whatever the hell she said, and that there's no one to talk to there? But then she oh, ends no. up in the quantum realm where there is people to talk to, I guess. Yeah, but then the quest would be... No, wait, he hang on, hang on, hang on. It can't be. I'm hanging. Oh, but it, it can't be because the core explodes there, and it's in the place where they are. True. The co the core explodes in the quantum world. Also, yeah, she had right weapons before hut, he basically. even showed Is that up. true? Because they use a portal to get to that. She did have a gun and like a house, yeah. But maybe well, you could make houses in Subatomica. Well, they 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 have their 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 house thing, the house thingy. They, oh God! Okay, the, everyone, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to stick with me for this. We're gonna we're gonna okay. do some because, geography in our heads, all right? So all right, because, all right. because also they get there with the ship. So, Hank so and the other down, ones. Calm down. We're no, gonna do geography, okay? <laughs> so okay, right. we we'll start brain. with place. <laughs> we'll just we won't have a name for it. It's gonna be the place where she detonated the thing. Cool. And then we have the quantum realm, and then he teleports with the portal to get Ant-Man from his prison cell to that place, and then he portals out of it back to his citadel. It's like, okay, but what about everyone else, as you just mentioned? They have a ship, but then there's also the army of ants. Huh. 
So, either well, this place has to be really far away from the quantum realm for what she said to make any sense, but not so far away that it takes forever. Because remember when he's like, "Sorry, I'm late with the ants." It's like, is that the implication that they were super duper far away, like actual geography, like a bazillion miles away, like to the point yeah, where like she... uh, like Newtonian distance or whatever, like geography. Yeah. However, that's even like explained because like if... feet and inches. If that explosion happened at the Subatomica, the place that Hank couldn't see past, then it can't be that the realm is real close to that, and in which case, how the hell did you, like, as Ant-Man, walk the rest of the way or whatever? I don't know. Like, the know. it's getting so hard to even yeah. fucking keep everything I'm in hurt. mind. Hurts. We'll just move on. <laughs> Yeah, it's better. Yeah, I think it's better for a sanity. Yeah. Oh, where, so later on, when he goes to get the core thingy with the shrinker matic, yeah. where is that? Is that the? That's not the void. No, that's, that's the subatomica, just, maybe. Maybe. But, but if it was so, but he went down to subatomica. Uh, so uh, subatomica and down. void would be above. Right? They teleport above, above it, and then he jumped down. Okay. Well, they <laughs> sure. It. Yeah, it makes sure, sense. Why yeah. think about it? Uh, sure. Yeah, I could have sworn that earlier. They said that. Hank couldn't see the quantum mania realm because the void in Subatomica blocked it. So I guess they're above it. Well, speaking of uh, making sense, uh, Chad, oh, good, some of you here who haven't seen this film, and so this will be funny. Oh, now, no. she's helping him build his ship, even though we, the audience, have, if you've seen Loki, are like, oof, I don't trust this guy. Pretty sure he's a bad guy, this Kang. Yeah. But unfortunately, yep. Janet doesn't know that. She's a good man, and, and she doesn't know. Oh, no. No, oh, Janet, no, don't woman. repair his ship, Janet. It'll be bad. Don't so, like, it. how is it going to be given away? Now, you might be thinking, much like oh, the yeah. memory store from MOM, you'd be like, oh, is it going to be dialogue? <laughs> is it going to be that she says, like, I can't wait to get back to my daughter, and then he says, I can't wait to, you know, and, and like, he looks angry, maybe, and he's like, what's, what, what, and then he's like, look, someone, someone destroyed my life, and I just, you know, you know, and every once in a while they have some conversations that just start to chip away that there may be something a little unhinged that Closed. he wants to do. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually he figures gets, it out. Yeah, However, the yeah. writers came up with something way more cleverer. Yeah, oh, wow. way okay. more cleverer. Wow, good for them. So she's repaired the ship. It's all working, and it charges up, and it's it's neural linked. That means that yeah. if she touches the ship, she'll experience all of his memories and find out he's evil. Memory store! <laughs> 2.0! It's the exact same fucking thing again. Yep. It's so it, late. It, and, and it great. She's like, oh wait, you're evil! <laughs> you're horrible! Oh. Um, yeah, and the, the fu another funny part is Kang realizes that, and it's like, oh yeah, right, that was a thing. Oh well, I'm just gonna let her see it, I guess. They almost major have... design flaw. Yeah, yeah well, me. first of all, who builds a ship that lets anybody who touches it access all of your private memories? That seems pretty stupid. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting ship they sent him with. Yes, and then secondly, if he, he would have known that because it's his ship, why didn't he tell her, like, don't touch the ship when it's powering up because it could kill you? Yeah, just, here, uh, you, you I, I got this. It might be unstable, step back a bit or something. Yeah, it would have been perfectly gotcha. reasonable. No, no maybe, problemo. Maybe he didn't know. It's a storage of memories. You might even say a memory store. <laughs> a memory yeah. storage. Uh, yeah, and and then of course uh, there, there's a scene that I thought for a moment it might be good. I was I was like, wait, because she's doing a freaked out face, and he seems to understand mechanically what just happened. Yeah. And so and he's kind of already like resigned. He's like, uh, you know, um, it's, 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 this is this is a reality that you've just gone through, and it's like it's, it's time to be honest, I guess, or at least try and contextualize it. Do something, and, and and I think he just says like, "Let me take you home." And yeah, he then, doesn't. Oh. Like for a moment, I was like, "Oh, is he like skipping the part where we have to do all of the bullshit, like not lying or anything?" He's just like the important things you need to get home. But um, before we carry on with that, I will say, it annoys me that he didn't try to cover his tracks at all or explain what she just yeah. went through as anything other than what she thinks it is. For example. Uh, you're just seeing a collection of visions of my uh, my twin brother, my other selves, my past lives, or or something yeah, that hasn't even realities. happened yet. Yeah, so yeah it uses the multiverse. It's not me. It uses the power of the multiverse and infinite blah 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 probability and other Douglas Adams reference. So that's it what you saw. You didn't see me. Like, 
Or what if you said evil like, hallucinations? He's the one that did this to me. The one you just saw in that series. Yeah, of, but, that. Because she says like I delved into his mind. It's like you couldn't know that. That's just something yeah. that like you're you're seeing a bunch of crazy shit. You've got all and and he can contextualize it any time he wants. It's like you just you just interfaced with like the neural link of a multiversal spacecraft thing. It's like. I can tell you anything about that. And he's so calm, and they've been working on this forever. He could just be like, do you really think, like, a series of random visuals you just saw has anything to do with, like, anything groundable? Like, that was just, the, the ship's starting up. That was just a bunch of garbled nonsense you just saw. And by the way, yeah. she doesn't see the Counselor Kangs at all. She doesn't see any other Kangs. How is that possible? Mm. Seems odd. Seems like it would be on his mind, the Kangs who banished him here. Yeah. I think. Seems and, like uh, and, and I mean, again, it probably bears repeating. Better. Why does the ship work like this? <laughs> That's really weird how way it for is. the ship to work. Um, but why couldn't he just say, "Yeah, I'm I'm killing people. I'm destroying timelines." Do you know why? And then she could be like, "Because yeah, you're a monster." A and he'd be like, "If I didn't, every timeline dies." Yes. I don't take any joy in this. I don't want to do yeah, it. You think I, I feel want to terrible do this every shit? time. Horrible, yeah. I need fucking sleeping pills. But if I don't, there's gonna be yeah. And yeah. you know what? Who describing this bullshit story to Hag and uh, and Hope? If she said, "You see, his ship was neural linked," I'd be like, "What the neural fuck what? does that mean to you, <laughs> Janet? Like, when when did you deal with spaceships that were neural linked? When is that? How do you have any concept of any of that? Why do you think we do? What does that mean, neural linked? Like, it, it's drawing all of what? It's and like it's like their helmets with the nanotech. It's neural linked. Whenever they want them to come up, they come up. Whenever they want them to go away, they go away. She, no buttons if you she went missing. One of their helmets, you would learn everything about their life instantly. She went missing in the eighties. Mm. The eight, yeah, people in the eighties, they were really forward thinking. Uh -huh. She saw Tron. <laughs> and then you you start to realize the huge problem coming up. She no, she now wants to stop him because he's going to destroy everything. That, that's what she's decided his goal is. It's like. Janet, why why didn't you tell everybody there's a crazy yeah, clown? Yeah, there's a crazy this multiversal punk disastrous for Janet. He's gonna destroy the What's entire that? multiverse if he gets what he wants, yeah. and he's down there. As you far didn't... as you're aware, he is a threat worse than Thanos, and you didn't yep. tell anybody. You didn't tell Scott, who has connections to the Avengers. You didn't tell Hank. Yes. You didn't tell you anybody because you didn't enjoy your time down there. Fair mm. enough. But, like, this, the fact that you were willing, because what she does after this is basically strands herself in the, um, in, uh, in the quantum in the realm to prevent him from yeah. leaving. The fact that she was willing to do that, to potentially never see her family again to stop him, but unwilling to tell them about him, yeah. seems pretty incongruent. Isn't that confusing? Yes. yes. It's like, what kind of a stupid. person are you? <laughs> You're willing to, like, walk the walk, but not talk the talk? I don't get it. What's weird? You're weird. And it's, it, well, it, it, it's, it's incongruent because uh, it's a danger to her whole family, and that's, that's her yeah. motivation to protect them. It's like, you have to tell them because it's just a matter of time before he'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. Give give the people a chance to, I don't know, build a contingency or something. They don't need to... They need to there's like somebody who can do with it. Maybe she tells them, there's like, yeah, there's nothing down there, but there's like this crazy conqueror that I met, and that's why I stayed down there. Uh, <clears throat> there is a literal crazy clown man with a like a hundred yeah. years better technology than any of us on Earth, and he wants to kill all of us. Just FYI, Tony Stark. Yeah, maybe you want to... Maybe you want to check that out at some point, or build some contingencies or something. Or maybe don't fuck around with the quantum verse, it's a bit too dangerous. And then she maybe, she don't, doesn't tell them that there's like people down there, and then she keeps that a secret, and that's why they say, it's like, okay, let's just keep it there, let's keep it there, we build some contingency. And then in some other Marvel movie, like someone fucks around with quantum verse and finds out there is people down there, and then someone goes to Jen and is like, yo, what the fuck, there's people down there, we have to help now. So they kind of have to open the portal themselves down there to deal that with it. That would them. certainly be better, yeah. Yeah, so they can do like their Marvel hero stuff. The but more, this way? Mm, the more mm -hmm. you think about it, the more it cascades. Because if there's public work being done right. with PIM particles and more science and more people studying it, that means that there's just people all around the world that could open the right. portal up for Kang. Someone's going to oh my God, do it eventually. Right. Especially right. at the right, we have It would make her panic. Part. Janet would be like, you cannot under any circumstances make pin particles available to people and then they'd be like why and she's like all right i guess i gotta tell you about this thing yeah. i really don't want to talk about for no reason at all <laughs> um it's awful it's really really bad
but like as if it wasn't already just terrible. Um, he's he's like, let me take you home, and then she says, and then what? What are you gonna do? And he says, he like looks for a while, he just goes, win. And he activates like everything, and you just sit there like, what are you doing? Why would you say that? That's like the worst thing you could say. Why, why, why don't you say, uh, well, I'm just gonna go home. I'm gonna find my family. I'm gonna stop them from killing, blah, blah, blah. Make up some stuff yeah. if you need to. Um, and then she says, how many worlds will die? And he goes, not yours. Why not? Wh wh why not mine, actually? Well, first of all, uh, like, I don't understand which, is she lucky enough to be in the timeline he wants to save? I guess so. But secondly, um, why would you say that? Why would you just say, I'm not going to destroy timelines? We're going to try to stop yeah. what I, like, make something up, my dude. Kang is a horrible communicator and talker. Yes. Wow, so this is... He has multiple instances in this movie where he can explain what the fuck is going on with him and the multiverse things, and he never does. He's always like, says some cryptic well, bullshit would, that doesn't help How him would at he all. facilitate drama, though, Metal, if he didn't say cryptic bullshit? Well, you can have nice conversations, for example. It's like, hey, you're, you're doing all these... Yeah, real dialogue. It's like, wait, okay, so you need to keep this balance, but you have to kill trillions of people and trillions, trillions, whatever you, number you want to take. See, the but thing is, is this like is the, the... This moral discussion you can have between the characters, and it's like, yeah, there's a lot of can, can do, but no, we just got to be like... Ugh. What we have here in this scene is the beginnings of the complete and utter waste of Kang the Conqueror yes. as a villain in this film. Um, mm -hmm. Not only is he, um, well, not only is he not very threatening in terms of like what we see later in the film as like a villain, but he's uh, he's not very intelligent. No. Um, which is, you'd think that that is, that the whole thing with him being the kind of person who could essentially galvanize like an entire army, forge it from like whatever circumstance he's in to enact his will would be very persuasive. Like very good at manipulating people, yeah. um, both individually and in large swaths. But no, he, he gives up when Janet sees the thing. It's it's like he's sort of resigned to like, oh, well, I guess we're, I'm fucked. <laughs> Damn. No, yeah. it's the, right? It's, you'd say it's the opposite in terms of he's saying it. Someone might defend him as being like, he's saying this because he knows he's won. There's nothing she can do to stop him. And he literally says, you know, uh, what do you think you could do to stop me? Which is such a stupid fucking thing to say to the woman who helped build all of this, repair all of this, and has, like, I'm assuming at this point she would have told him about all the wasp shit, right? Mm. Like, why wouldn't she? Uh, considered, have we also considered real quick, what an insane coincidence that he happened to land next to someone who had the ability and skill necessary to help him repair that? Oh, yeah, yeah she's we, wild. We well, just the same she's... with Modoc, okay, what a gotcha. coincidence that he landed next to the guy who could repair him. And it, that he knew, yeah, it's it's all insane. Yeah, she's the only one in the entire quantum verse that could do anything for him. Um, not even uh, what's his name could have repaired it like she can. Yeah. So yeah, that was incredibly lucky. Um, but yeah, uh, that's another Vader line. It was really funny, I guess, in terms of just like, what do you think you can do to stop me? And then she stops him, and then he's like, Ah, stop stopping me! And it's like, I, what were you? <laughs> like, you you yeah. practically asked it to, man. Um, yeah, and, uh, it, it's, it's, like, easy for her to do it as well. Um, she, so yeah, she, she, is. she packs four of those growy things into his core, which blows it all the way up. And, uh, it doesn't destroy it, though, it just makes it really big and un unyieldy. And then she goes super small to evade the explosion, question mark? And it's like, well, that's just gonna make you more vulnerable to it. Because now you're slower in terms of getting away from it. Oh, well, I don't know about that. But I think uh, I think the implication is she jumps off the edge and she ends up in the quantum realm after that, the the place of the civilization. I don't know. I'll never know. I. D <laughs> What's is there even any point in trying to figure it out? Well, and after all of that, after all that crazy nonsense, the one question is why the hell didn't you tell us? And she says. I spent years hiding from him, running from him, and then you found me. I unleashed a monster on this place and ran away. I'm sorry I never told you, I just wanted to forget. I wanted to be a mum again. i sorry, but, like, you have a responsibility. You don't get to do that, yeah. It does, I don't even think you need to, to make that. that argument, it's just not in, in your character. She would tell them to, to protect them. If she was willing to strand herself there to prevent him from doing it, she has enough of a spine to just tell them what happened. Also, I guess she just stopped caring about everybody down there. Sacrifice. 
Well, yeah, right, because and she made friends there, but yeah. she. Why did it's weird that she didn't mention any of this in Ant Man and the Wasp? It's kind of weird. It's almost like this is invented. This is oh. new history. What? Well, you know when they came down and found her, you'd think that Modok would have been like, "Oh, the signal, got it." Mm hmm. But nope, apparently not. And uh, yeah, just just the reality is that she has uh, is the same reason that she wouldn't have told them is reason enough that she would have as in like to do with protecting and stuff. But um, and so when Bill Murray says you like ditched us down here, it's like yeah, she kind of did. She 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 just didn't care about yeah. the livelihood of any of you. Hmm. It's pretty fucked up. Down I, is, uh, is, is what we would say is uh, has been destroyed by this yeah. film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she wasn't really much of a character to begin with, but she is. It's not done. stopping them. She's been obliterated. Significant amount of damage to Janet. So, anyway, uh, good old mm. Scott is in prison, and Kang's decided to talk to him now. And he's like, you, uh, you're making a mistake, pal. I'm an Avenger, and I've called all my friends, and they're on the way. Oh, and, Kang... and also, before we do that, Kang has a stupid nanotech helmet that doesn't track properly with his head. Um, this is what we call a universal where... constant. Yeah, there are a lot of shots where his head is moving within the confines of the helmet in ways that don't make sense, like, physically. Um, I don't know why they didn't just give him, like, a thing on his head. If they still wanted to make him blue with, like, visual effects, that's fine. But, like, I don't know why you didn't just give him something he could wear. Sorry, continue. Yeah, you could have just made, like, a really cool, like, filter that just tracks over the visor over his head. But his head is part of the, you know... What are you, uh... What you eating there, Rags? Oh, did, it, did that come through? Whoops, I had, I had a little bit left on, next to my tooth. I didn't know it came through. Ah, I was, what do you... But still, what have you been eating? <laughs> oh, I had a piece of pizza. Oh, what type it was, of pizza? Uh, it was, I got, I, I got, uh, it's Marco's. I think they're just, uh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think they're only in you. No, just Marco's. Oh. Uh, it was uh, bacon, uh, chicken, and spinach. That's an interesting assignment. Yeah, grilled of, uh, chicken, bacon, and spinach. Yeah. You're going to be like I'm, Popeye. Uh, that's right. Da, da, Dude, da, 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 da. I, spinach isn't bad. I don't know. Spinach isn't it's bad. bad. No, it's I good. Um, I, I, uh, I was like, Wait, what I, want, I want some spinach. I want like spinach so I can be like Popeye. And then I ate it. I'm like, oh. I want some spinach. Give me it some didn't spinach. make Just me super strong. Well, fuck. I think the problem is that if you have like cheap ass shitty spinach from like a can or something. Yeah, as what opposed Popeye to good gets it out fresh, of though. Yeah, but, but and, and, and then you're like, oh, actually I can have fresh spinach that's like a spinach salad. Yeah. And it has like a nice yeah. dressing and maybe like salmon or something on it. And you're like, oh, wow, this is actually really good. Yeah, it's just that when you get spinach, because that's what Popeye does. He grabs it and then the music plays. And then he always look at his muscle and pizza. No, I just, I just ate my Brussels sprouts. I put them in the oven. Holy fuck! That would be weird. Yeah, the consistency of Brussels sprouts does not know itself well to pizza. There's actually one pizza topping I've never seen anywhere. They're, they're Russell Sprout, yeah, yeah. Right? because you'd have to take like the individual like leaf layers off, and at that point, like, what are you doing? Yeah, why are you doing this to Brussels sprouts? You want to eat like, because to, to to the simple way to eat Brussels sprouts is to half them, right, yeah. and then cover them in olive oil, and then mm. put them on a pan, just a bit of salt and pepper, maybe a little this, a little bit of this and that, and then pop them in the oven for a bit, and they're quite good. I like to but... fry them. Brussels sprouts taste like death. I had them fried, fried but I, I probably good. oughta. Yeah. yeah My dad hates Brussels sprouts, but I love them. Mm. What a, they're real good. I'm hungry. What is our opinion on asparagus? I know that's the one that gets the bad reputation is asparagus, but I think they're okay. I like I all of these. Fine. All of these are good when they're cooked well. That's, that's yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> what about. <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> Wait, what about Kang? <laughs> what about what now, Wumbo? I, 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 was, I did realize this is a fucking cooking show. I don't know, not... I just came back. Well, you know we what? Maybe it we'd... fucking is. So what were you going to no. say? Yeah, but... what, when's EFAP cooking starting? Uh, Rags, we got First ETA guess, Tonal. What? You got an ETA on EFAP cooking? You know? Um, I got to talk to Tonal about it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to do it without him. He knows 
I'm I'm no I'm no chef. Is EFAP I, cooking yeah. just I mean it, it could be that EFAP cooking is just us watching cooking shows like I would, I would Oh yeah, like, that's true. Watch we could watch Hell's Kitchen. kitchen. Yeah. 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 Kitchen. <laughs> That'd be great. Kitchen can, nightmares and we could all just kind of like How did you allow the kitchen to become like this where there's just black tar like underneath the uh <laughs> the underneath the griller? It's raw. It's raw. Fucking it has raw. a lot of other have you guys have you guys uh out of cure there's a there's a um, there was like an episode of uh i can't believe i've forgotten his name the guy who trained him i can't believe it i know uh, his name me i never knew god. his name so it's bob ross? oh god. bob ross no not, not no, bob ross Steve Irwin. no uh damn it i can't believe Rogers. that his name is just mm -hmm. oh, oh yeah marco pierre white that's his name um it, it was like a show from the 80s and there's there's a a scene where it's it's like them cooking ravioli, and you got little nineteen year old Gordon Ramsay there, and the only thing he says is a very timid yes when he gets asked a question by Marco. It's really interesting. He's just totally silent. Humble yeah. beginnings. Uh well, I mean, it's funny you say because humble beginnings is him working in like a super like Marco P. O. White was probably like the first celebrity chef. So yeah. like it is humble in the sense that compared to where he's at now. But I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of like that's a, that's the food chain, right? In in the cooking nah, business, nice. you know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's, ah, it's not bad. I don't even want to think about the food chain in the quantum realm. <laughs> Who eats? What? Oh yeah, we saw the, the sun jellyfish is eaten by the manta ray that is blasted by the laser man. It all makes sense. Yeah, a bigger microbe. So he's like. You've messed with an Avenger, bro, and I've called my friends. And then he says, an Avenger, have I killed you before? Which I always mm. took as like a line of, oh, I bet, I bet the writers thought that was really badass. But what a weird question no, to ask really somebody who has yeah, no like, concept he, of like multiple hymns. Yeah, he doesn't know what that means. Do you know? <laughs> have I, well, he, I mean, he does, he, his answer is obviously no. It's like, or, or his answer would be, how the fuck would I know? What do you mean? Have, have you killed me before? What? <laughs> like I'm alive. I mean, it's so, like not me specifically. Yeah. What do you mean? Maybe you've killed Ant Man's before. I don't know. <laughs> like that's a question I mean, for you, almost, my friend. Not me. Like would have been better if he it was like Avenger kind of thought to himself, and then maybe he was like, huh. like kind of like almost a bemused chuckle, like, hmm. yeah, maybe you know, maybe that was somebody that I encountered in my travels rather than specifically well, like asking him. He did follow up with a banger line. He said, "You all blur together after a while." Like, ha, -ha mm. true. Mm. Sure, but wouldn't it have been better if he didn't say that and he just reacted in a way that implies that he's encountered Avengers before? No, I like the metal line like, making fun oh, of the shitty movies. I, no, I right. like I like you all blow together after a while. Um, like even I, guess I like the concept of it. I don't like I like it as a concept. I, I think I think I would always prefer having him act in a way that implies that it all has blurred together and he's not impressed by that. Yeah. Rather than him saying it, I think. I'm I, sure. I'm strictly gunning for the matter. <laughs> I'm just I'm <laughs> nah, laughing yeah. at the silliness of all of all it. All the films do blur together after a while, don't they? Yes. And he says that uh, you know, you are apparently a really good thief, according to Moyok. And he goes to like 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 that's how he introduces it, and then Modok says, Yeah, he stole something from me or what and then he just fucking tosses him across the room and he's like, You will speak when I am, like, not in the room. Yeah. And I was Evil. just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, Jesus. What? Modok did the... Modok gave you the information, invented the technology, completed the task, and then was giving you extra content when you fucking... Pro like, or extra context, sorry. When you prompted him to, and then you're like, I'm evil, brah! <laughs> like, it's, it's, why are you being to Modok? You know why, why are you being mean to Modok like that? Yeah, and, and it's just... Modok like he's just getting humiliated. He's just dragged into the ceiling and going, blah, 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 stop, stop hitting me. And he's just like, don't speak while I'm in the room. Like, okay then. I guess he spoke when he was in the room when he told him about Scott Lang, but <laughs> not now. He, he asked Modok a question. Modok's like, just steps outside of the room and shouts <laughs> the answer. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, then then things get weird. He's like. God, I want you to do a thing for me. I, w I want you to do a thing. And, and if you don't stop what's coming, then, uh, you know, if you want to stop what's coming, sorry, you'll have to help me. Yeah. Deal? Because you, you do want to stop it. It's like, what, 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 what are you talking about? Well, that's what the is... thing that annoyed me. Scott just goes, <laughs> no deal. And it's like, no, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, yeah. Ask more questions. 
It's like, wait, 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 wait. wait. You know what the deal actually is. Well, yeah, the guy who was earlier complaining that he didn't have enough context to make decisions. And it's, it's, yeah. uh, why can't why can't people behave like they are in the actual storyline and things have happened? If you were Scott, you'd be like, okay, so I met a whole bunch of people who said that you've like killed them and you know done horrible things, and now you're saying you need me to go and steal something for you uh, in order to prevent something really bad from happening. So I need information. That's what I need. I yeah. really need information. Well, no, what the reason why I... he said no is so that it gives uh, Kang an opportunity to go. I'm a villain. I'm a torture you now. Mm -hmm. Don't you know I'm, I'm Electro? By the, by the way. He hates uh, me. For the thing he wants him to do, <laughs> him being a thief doesn't matter at all, by the way. No, like, I don't no, know. It has nothing to do actually. with being. Like, yeah. <laughs> you need to steal it back, even though it's like right there and you don't need to take also, it from anyone. Well, so that's actually. And also, it's, you need me for pimp particles and not for that's like, like, thievery skills. Yeah, it's it's like uh, like oh you're a world famous jewel thief. Yeah, I've been wondering what stocks to buy lately. <laughs> um, really, could you, yeah, like, specifically uh, jewel stocks. stocks. I figured you may you're know. You're good at. You're good at like getting things, right? So what what stock should I get? I've been known to acquire things from time to time. <laughs> uh, um, and and should I get a cat or a dog? I saw it highlighted like how dumb oh. that he doesn't take them of their Ant Man suits, and I was like, it's fine to leave Ant Man with his because he's going to need it to complete this task. That's very dangerous. So that I can kind of understand. But you're right with Cassie. She shouldn't be able to keep that suit. She shouldn't be able to Dude. keep it pin particle uh, things. They should just take all of it off her. Especially because uh, Modok can study it and use it and quite possibly get them out of the fucking quantum realm with that. Mm -mm -mm. But, hmm. oh well, they le let her have it. And of course she escapes several times because of it, so. Someone in my, in my chat yesterday mentioned that she apparently got the uh, disc uh, from, uh, from Scott when she hugs him. She got the what from Scott? The, the, the shrinking disc that she uses okay. later. I thought she just had her own anyway. Yeah, that's what I thought as well. But apparently they took some away, but she had to steal some back from him. Okay. I didn't catch that. I'm, uh, but like I said, I just... It's been pointed out to they me. They let her keep her fucking suit, so I just assumed they let her yeah, have Yeah, I don't know too. what it did take <laughs> the suit, yeah. It's, it's a nano thingy suit. She has clothes underneath it. You wouldn't even have, like, the problem of you, you could replicate it's just, i hate it i hate all of it and and <laughs> nobody would let them keep everyone every villain these days lets the heroes keep all of their tools yeah. ridiculous I'm telling you we need to have we need to have like um an, like an efap I, I think i'd said that before like a school for the nefariously minded or something <laughs> where we just tell people like look we've seen movies if you're gonna be a like a a, a an evil world conqueror or whatever, basic steps. You know, like when you capture the heroes, ask yourself, do you really need to capture them or should you just vaporize them on the spot? If you need to capture them, strip them down to nothing, run them through the x-ray, make, and then just like clasp them in space irons or something. Don't let them just walk around with all their gear and don't check them or anything like that. Yeah. Like if you do that, you're just asking to fail. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Um... So, uh, to get them to the place they need to go, Kang opens up a portal, and it goes straight there. And you realize, at this point, he can just open portals to anywhere, as long as it's in the quantum universe, I guess. It's like, uh, why didn't he open one up when when they knew where Scott was? Yeah, just portal right there. He can yeah. freeze people in time, too. Or rather, he can zero-point energy them, like Syndrome. He can do that. Why not open a portal to Scott, grab him, and then... Why didn't you send Modok? It was uh, it was busy with uh uh stuff, yeah. Okay. Not like the sole thing that he's working towards. <laughs> wait, 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 don't be the guy who eats chicken on pizza. Listen, chat. Grilled chicken on pizza is really good. Wait, no, it's chicken very good. Pizza? What the chicken fuck? Chicken on pizza is fucking great. It's awesome. Yeah, this, no. this Adam guy. What the fuck? Barbecue, barbecue what do you chicken mean? pizza? What, Absolutely. Yeah. Chicken I is a fan. I don't know who you Chicken's are. Chicken's good on like now. anything. That's chicken's quality. Is you, it? You've, it's you've so upset, good for everything. You've upset the chicken elders now, chatter. The chicken elders. <laughs> <laughs> this is hey, a you will be you will be pro packed. chicken podcast. All right. Absolutely. What a bizarre thing to say. Oh, so yeah, fuck you. But you think I just like <laughs> diced it up raw fuck and just you. squeezed it over the top? Boo. No. Oh, Get bad off opinion. This day. <laughs> your penance is to your penance is to have one good opinion and then post that later. No, his penance is to post a picture of him eating a chicken pizza. Yeah. <laughs> and be and can, with a big yeah, smile and a thumbs up. Like, you know what? This is pretty good. <laughs> you know what? Actually, you guys were right. I'm sorry. You know what? Take back what I said about the chicken on pizza. This is pretty good. It's pretty <laughs> this good. is pretty good. 
especially considering scary. that you could make the chicken like any flavor that you want before you yeah. put it on the pizza. You know, you could season that chicken and sort of grill it up and get it ready any kind of way. Anything from lemon pepper to teriyaki to buffalo to just really simple stuff. It's up to you. You can do God, anything so with that chicken. Now. With a chicken, <laughs> the world is your oyster. No, we said chicken, not oysters. You yeah, not oysters. Oysters, oysters are good. Don't get me started on oysters. Oysters might work on pizzas. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, Ooh, that's, we're know. risking it. We well, are risking yeah. it. It's oh, risky. No. I'm going to say that the only way that you could get oysters to even come close to working on a pizza is if they're fried. Yeah. Um, what yeah. do the chicken elders have to say about oysters on pizza? I know it's not their because speciality, I'm, but... <laughs> I a raw oyster, like chickens, chickens would I, like I have, oysters, for mm, sure, if they got Oh, the yeah. Because <clears throat> an oyster goes with very, very little. Um, like, maybe a little bit of hot sauce, a tad of lemon... Uh, something like that, but now nah, you, you want the oyster to just be the oyster when you just slide it down. Good stuff, though. Mmm. Love me some oysters. Fried or, uh, fried or raw? Oysters on the half shell. Total <laughs> power. Talk today? Turtle oh. power. Uh, they, they do the portally thing, and then you find the core, and it's pretty big, and it's scary. And it turns out they tell him the job is to go down there and throw one of the shrinkies at the core to shrink it down to a reasonable size. Yeah. That is the job. And you think to yourself, like, why why does Modok just do that? He can fly. His head too big. <laughs> I genuinely have no idea if the, the idea is just <laughs> it's risky, so we'd rather you do it, Ant Man. Yeah, uh, I don't Like he cares about Modok. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I just, it's really, like, contrived, I think, to be like, this is a specific job that we need you and your suits and everything. This just has to be you. It's like, okay, then. Why, though? No, I don't know. And, uh, yeah, Modoc's like, you gotta do it fast, because the longer you spend in there, the more it'll fuck with your mind. And Scott, because he's really smart, says, what do you mean specifically by that? And then they explain it to him. Um, there, there however, is an alternate reality where he just says, okay, and, and moves on. Yeah. <laughs> Which is... I mean, not the one that we live in, no. No, because that would I mean, be I don't crazy. Even, I don't even know how Modok knows all these things from down there. Wait, wait, are you not familiar with the paradox of probability or whatever the fuck he said? Storm? <laughs> no, probability no, storm. Yeah, like, Can't we all know those. It was. It's, it's not literally unprecedented experience. in the fucking universe. It's, it's... Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I, 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 excuse my uh, ignorance. In the multiverse, yeah. So if sorry. it's possible, it's... It happened an infinite amount of times. Well, any probability storms in Germany? You have to shrink to get yeah. down there. He can't do that. The They've got full access to all of this technology now. They can just take it off them. There's no probability. I don't understand. Why Why do we pretend as though uh, only people, like only the ant family can do this shit? It's like, no, it's not. Everyone's fucking shrinking and growing now. Yeah. You guys remember, <laughs> do, you guys, do you guys remember Shrinky Dinks? <laughs> no. Do you guys remember those? No. No, no that sounds no? funny though. Uh, they're not. Yeah. No, they're they're yeah. like um, yeah, they're like fun. little things, like little stickers, and then you just sort of like color them, and then you'd put them in the oven, and then they would like shrink down, and it was just like the shittest toy ever. That sounds pretty I shit. There's a lot of effort. Yeah, that sounds pretty shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I ate them already. It's it's really it's really garbage, and that was just like a thing. I didn't know if you guys knew about shrinky dinks. But I did right. not. Wouldn't it be funny if yeah. they called dinky shrinks? Dinky yeah. shrinks. <laughs> that could be like a character. I could be like a detective in a 1920s story. Uh, detective Dinky, Dinky Shrinks. Dinky Dick. I'm pretty sure yeah. he introduces this, by the way. He says, uh, that's my core. Janet blew it up. And it's such an open yeah. thing for him to be like, why? <laughs> like, why'd yeah. she do that? And he's like... Also, it didn't uh, really blow dick. up. It's still kind of there, like half blown up in, in time. Yeah, something. it just kind of stayed mid-explosion for some reason. I don't well, quite understand that. Yeah, did I don't you, get that either. Did you guys talk about but... that while I was gone for a bit? Uh, how she made that happen? Well, she put Even... four growers on it. Yeah, and then this happened somehow. Yeah. I don't I don't know why. It, nope. should, should it just grow four times its size? <laughs> don't get it. It's like a, it's a bigger core. Don't understand. Okay. Um, And I, I, I think it's funny, too, up. that he's like baffled by it, and then he's like, oh, you didn't didn't tell you guys about me, huh? And he's like, I guess that makes sense. This is like, no. <laughs> what are you if no. I would be Scott at this point, I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't know, man. Maybe it doesn't make sense. Maybe it does. I don't even know if mm. you're the good or the bad guy. I'm just going to jump down there now. 
Um, yeah, and then and then she says, "Dad, I messed up," and hugs him, and it's like, "Yeah, you did, you did, big time." <laughs> and then he says, know. "Don't worry, my life happened because I messed up." But the only thing I didn't mess up, and then everyone in the audience goes, "Was you?" And he goes, "Was you?" <laughs> Was you? Yeah. He said the thing. Yeah. He said the thing. And then everyone's just like falling asleep, sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, I figure the probability storm might be a good halfway point because it looks like we're doing the same with this as we did with Multiverse of Madness and Love and oh, Thunder. Wow. It's so right. dense, it takes. Um, oh, it is. That probability is. Jesus. It's so dense, and yet there's nothing here, too. It's weird. Because I was about to say, I think we are coming like halfway through the film. Wow. So, uh, it took, only took us five hours. Yeah, which means a grand total of. <laughs> ah! The <laughs> ten, I think, to, <laughs> Mahler, to get through Mahler the whole I was going to say, I don't want this to be a ten-hour stream, so well, we're going to cut it in half. And sure enough, at about the five-hour mark, we're about halfway through. Well, that's the thing. i got to get sleep so that I can get uh, not only to drink as catch-up tomorrow, but also prepare oh. for The Last of Us. The next episode's coming out. <gasps> oh, that's right. Excitement Hooray. abound. But we shall also have to return to this insane fucking thing. Uh, Hooray. Yeah, we're basically halfway through the film. Um, which I don't know if it felt that way to you guys in chat or not, with the amount of things that have happened. I, I don't know if it feels like halfway through, but um, hopefully you've gotten to this point and thought, "Yep, this just this is just the Ant Man version of all those the other movies that you've talked about." There's a Thor yeah. version. There's a Doctor Strange version. It's the Spider Man version felt. was way better than these, mainly because the characters weren't pee pee. Yeah. <gasps> what? Is Sorry, that even allowed? I, I was gonna say I went with pee pee to avoid the the adult words. Uh, Urine, like poo poo. Yari nor. Can we die yet? No. Nay, no. more slude. Though it's worth mentioning, we have got Guardians coming up eventually. That might be a movie. That might be good. Maybe you guys don't know. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, and and we got yeah, a lot accomplished today. Trust. The pizza conversation specifically, I think a lot of it was achieved. Yeah, mm -hmm. pizza time. But yeah, um, grasping to try and make sense of this film is a difficult subject, but I think we've done uh, a decent job so far. You've still got your incredible third act war between armies and all kinds of explosions and a big boss fight between the main bad guy and the main good guy to come. Hell yeah. Uh, some twists and turns. And then, of course, I can't wait to talk about the after credit scenes. Oh my oh, god. I'm so hyped. Um, one of them Was sets there an after credit uh... scene to this movie? Because I didn't see it. Yeah, you got two of them. One of them sets up Loki oh, season two. two. Yeah. Wow. God damn it. Wow. That's like everyone's wow. favorite show. Wow. So yeah, uh, ants as well. The ants we did, we did set them up, so hopefully they'll ants pay with off. Ants with a Z. <laughs> um, no more Bill so Murray. We did all of the Bill great. Murray already. So yeah, no more Bill Murray. Yep. Get, get his old ass out of here. He did his job. But um, you know, hopefully you enjoyed the Modox. Uh, who knows if they'll uh, return next week? They yeah. might. Who well, knows? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe Tough we'll all just. Who knows? I might just not change it. Who knows? I'll be yeah. Modoc yeah. forever. Keep the Modoc. Modoc forever. Modoc commander. How do they feel so bloated yet so empty? I know, right? It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's always the same. It's bizarre. It is. Go Modoc ass. Oh yeah, we did actually. That that was a thing that happened. Um, next time I suppose they'll keep people excited to come back. You can see Modoc's ass. <laughs> Woo! Maybe we we know how to thumbnail. get butts in seats, I'll tell you that. Finally some <laughs> good fucking content. But, before we go, <laughs> nice. we can have everyone nice. here talk a little bit about their butts being what they're up to in life. Why don't we just do the simple left to right? Capital O opinions. Hello, what that's are you me. doing? Why are you here? Why haven't you left? Well, I, well I'm, I'll, I'm here because you bullied me into watching this movie. You said uh, thank you so much for telling me to watch this. That's what you said. Whoa. I did not say that. You said it seven times. He nope. said it, but he was like crying while he did it. And I think <laughs> it was just to get away, but he did say it. <laughs> uh, so what I'm up to, I am currently working on a certain Halloween themed EFAP movies series. Mm. I don't know if that's been announced what those movies are, but I don't those think so. fun. Looking forward People to that. Speculate. And then and then also Spy devs. Kids? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween Spy Kids. Reviews. Oh, of course. <laughs> and uh, 
Also, Devs Episode 4 is going to be a thing soon. Stay tuned for that if you like bad things. Wow. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Exciting. Uh, link in the description. Um, Jay, what, what video are you making? I know what it is. You do know what it is. It's a long boy about an old EFAT topic. <gasps> I'll leave it at that. You guys are gonna, you guys are gonna, you guys are gonna see it. You're gonna be like, oh my god, I know what that is. And you'll like it, because you'll be like, I remember this topic, and it's a fun topic, kind of. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's something that's yeah. been covered on EFAT, and, you know, EFAT, very in-depth coverage. But on EFAT, there's not the time to do, like, background research while you're still watching the video. What? So uh, I've gone, mm. I've gone, and, I've gone and researched lots of, uh, lots of things, lots of stuff, and uh, made sure I've got loads of tight references for stuff and and all that. So I am things intrigued. That you wouldn't get on on the EFAP. Intrigued. Consider me hooked. Yeah. Is there an ETA within the span of a year? No. This year. Well, what have you said? I, ho I hope it's this year. <laughs> In fact, um, you so hurriedly said no. It's like, oh shit, two years. There's Damn. not an ETA. <laughs> Very well. Fine. Um, Metal, what about you? Modoc. Uh, I, I already did my Ant Man coverage yesterday. If you want to check that out, that's over on the 4J. That's, that, that happened with Mark. That was fun stuff. Uh, and yeah, just working on stuff. And next forge will probably be Atomic Heart. Mm. That's gonna be a thing to play. Hopefully, it's gonna be good. Cause that's I, I, like I hope so too. Good, I like good video games. They are kind of neat, like that Dead Space one, except for yeah, the, that was, except for all the woke stuff. Yeah, that, that was uh, pretty so, yeah, annoying. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Yeah, uh, just, old just work, work, working, smirking away. That's well, it. excellent. Um, as for as for the world of EFAP, uh, next week we'll do the second half of this. Week after that will probably be Atomic Heart, I'd imagine. That gives everyone enough time to actually play it. And then following that, Manda will be starting up. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my goodness. Uh -huh. That's gonna be a day every week. And around about then, uh, The Last of Us will be closing down. Um, obviously coverage of both of them will be happening. At the same time as trying to get actual episodes out. Uh, we're still running, you know, additional scheduled catch-ups for, for Super Chats. They'll, they'll be coming out weekly as well, so don't you worry about that. The, uh, uh, what else is there? I, I commented recently, but we are, like, over halfway toward the next anniversary now. Isn't that fucking insane? Wow, that is, uh, that is insane. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. Time Didn't you has... guys just do the other one? <laughs> Who's done this? Whose fault is this? Father Time. Who's responsible? That asshole. Father, is, if Time, is this what, uh... What's his face? Kang was talking about. Yeah, he's a cage. About time or whatever. It's a cage. Time's a he cage. wasn't lying. Time's a cage. I don't fucking know what that means. Whatever. But um, plenty more things on the way. You'll see me on obviously Real BBC and Open Bar and uh, catch ups go on to I think the After Hours channel for Drinker. But of course, if you're watching Moolah, you'll pretty much be getting a new video every two to three days at this point. They're just they're just, uh, they're just coming out. This is um, a lot of stuff happening. That's why the EFAPs will be a little bit shorter. But I think we might aim to have EFAPs be around about five hours. That seems about that seems normal. All right. I I, I, I <laughs> will be nice and say we'll never go shorter to the point of making them like consistently two or three hours, like every other podcast that's ever existed. Oh. We'll keep them long, uh, longer, yeah. but. Simultaneously, we got loads of other stuff coming out, so I think it all balances out. But yeah, uh, I'm working on bigger things as well, chunkier videos. The more vague I am, the better. Um, anything, anything you guys wanted to say? Uh, fringy rags? Nah, I don't think so. I, it's just the same thing. I'm working, working away. Alrighty, yeah. well. Thank you all so very much for hanging out. Hope yeah. you have a good rest of your eve. Um, I don't recommend this film. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Stay away. No. And, uh, well, Modoc, I suppose. Modoc. Uh, Modoc. Okay, Murder. bye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Goodloo. Modoc. Blue. Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>